On Kun Shur Yan, there is an abandoned mental hospital. Rumor has it that there is an evil spirit living here. Many spirit seekers came to find out, but none of them came back. And tonight, there are three uninvited guests coming. The three uninvited guests were a yin-yang master from the F.A. Qing faction named Pu Zhi Shun, a housewife named Lin Xiu Ying, and an ordinary high school student, Jiang Chen Feng. Seeing Jiang Chen Feng's behavior, Pu Zhi Shun said that he looked relaxed. While munching on his instant noodles, Jiang Chen Feng said of course because he wouldn't be here if he was scared. Without further ado, Pu Zhi Shun said that this mission was at the purple level so he asked others for their opinion. But with a disinterested look on his face, Jiang Chenfeng said that he was too lazy for that, but he had taken on many important cases and never failed. Hearing that made Pu Zhi Shun furious, because he thought the case he received earlier could not be compared to the current case, and ordered him to stop eating. Jiang Chenfeng flatly said that he felt hurt by his harsh words. Pu Zhi Shun became even angrier, Thinking that because Jiang Chenfeng was incapable, Pu Zhi Shun suggested waiting for the association to exchange for a more capable person. But Lin Xiaoying would not accept that because her son had disappeared for two days, and not a single person from the association dared to accept this mission. And now Lin Xiaoying found people willing to help, but Pu Zhi Shun wanted her to exchange them. Seeing Pu Zhi Shun being scolded, Jiang Chenfeng also felt satisfied. Lin Xiaoying felt sad because Pu Zhi Shun, a famous exorcist, was not willing to help her. This made Pu Zhi Shun feel gloomy, as he felt that his abilities would not be sufficient for this mission. Lin Xiaoying was starting to feel hopeless because no one wanted to help her, but Jiang Chenfeng came up to her and grabbed her shoulder. With a confident look, Jiang Chenfeng asked Lin Xiaoying to trust him and invited her to enter. Hearing that made Lin Xiaoying remember the time when her son said goodbye to go to the courage test. With her tears flowing, Lin Xiaoying thanked Jiang Chenfeng. Since Jiang Chenfeng was intending to enter, Pu Zhi Shun asked where Jiang Chenfeng's magic equipment was. But Jiang Chenfeng said that he had never used it to make Pu Zhi Shun even more anxious. Seeing Jiang Chenfeng who entered the hospital with Lin Xiaoying, Pu Zhi Shun thought that Pu Zhi Shun must be joking. After entering the hospital, Lin Xiu Ying felt that this place was very cold. Seeing Pu Zhi Shun coming in, Jiang Chenfeng asked what he was doing here even though he didn't want to interfere. He also replied that he was at least a high-ranking exorcist, so he couldn't let unlicensed people ruin their association's reputation. Jiang Chenfeng gets annoyed that Pu Zhi Shun is meddling in his affairs but Pu Zhishun assures him that he will not take his share of the prize. It's just that he has one request, which is to follow all his orders in this mission. Hearing that, Lin Xiaoying asked if she was willing to help him. Pu Zhishun then apologized for accepting this mission on his own. Because he knew of his own ability, he was afraid that he would disappear. But he didn't wish to let this unreliable man die and take Lin Xiaoying with him. He even admits that his heart is pounding fast now. Hearing that made Jiang Chenfeng think that Pu Zhishun was just a coward. Pu Zhishun then said that he just remembered. If they wanted to find the child, they didn't need to awaken the evil spirit. Lin Xiaoying wasn't sure what Pu Zhishun meant. Pu Zhishun had searched a lot for information about Kun Shi Yan. According to him, over the decades, many people claimed to have seen all kinds of ghosts here, but most people can safely retreat. With the exception of that room, those who approach or try to open it will not return. Hearing that made Lin Xiaoying wonder what if her son didn't go there. Pu Zhi Shun stood up and replied that her son might be trapped here. If so, then Pu Zhi Shun could try using his magic equipment, the Immortal Binder, to summon him. After sticking an amulet on the door, they entered the dean's room, which was on the first floor. As he had pasted a sedative charm on the door, Pu Zhishun said that Lin Xiaoying could now summon her son now, because Pu Zhishun's voice would be transferred to the spiritual world with the sound of the bell. Hearing Pu Zhishun's explanation made Jiang Chenfeng think that this was a dishonest method. As per his request, Lin Xiaoying started calling her son, but there was no reply. Not long after, suddenly the door they were using was forcefully closed, making Lin Xiaoying scream in fear. 
Pu Zhishun tried to calm Lin Xiaoying and asked her not to panic, since it seemed that the first door closing on its own wasn't a false rumor. Pu Zhishun, who was trembling in fear, suggested that they leave immediately, since the owner of this place didn't welcome them. Pu Zhishun also tried to get out of this room. But while trying to open the door, Pu Zhishun realized that they were currently locked up. Lin Xiuying was starting to get scared again. Pu Zhishun asked Lin Xiuying not to panic and asked the others to see if there was a lock on the drawer. But suddenly he saw a shoe sole approaching him. The door was forced open because it was kicked. After kicking open the door, Jiang Chenfeng turned the door over and saw that the talisman on the door had been torn apart. They were now sure that this evil spirit did not want to be appeased. Soon there was the sound of footsteps. On the ceiling was a running child that made Lin Xiaoying unable to believe her own eyes. Convinced that the child was her son, the extremely worried Lin Xiaoying tried to chase after him. But Jiang Chenfeng stopped him. Lin Xiaoying begs him to let her go, but Jiang Chenfeng tells her to calm down because the one just now wasn't her son. Lin Xiaoying didn't believe it either, and was sure that she recognized his clothes. Pu Zhishun also asked Lin Xiaoying to be careful. He was sure that this was an evil spirit's trap. If she left, then she wouldn't be able to come back. Lin Xiaoying still insisted that it was just nonsense, until Pu Zhishun asked if Lin Xiaoying had ever seen a child running upside down. Finally, Lin Xiaoying began to calm herself down. After letting go of Lin Xiaoying's hand, Zhang Chenfeng reminded that the client had to listen to the exorcist rules while the mission was being carried out. So he hoped that Lin Xiaoying would comply with the contract. Apart from that, there was something that Zhang Chenfeng wanted to say to Pu Zhishun as well. He felt that the evil spirit didn't want him to calm down because his plan didn't work. Pu Zhishun didn't want to admit it, but he knew that Zhang Chenfeng was right. Lin Xiaoying's son might not just disappear. Because of that, Jiang Chenfeng said that he would change plans in this exorcist mission. While raising his fist, Jiang Chenfeng said that he would face him head on and crush him to a pulp. Hearing Jiang Chenfeng's words, Pu Zhishun asked what joke he was telling, because Kun Shiryan was a case that had not been solved for decades. He also asked if Jiang Chenfeng was not afraid. In the face of that question, Jiang Chenfeng laughed to annoy Pu Zhishun. Jiang Chenfeng then said that he wasn't laughing at him. He also told that when he was 11 years old, a supernatural incident occurred which resulted in his entire family dying, except for him. Since then, strange things have happened in his body. The strange signs of the supernatural occurring did not frighten Jiang Chenfeng. By instinct, Jiang Chenfeng didn't believe in the supernatural and became a complete atheist. Hearing that story made Pu Zhishun dumbfounded. He panicked and asked what he was doing here on an exorcist mission if he was an atheist. But Jiang Chenfeng didn't answer his question and said that he would tell him the details later. Then, seeing Jiang Chenfeng walking away, Pu Zhishun asked him where he wanted to go. Just like he said before, Jiang Chenfeng wanted to find their old nest and solve the problem head on. He finally asked to go destroy room number 402. They finally arrived at the hallway where room number 402 was. Upon seeing the door to room number 402, Zhang Chenfeng and Pu Zhishun simultaneously noticed that it smelled extremely evil. Annoyed, Pu Zhishun asked why Zhang Chenfeng tried to imitate his speech. Zhang Chenfeng replied that was what the people from the Magic Reduction Society often said, so he was tired of hearing it. After saying that, Jiang Chenfeng ordered them to follow him. Pu Zhishun felt dumbfounded that Jiang Chenfeng couldn't even feel the evil aura. It shows he lacks practice in this area. He was too young to be overconfident like this. That's why he didn't trust him. Pu Zhishun decided that, in an emergency, he would release all of his energy and save them both. After walking for a while, Jiang Chenfeng felt strange. He also told them to look around and said that they had walked for quite a while, but room 402 was still far away. Pu Zhishun was also aware of a roadblock. He said that an evil spirit was blocking them and asked them to back off. However, seeing their retreat, Lin Xiaoying was frightened. 
because the direction they came from also disappeared. Now, they can't go forward, and they can't go back either. The stress finally made her limp. Lin Xiaoying then asked if they could save her son. Pu Jishun also answered that he honestly felt that he had to get Lin Xiaoying out of this place first. But Lin Xiaoying insisted that she would not go anywhere until she saw her son. Pu Jishun didn't understand why, because Lin Xiaoying would not be helping them by staying here. Lin Xiaoying also replied that if Pu Jishun did not know what it was like to be a mother. Hearing their bickering, Jiang Chenfeng was reminded of his past. During that incident, his mother said no matter what happened, she would protect him. Jiang Chenfeng also agreed with Lin Xiaoying that Pu Zhi Shun really didn't understand what it was like to be a mother. Pu Zhi Shun got annoyed and asked if Jiang Chenfeng was a mother because he understood. After all, what Jiang Chenfeng was trying to say was they couldn't leave now even if they wanted to. They were shocked to hear that. Jiang Chenfeng then said if his intuition wasn't wrong, then they would already be here. Not long after, Pu Zhishun saw that Lin Xiaoying was about to fall because the door he was leaning on suddenly opened. She also screamed for help because she felt like she was being pulled by something. Pu Zhishun rushed over to help Lin Xiaoying. Seeing that they were in danger, Jiang Chenfeng was about to follow them. But the flashlight suddenly went out. Jiang Chenfeng tried to turn his flashlight back on again and again, but it was no use. He became annoyed because the ghosts had dared to steal his electricity. He then checked the place where the door had been. Jiang Chenfeng was confused because they had just been here, but now it was just a wall. He was sure that the ghosts were trying to separate them. After a while, the flashlight came back on. He also asked why. He then checked where he was currently. He then checked this place and saw someone facing the wall. Seeing that person, Jiang Chenfeng thought that person was peeing everywhere. Elsewhere, dripping water awakened Pu Zhishun, who had lost consciousness. After waking up, Pu Zhishun was curious about where he was right now. He then put on his fallen glasses and was surprised to see Lin Xiaoying standing against the wall. Lin Xiaoying muttered words that his language couldn't understand. Witnessing that, Pu Zhishun thought something was not right. He grabbed Lin Xiaoying's shoulder and turned her back. But Lin Xiaoying kept muttering an incomprehensible language. Not understanding, Pu Zhishun asked Lin Xiaoying what she was saying. He also saw Lin Xiaoying's face, which was so terrible that it made him scream in fear and shake his bell. At the same time, Jiang Chenfeng was currently shining his flashlight on someone. He asked the figure what his name was, but he just ignored it. Jiang Chenfeng's tone was even harsher and said that he was talking to him. The man turned around and showed a scary face. A moment later, his flashlight went out again. Jiang Chenfeng dumbfoundedly looked at his dead flashlight again and said it was too cheating to use this kind of trick. Within the darkness came a detestable voice, but Jiang Chenfeng thought that he wouldn't be scared at all hearing that sound. He then threw down his flashlight and stood up again. If they tried to hide from him, then he thought that he would be the one for them. Gritting his hands, Jiang Chenfeng said that they were finished. With his strength, Jiang Chenfeng swiped his fist on the floor to create sparks. The monster was finally seen. After finding him, Jiang Chenfeng rushed towards the monster to punch it. But Jiang Chenfeng only punched the wall. He also realized that the enemy was quite fast. He then used his ear and found it on the ceiling. Jiang Chenfeng then ran over the wall and jumped at it. Upon seeing that, the monster looked surprised. Jiang Chenfeng violently kicked the monster's head, causing the entire hospital building to shake. Jiang Chenfeng's kick crushed the monster's head. Jiang Chenfeng landed at the same time as the monster fell. After nudging the monster's head, Jiang Chenfeng realized that the monster was just a corpse. But he wondered what could make the corpse move. Using his ears, Jiang Chenfeng again listened to the sound in the distance. Pu Zhishun slumped from the shock. He was confused why his bell was not working. But when he checked his bell, he saw that it was covered with plants. He turned his head back to check on Lin Xiaoying. But Lin Xiaoying suddenly disappeared. As he slowly backed away, nudging Lin Xiaoying's leg. 
Pu Ji Shun slowly turned his head and saw Lin Xiaoying's feet. While picking up his fallen glasses, Pu Ji Shun thought that he was sure that they couldn't do anything to her. However, he felt very scared. He looked up and saw Lin Xiaoying glaring at him from afar. Pu Ji Shun was trembling with fear. He thought that this was bad because his consciousness was fading. He begged in his heart if someone would help him. Suddenly, the wall behind Lin Xiaoying started to crack. The wall then broke, and a hand came out. The hand grabbed Lin Xiaoying's head. Pu Zhi Shun became frightened and asked who it was. Jiang Chen Feng then came out of the wall and said that he was curious why he could hear the sound of bells, and they were here. Pu Zhi Shun was very surprised to see Jiang Chen Feng, who came to break down the wall. Jiang Chen Feng also said to keep his voice down because it hurt his ears. Having been caught, Lin Xiaoying tried to fight back and escape. Jiang Chen Feng also asked Lin Xiaoying to stop because she still needed to save her son. He was at a loss as to what he should do because Lin Xiaoying was so noisy. Pu Zhi Shun also told that Lin Xiaoying had been possessed. He was then to be given time so he could make formations and use the sound of the bells with his prayers. That way, Pu Zhi Shun thought that Lin Xiaoying would wake up. Jiang Chen Feng also asked how long it would take. When he heard the answer was half an hour, Jiang Chen Feng sighed and said that it was too long. In addition, his bell also does not really work. Hearing Jiang Chen Feng's words irritated Pu Zhi Shun. Jiang Chen Feng then said that he had something important coming up soon because he had a date with a girl in a bar. Pu Zhi Shun was furious because they were now in danger, and Jiang Chen Feng even thought about flirting with a girl at the bar. When asked if Jiang Chen Feng had respect for his work, Jiang Chen Feng replied that he respected it. But as he knows, the longer someone is possessed, the more possession is done to them. Pu Zhishun also asked what Jiang Chen Feng would do. Rocking Lin Xiaoying around, Jiang Chen Feng replied he would give her a headache. But that didn't seem to work, and Lin Xiaoying only grew more aggressive. Pu Zhishun scolded him because of course it wouldn't work. In the next moment, Pu Zhishun realized that Lin Xiaoying wanted to twist her body. He said that Lin Xiaoying could endure him when she was possessed, but a broken neck couldn't be healed. So he asked Jiang Chen Feng not to be rude. Jiang Chen Feng complied with his request and turned his head. He then said that he didn't care what he really was to the possessed Lin Xiaoying, but Jiang Chen Feng threatened that he must give peace. The spirit that possessed Lin Xiaoying was immediately frightened and obeyed to the astonishment of Pu Zhi Shun. While Lin Xiaoying was asleep, Jiang Chen Feng hit her on the head, which made Pu Zhi Shun irritated. Pu Zhi Shun thought that he had never heard of this, and from the way it drilled a hole through the wall, it wasn't something a human could do. Because of that, Pu Zhi Shun became curious about who Jiang Chen Feng really was. Jiang Chen Feng was currently checking on Lin Xiaoying's condition. But when he rubbed Lin Xiaoying's nose, he was also scolded by Pu Zhi Shun. Jiang Chen Feng then said that there is also an acupuncture point under the chest. Pu Zhi Shun scolded him again and told him to stop his lecherous thoughts. Because he was stopped, Jiang Chen Feng also told Pu Zhi Shun to try it. Pu Zhi Shun got annoyed and went back to rubbing the bell. He wondered why he couldn't erase it. Jiang Chen Feng was afraid that the human brain would be affected if it was possessed for too long. Because of that, he began to make adjustments to his strength. Because if he tried too hard, her head might just fly off. After adjusting his strength, Jiang Chen Feng asked Lin Xiaoying to endure with him. Seeing what Jiang Chen Feng was about to do, Pu Zhi Shun panicked and stopped him. But he was too late, and Lin Xiaoying was slapped by Jiang Chen Feng. But he was shocked when he saw the evil spirit that possessed her leave Lin Xiaoying's body. The evil spirit roared as it had been forced out. Jiang Chen Feng then blew hard on the spirit until the evil spirit disappeared. Jiang Chen Feng was about to ask how his control was good, but he saw Pu Zhi Shun slapping himself to make him confused as to what had happened. Pu Zhi Shun slapped himself in disbelief at what he was seeing. But Jiang Chen Feng thinks that Pu Zhi Shun is possessed and offers his help. Pu Zhi Shun politely refused. A while later, Lin Xiaoying finally regained consciousness. When Lin Xiaoying asked where they were, 
Pu Shun replied that they were currently in front of door number 402. Lin Xiaoying got excited again because she thought DHE could see her son again and asked if they could enter now. Pu Shun thought that they were too optimistic. His instrument, the shackle bell, had been repaired, but he knew it was completely useless here. To open the door, Jiang Chunfeng opened his jacket and ordered them to get out of the way. Looking at Jiang Chunfeng's arm, Pu Shun was really curious what kind of glowing lines were on his arm. He thought that Jiang Chunfeng was so strange, but he was the only one they could rely on now to open door number 402, which never opened. Jiang Chunfeng was about to open the door with a punch, but it suddenly opened, making the others very surprised. Pu Shun was stunned to see that the door opened by itself. What's more, he could feel the evil demon within it. They entered the room and began to check the situation inside. After inspecting this place, Jiang Chun Feng and the others witnessed countless hands that were on the ceiling. Lin Xiaoying also screamed in fear. Not long after that, three pieces of rope appeared around their necks and started dragging them. The three of them ended up being tied up in the patient's wheelchair. Lin Xiaoying, who was extremely frightened, asked what was going on at the moment. Pu Shun also replied that this was manipulation. Apart from illusions, evil spirits can also do manipulation. And sure enough, this is the super fierce house. They are now in hell. A moment later, there was the sound of something being dragged. Lin Xiaoying, who was trembling with fear, saw a large old woman dragging something. Seeing her hideous face, Lin Xiaoying trembled in fear even more. Jiang Chun Feng convinced Lin Xiaoying not to be afraid by saying that the monster looked like an aunt dragging a vegetable cart. But Pu Zhe Shun said that it was not a vegetable cart. He told her that this was something they used to treat middle-aged patients, a crassionomi. The monster then attached the tool to Lin Xiaoying and slowly pressed the tool together to make Lin Xiaoying feel great pain. Gradually, her eyes began to bleed, and she could only tremble in fear. In her heart, Lin Xiaoying was apologizing to her son because she was afraid. Suddenly, Jiang Chunfeng called out to the monster asking if she was jealous, because the monster abused women who were prettier than her. He then laughed at the monster and challenged it to fight if the monster had the courage. The monster finally removed the device from Lin Xiaoying and placed it on Jiang Chunfeng. But Jiang Chunfeng felt offended that the tool hit his nose. So he asked the monster to pin him at another angle. But the monster ignored it and violently twirled the torch on the device to make a hole in Jiang Chunfeng's head. Lin Xiaoying and Pu Shun turned their faces away in extreme fright. But when Pu Shun looked back, Jiang Chunfeng kept his casual attitude and asked if this was his best show. The monster had turned the tool quickly, but the drill didn't penetrate at all, making the monster confused. Finally, the drill bit on the tool got bent, and Jiang Chun Feng started to untangle himself. After breaking away from the tool, Jiang Chun Feng also said that it was his turn to drill the monster's head. He then finished off the monster. The monster was finally defeated, and Jiang Chun Feng started to free the others. Jiang Chun Feng then asked Lin Xiaoying to hurry because she had to find her son. But Pu Zhe Shun asked Jiang Chun Feng not to be too hard on Lin Xiaoying because she was just an ordinary person. It's great if she could survive up to here. Besides that, Pu Zhe Shun also said that Jiang Chun Feng was very strange. Pu Zhe Shun had seen many ghosts, even high level ones, but only this time had he seen something like Jiang Chun Feng. Smashing walls with bare hands, a slap that drives away evil spirits, impervious to iron drills. This made Pu Zhe Shun suspect that Jiang Chun Feng was some kind of evil spirit. Hearing that made Lin Xiaoying also scared. Pu Zhe Shun then asked what pattern he had on his hand. Jiang Chun Feng opened his mouth and said that an evil spirit was something that on Muji would call Pu Zhe Shun. Lin Xiaoying was confused by what Jiang Chun Feng was talking about. Jiang Chun Feng then said that in the West they are called devils, in Southeast Asia they are called witches, and in their countries they are called yukai or ghosts. These different designations only give the boundaries of each culture to describe the world. Jiang Chun Feng said that he began to understand from the age of 11 that there were no monsters in this world. These things are called that 
because science cannot explain supernatural phenomena, and the source of that phenomenon is the dreaded evil. More precisely, it was a soul that was higher than humans. Lin Xiaoying was confused as to what he meant by excellent spirit. Jiang Chunfeng also explained that he was not an evil spirit. But the reason why he was able to deal with them was because he had a higher strength soul than them. Hearing that explanation made Pu Shun angry. If there is faith, he believes then there will be God in this world, and God will help them drive out evil in this world. But Jiang Chunfeng didn't care what he said and invited them to quickly save Lin Xiaoying's child. In his heart, Jiang Chunfeng had expected that Pu Shun would say that. Hearing Pu Shun mention God made Jiang Chunfeng feel cynical. If God really existed, then he asked where he was when this incident happened. While evil was rampant, he questioned what God was doing. A moment later, between the hands, a faint sound was heard. When he heard that voice, Lin Xiaoying was sure that it was her son's voice and chased after him. Worried about her, Pu Shun chased after her and asked her not to run. Upon arriving, Lin Xiaoying was sure that the sound had come from there, but she had no idea where it was headed. Hearing that, Pu Shun also felt that the voice was coming from above. Looking at all the hands on the ceiling, Lin Xiaoying couldn't help but feel confused because the hands all looked alike. She then summoned Pu Shun. While shedding tears, Lin Xiaoying asked if there was her son's hand among the hands. Soon they heard a loud noise and saw Jiang Chunfeng who was at the front of the entrance. Jiang Chunfeng also informed that the door was closed and seemed to be disappearing quickly. If they didn't get out soon, he was worried that they would get lost in this different dimension. Jiang Chunfeng didn't really care, but he was sure they wanted to go home. So he asked Lin Xiaoying to hurry up and find her son's hand to bring him home. But Pu Shun stopped her and said that this might be a trap because he thinks this is the most common method used by evil spirits. Moreover, if Lin Xiaoying's son's hand was really on the ceiling, Pu Shun was almost sure that the percentage of him still alive was very small. Thus, even though he felt it was cruel to say this, but for Lin Xiaoying's safety, he advised them to leave immediately. Lin Xiaoying became even more worried. She wasn't sure if it was her son who was calling for help. Jiang Chunfeng was getting irritated that they were talking too much and asked if he was sure that all of this was just a trap. Because there were so many hands, Jiang Chunfeng said that he would only choose one. As soon as he saw a hand that looked smooth, he grabbed that hand. But that hand actually pulled Jiang Chunfeng up. Jiang Chunfeng also took a foothold on the ceiling and fought back. Jiang Chunfeng then withdrew that hand forcefully. Upon retracting that hand, Jiang Chunfeng was shocked to see an ugly face appear. Seeing something on his back, Pu Shun couldn't help but wonder what it was. Jiang Chunfeng also guessed that it was the umbilical cord. According to Pu Shun, maybe the evil spirits are using this to control these dead people. While talking about the corpse, Lin Xiaoying called Jiang Chunfeng and told him that his hands looked weird. As soon as he saw that, Pu Shun was immediately shocked. Jiang Chunfeng was confused as to why his hands had turned so green, but Pu Shun panicked because he knew it was corpse poison and it was extremely toxic. He also asked Jiang Chunfeng not to move. Based on the degree of infection, Pu Shun was worried that Jiang Chunfeng's hand would rot and Jiang Chunfeng would die within minutes. But if Jiang Chunfeng died, Pu Shun didn't know how he would get out with Lin Xiaoying. Because of that, Pu Shun was at a loss as to what he should do now. However, what happened next left Pu Shun dumbfounded. Because Jiang Chunfeng easily removed the corpse poison with his strength to make Pu Shun feel stupid. Before long, Lin Xiaoying thanked Jiang Chunfeng and Pu Shun for coming to this place with her. Even though it was business, Lin Xiaoying felt that she didn't want the two of them to accompany her into the muddy water. Therefore, Lin Xiaoying wanted to try one more time. Pu Shun was worried because he was sure that the poison would kill Lin Xiaoying. He said that Jiang Chunfeng was a monster, so he was a different case. Lin Xiaoying also said that she knew that, but Pu Shun didn't accept that and said that he didn't understand. Lin Xiaoying loudly said that she knew. 
Since he had come here, Lin Xiaoying believed he was the only one who could save her son. If she left him now and left, then Lin Xiaoying felt that she would not be able to live peacefully henceforth. Pu Shun was speechless. Lin Xiaoying asked only once. If he chose wrong or was poisoned, Lin Xiaoying asked to be left alone and left immediately. After that, Lin Xiaoying suddenly realized something. The hands began to be pulled back. Lin Xiaoying became worried because she was afraid that her child would disappear. She then heard Jiang Chun Feng say, Let me pull it. Jiang Chun Feng was sure that they were scared, so he was worried that there was only one chance. Thus he asked Lin Xiaoying to choose because she was the one who knew her son best. Lin Xiaoying also agreed to Jiang Chun Feng. Pu Shun was getting annoyed that they were being too rash. Between the hands, there were many voices calling for help. Lin Xiaoying tried to focus, but the hands were all about the same. Jiang Chun Feng also looked at the door and those hands. He thought that his time was running out. Gradually, Lin Xiaoying pointed at one of the hands. He chose the hand that was clenching his fist. Pu Zhishun was unsure about choosing so quickly and was about to ask Lin Xiaoying if she was sure. But Jiang Chenfeng hurriedly jumped towards the hand. He believes that a mother will know her child. Therefore, she will believe it. The moment Jiang Chenfeng managed to grab that hand, another hand reached towards Jiang Chenfeng and caught him. Those hands tried to pull Jiang Chenfeng. Jiang Chenfeng also tried to pull the hand. A worried Pu Shun asked Jiang Chenfeng to be careful with Lin Xiaoying's son's hand. Jiang Chenfeng also asked which was more important, hands or life. Jiang Chenfeng then pulled harder and the child finally came out. Jiang Chenfeng finally managed to pull Lin Xiaoying's child out. Pu Shun felt that this was a miracle and asked how Lin Xiaoying found him. Lin Xiaoying also recalled her past memories. When a cat nudges a flask of boiling hot water, her son push her. As a result, he was the one exposed to the boiling hot water. Lin Xiaoying hugged her son and asked him to get up. Pu Zhishun didn't expect that this would actually work, but something in his eyes made him curious. Frightened by that, Lin Xiaoying also tried to wake up her son. Pu Zhishun thought that this was not normal. Those hands had disappeared and had begun to erode the entire ceiling. He then remembered Jiang Chen Feng. He was shocked when he saw Jiang Chen Feng's body filled with corpse poison and asked if he was okay. Although looking a little troubled, Jiang Chen Feng replied that he was getting rid of the poison. Pu Zhishun was really worried seeing the amount of poison. He thought the amount was even enough to poison a blue whale. However, Jiang Chen Feng could still handle the poison. Pu Zhishun felt relieved to see Jiang Chen Feng who was fine. Since Lin Xiaoying's child had been saved and Jiang Chen Feng was still alive, Pu Zhishun thought all they needed to do was get out of here and complete the task smoothly. However, Jiang Chen Feng suddenly warned them to get out of the way. On the ceiling was a large eyeball watching them. In addition, slowly there are many hairs reaching towards them. The hairs bound Pu Zhishun and the others and pulled them up. After realizing that these were hairs, Pu Zhishun tried to reach towards Lin Xiuying. Lin Xiuying was trembling with fear and said that she was really scared. But suddenly Lin Xiuying looked shocked and pointed behind Pu Zhishun. Pu Zhishun, who didn't understand, asked what was wrong. But Lin Xiuying could only repeat the word, that. Pu Zhishun slowly looked behind him. He saw that the hairs were connected as the neck of a head. The terrible head asked who had tried to stop them. The terrified Pu Zhishun prayed to God and asked what was going on. Seeing that terrifying figure, Pu Zhishun didn't expect to see a real demon. The head screamed and said that people who enter this place will die. Shortly after that scream, hair slowly came out of Pu Zhishun's mouth. He couldn't even make a sound and could only feel pain. Amidst the torment, Pu Zhishun hoped that Jiang Chen Feng would save them soon. From below, Jiang Chenfeng was seen shining on the demon with the flashlight from his cell phone. Jiang Chenfeng also said that the devil seemed to have forgotten about him. The devil also tied Jiang Chenfeng with his hair. The hairs then tried to pull Jiang Chenfeng. But Jiang Chenfeng fought back the pull and said that pulling the hair felt like being pulled by ants. The demon was confused by what Jiang Chenfeng was talking about. 
Jiang Chunfeng then said that ever since he entered this hospital, he had felt a strong energy field. But if he is an ordinary devil, then he plays for a few times. With full confidence, Jiang Chunfeng said it was a pity that the devil met him. The demon was only silent when he heard Jiang Chunfeng's words. Jiang Chunfeng then said that he didn't have any special skills, only that he had higher energy than him. Because of that, he became stronger, and all his attacks became 100% critical, especially against a powerful demon like him. Jiang Chunfeng finally broke the hair that tied him up. The demon screamed again and pulled out his hair. Inside his mouth was an eyeball. In front of the mass of hair, Jiang Chunfeng readied his fist and lunged to throw his uppercut at the demon. The attack made the hospital vibrate and caused a distortion in the sky. Jiang Chunfeng finally cut off the flesh stuck to Lin Xiaoying's child's eyes. After being cut off, the flesh slowly disappeared. Jiang Chunfeng then carried the child and asked Pu Shun to leave. Pu Shun also complained because he was the one who got to carry the heavy weight. Jiang Chunfeng ignored him and said that he should be happy to be able to feel her breasts on his back. Pu Shun coughed and pulled out a bit of hair. He felt that his throat was very itchy. He then turned his head back to look at the previous scene. After all, Pu Shun thought, after this incident, no matter what he saw again, he would not be surprised. At door number 402, suddenly there was a footprint on the door. Jiang Chunfeng violently kicked the door out. Jiang Chunfeng remembered that he was going to smash the door of room 402, so he had to do as he said. After exiting the room, they noticed that the hospital looked more normal now that the evil spirit had disappeared. As they walked out about to ask a question, Jiang Chunfeng guessed that he wanted to ask how he found the door. Pu Shun nodded his head and asked Jiang Chunfeng to explain. Jiang Chunfeng said that this was a secret, but he would make an exception to tell Pu Shun today. Pu Shun got excited hearing that. Jiang Chunfeng also told before the door disappeared, he was already at the door and pee there. Because his urine had a distinct odor, so he knew where the door was when he smelled it. Pu Shun felt stupid for asking. After a while, Jiang Chunfeng asked Pu Shun to do something for him. He asked Pu Shun to return to the association and not to tell anyone that he was the one who solved this incident. Even Pu Shun did not understand. With his strength, Jiang Chunfeng could be a high-level exorcist, or even he could become an S-class exorcist. Money, fame, power, he even got everything he wanted. But Jiang Chunfeng replied that he didn't like the people from the association. Pu Shun was also taken aback. Moreover, in his opinion, what Jiang Chunfeng wanted to do, the association would not be able to help him, because they'll just drag him back. Hearing that, Pu Shun became speechless. A moment later, Jiang Chunfeng reminded Pu Shun that he would get all the money. Because he had been in the dark for too long, Jiang Chunfeng asked him to leave immediately, back to the world under the sun. In Wuhan, in a luxury hotel, a man was shaking from stress. Beside him was a cell phone that repeatedly warned him that he had a new mission. A moment later, the bell of his hotel room. The man opened the door of his room and started shaking when he saw the person who visited him. The person who came was a white-haired man. The white-haired man asked if he was the client and if the money was ready. The white-haired person was Sheng Ching Chi, a 17-year-old Taoist. They returned to the room and the client was now sitting on the floor naked. Before he started, Sheng Ching Chi told him that he had two conditions. The first, while in the process, the client must not look back. And secondly, the cost could not be less. Because if not, he will make him a hundred times more painful than now. The client also said that if Sheng Ching Chi didn't help him, then he would probably die immediately. Thus, the client assured Sheng Ching Chi not to worry, because he would pay for it. Sheng Ching Chi kept getting the same requests. This is the third time this month. When he used his eyes, of course he saw that type of remote crime manipulation again. Some poisons can attract people's attention. Sheng Ching Chi then turned his head towards the cell phone, which was not stopping giving notifications. The cell phone emits an evil aura. 
Sheng Ching Chi thought it was difficult to find the source of this poison, so could not completely solve this kind of case. But that doesn't matter to him, because Sheng Ching Chi had no interest in saving sentient beings. Thanks to this evil spirit, his business went smoothly. From his suit pocket, Sheng Ching Chi took out something that had a suspicious aura and sound. Hearing the sound, the shaking client asked what it was and was about to turn his head back. But Sheng Ching Chi got angry and strictly told him not to look back. The client panicked and returned to look ahead. Sheng Ching Chi then said that it was the client who had invited him. Therefore, he must fully trust him. Sheng Ching Chi promised he would cure him. So he asked the client to stay calm and told him that excessive curiosity could kill you. From his pocket, he took out a magic weapon shaped like a brush. The magic weapon then launched a needle and thrust it into Sheng Ching Chi's arm, then slowly sucked out his blood. When the magic weapon has sucked enough blood, a demon's eye opens. The client was trembling with fear because he could feel something terrible. Sheng Ching Chi then warned that this would hurt a bit. He then uses the magic weapon. The client felt excruciating pain and started screaming. The client finally regained consciousness, and his cell phone slowly started to die. Sheng Ching Chi also thanked him for the cooperation. After coughing, he saw blood on his handkerchief. Sheng Ching Chi wondered how long he could last. While on the road, Sheng Ching Chi received a call from Pu Zhishun. Sheng Ching Chi remembered that the case of the mental hospital a few days ago was in charge of Pu Zhishun. Thus, Sheng Ching Chi asked Pu Zhishun to tell the client to pay the commission money. He then reminded that he did not accept any bargains. As no one took up his duties for days, Sheng Ching Chi believed that Lin Xiaoying should have no choice but to save her son. But Sheng Ching Chi was suddenly shocked after hearing what Pu Zhishun said. Pu Zhishun told him that the case had been solved. At the same time, Jiang Chenfeng was currently sleeping on the plane. The passenger sitting next to him also felt disturbed because of his disturbing sleeping position. At 4.30 a.m., the skull-shaped clock started ringing. Not long after that, the clock was kicked. Jiang Chenfeng, who was still feeling sleepy, wondered why it was already morning so early, even though he was still very sleepy. After waking up, Jiang Chenfeng brushed his teeth while pooping. After that, he washed his face. He then put on earphones and started jogging. Jiang Chun Feng looks like an ordinary high school student, but a world-controlled supernatural accident at the age of 11 completely changed his life. Many people died in the accident, including his parents. But Jiang Chun Feng miraculously survived and has a special ability, ability to fight with evil spirits. No matter how strong an evil spirit or even a demon was, Jiang Chun Feng could easily finish it. Except for one person the person who killed his parents. Jiang Chun Feng was determined to destroy all of his followers, then find the culprit. He vowed to destroy his brain with one punch. On a rooftop, a girl was trembling while crying. Her cell phone next to her kept sending notifications. On the cell phone, there is a challenge that tells her to jump from the top of the school building. It says if she survives, then her body will heal and her wish will come true. The girl who was surrounded by an evil aura thought that she should complete this challenge so that her seniors would like her. Night finally came. This place is the famous supernatural corridor on the internet. A girl says that she has entered several times. The temperature here is 28 degrees Celsius. The air density is 1,205 kilograms per m. The girl also felt nothing strange. According to the formula for the exorcism, there wasn't anything extra strange so she concluded that there had never been such a thing as a ghost here. However, to confirm this, the girl decided to stay in that place for one night to prove that the supernatural phenomena in that place were just rumors. Watching the video, Jiang Chun Feng thought that her method of exorcism was even more ridiculous than him, but it doesn't matter to him because the girl in the video is very, very beautiful. While laughing mischievously, Jiang Chun Feng's earphones were suddenly tugged. Jiang Chun Feng got annoyed and asked who did that. A girl tugging at his earphones warned Jiang Chun Feng that if he smiled incoherently like that in front of the school, then he might be taken away as a pervert. Jiang Chun Feng replied that he didn't care because he wasn't bothering anyone. Then, his cell phone was suddenly snatched away. 
The girl was curious what strange video Jiang Chunfeng was watching. After seeing the video that Jiang Chunfeng watched, the girl's face turned red and asked if Jiang Chunfeng was a fan of the girl in the video. Jiang Chunfeng replied that she was his favorite video vlogger and asked the girl to return his cell phone with an annoyed face. The girl finally returned Jiang Chunfeng's cell phone and told him to hurry up because he would be late. Jiang Chunfeng didn't really like that girl. She's the study committee in his class. He usually targeted Jiang Chunfeng, and the master teachers were by her side as well. She was Xu Miao, the first genius student with an IQ over 200 since the school's founding. Xu Miao then remembered and reminded Jiang Chunfeng that he couldn't enter the school gate if he didn't wear a school uniform. Jiang Chunfeng also thought that he was in trouble, because he forgot his school uniform was lost in the mental hospital before. The two of them finally arrived at their school, Wansong High School. They were curious about what happened today because there were so many police cars parked in front of the school. Since the student council and the teacher on duty weren't here, that meant he could enter the school without a uniform. Zhang Chunfeng also smirked at Xu Miao. Soon there was a commotion in front of them because they were curious about what happened. After breaking through to see what had happened, Zhang Chunfeng also saw the chalk outline of the deceased victim. The surrounding students heard that the victim was Wu Huimin from year two who was playing the game. Jiang Chunfeng became curious about the game they were talking about. Xu Miao also said that it was a wish challenge. Sei told Jiang Chunfeng that it was a strange game that was popular these days. It was a game that granted wishes when the user successfully completed a task. However, if the user refuses the task, then that user will die. After hearing that, Jiang Chunfeng became interested and stared at Xu Miao to the point where she became nervous. Jiang Chunfeng then asked where he could download the game because it sounded interesting. But Xu Miao warned that it was not an ordinary game and that he might die because of it. Jiang Chunfeng ignored Xu Miao's warning and asked her if there was some kind of evil spirit in the game. He then tells that he is not afraid of anything related to evil spirits at all. In fact, he also admitted that he was involved in that field. Hearing that, Xu Miao asked if Jiang Chunfeng could see ghosts too. With a serious face, Jiang Chunfeng answered, of course. Xu Miao then pointed and said that at that place, there was the spirit of their schoolmate who had just jumped from the building yesterday, wandering around. Out of curiosity, Jiang Chunfeng checked, but saw nothing. Xu Miao also said that she was only joking. She said that the dead would not have the energy to become a ghost. If he believed in ghosts, Xu Miao believed that meant that Jiang Chunfeng did not understand the supernatural. Because of that, Xu Miao advised not to play that game. But still, Jiang Chunfeng was curious about this incident. So he decided to check it out himself. After using his power, even though there was no ghost, but he could see a faint evil energy. From his direction, he could see that it was coming from the gym. He knew that the place was the hideout of school thugs. But when he got there, he saw them all lying on the ground. He wondered if they had just had a fight. But as soon as he saw the sinister aura surrounding them, he felt that that wasn't the case. Seeing that evil aura coming from inside the gym, Jiang Chun Feng also entered the place. Inside that place was a person sitting in the midst of all this evil energy. Sheng Ching Chi, who was sitting in the middle of all this, also said that he was impressed with Jiang Chun Feng because he believed that even a high level exorcist couldn't possibly sense him. Hearing his words, Jiang Chun Feng activated his powers and asked who they were. Sheng Ching Chi was surprised and laughed. He then asked if he was clear. In front of Sheng Ching Chi, Jiang Chun Feng had said that Sheng Ching Chi stuffed it into that body and hid it well so most people wouldn't notice it. But sadly, Jiang Chun Feng was not among those people. Hearing that, Sheng Ching Chi complimented Jiang Chun Feng that he was the first person who could pretend to be calm even after knowing that bastard was in his body. Jiang Chun Feng then asked if the bastard was the only one he controlled now. Jiang Chun Feng warned Sheng Ching Chi that he had to make sure that he didn't get out of his body, because if he made it out, he would no longer treat Sheng Ching Chi as a human. Since Sheng Ching Chi had invited him here, 
Jiang Chunfeng was sure something was up. So he asked whether Sheng Qing Qi had anything to do with the girl who jumped from the roof and threatened to kill him if he dared tell a lie. Hearing Jiang Chunfeng's threat made Sheng Qing Qi pause. He also laughed and said that people say that idiots have no fear at all. Jiang Chunfeng was irritated by Sheng Qing Qi's insults. Then suddenly, Sheng Qing Qi coughed heavily. Jiang Chunfeng became curious if evil spirits could also catch a cold. Sheng Qing Qi then asked Jiang Chunfeng if he was the one who solved the abandoned mental hospital incident. He told him that he heard it from Pu Zhi Shun. Jiang Chunfeng became irritated with Pu Zhi Shun. Sheng Qing Qi then said that he knew Pu Zhi Shun's skills very well. Even though he was a B-rank exorcist, with his skills at that level, Sheng Qing Qi was sure that Pu Zhi Shun would not be able to solve the problems of the abandoned mental hospital. The problem is very complicated. Because of that, many give up to solve the problem. So Pu Zhi Shun planned to finish it and get 200 million in money. But Jiang Chunfeng only received 500,000 to complete it. Sheng Qing Qi had also heard that Jiang Chunfeng had only received a portion of the prize money for a child with an injured eye. Jiang Chunfeng also asked what was wrong with it. He thought that the exorcist skill wasn't meant to make money. Moreover, Sheng Qing Qi still had not answered his question. So Jiang Chunfeng once asked if Sheng Qing Qi did anything before to that dead girl. Without feeling guilty, Sheng Qing Qi answered, of course, and asked if Jiang Chunfeng was planning to avenge a dead girl. Sheng Qing Qi also challenged Jiang Chunfeng to come up against him, because he also felt curious how great a ruffian who had messed up his business. As soon as Sheng Qing Qi grabbed Jiang Chunfeng's face, Jiang Chunfeng was shocked when he saw the devil with Sheng Qing Qi. As he had expected, Jiang Chunfeng thought that he was right that there was an incredibly strong spirit within Sheng Qing Qi's body. Seeing Jiang Chunfeng kneeling before him, Sheng Qing Qi ridiculed him for previously being so confident because now Jiang Chunfeng looked like a weak and useless man. Even so, he said that Jiang Chunfeng was at least better than the thugs out there for being able to survive and not faint. Jiang Chunfeng, who was trembling, said that he was actually the same as them. He felt like fainting now. He then said that he felt dizzy, nauseous, started to lose consciousness, his stomach hurt, and he wanted to defecate. And besides that, he also said that Sheng Qing Qi's hands were really smelly. Sheng Qing Qi was confused and thought something was not right. He was sure Jiang Chun Feng should be starting to struggle to breathe by now. Jiang Chun Feng then said that his body felt really weak, so he had to eat something like Jin Seng. Curious about what Jiang Chun Feng was doing, Sheng Qing Qi grabbed Jiang Chun Feng's hair and asked what he was trying to do. As soon as he saw Jiang Chun Feng biting his belongings, Sheng Qing Qi immediately panicked and shouted for Jiang Chun Feng to return his calamity item. He also grabbed the calamity item and started pulling it. Jiang Chun Feng also laughed at Sheng Qing Qi because Sheng Qing Qi was so confident before, but now he was really panicked. Sheng Qing Qi told Jiang Chun Feng to let it go, but Jiang Chun Feng still insisted on holding on to the item. A moment later, Xu Miao suddenly entered the gym. Sheng Qing Qi and Jiang Chun Feng were so excited. After she opened the door of the gym, Xu Miao finally noticed the two of them and asked what the two of them were doing here. They replied that they didn't do anything. Xu Miao then asked who Sheng Qing Qi was and Jiang Chun Feng replied that he did not know him. Xu Miao felt disgusted with Jiang Chun Feng and asked why he would do that if Jiang Chun Feng didn't know him. He then asked Jiang Chun Feng to forget about that and said goodbye while closing the gym door. Witnessing Xu Miao's level, Sheng Qing Qi felt his pride had been crushed because Xu Miao looked like she was misunderstanding something. While Jiang Chun Feng was off guard, Sheng Qing Qi took back his calamity item. Even though he felt that he was being toyed with by Jiang Chun Feng, he still felt that this situation was strange. This calamity item of his contains very strong energy. So Jiang Chun Feng should have fainted just by looking at that. But Jiang Chun Feng looked fine. Sheng Qing Qi couldn't believe that this was possible. Finally, Jiang Chun Feng asked Sheng Qing Qi if he actually didn't do anything to the dead girl. Sheng Qing Qi replied that he was also an exorcist, so it was impossible for him to harm ordinary people. Jiang Chun Feng also accepted Sheng Qing Qi's answer.
Judging from the loathsome spirit within Sheng Qing Qi's body, he didn't think Sheng Qing Qi was a good person. But Jiang Chen Feng thought that Sheng Qing Qi didn't look like a bad person. Hearing Jiang Chen Feng's opinion, the irritated Sheng Qing Qi told him to shut up and asked how he could think like that. Jiang Chen Feng also realized that Sheng Qing Qi wanted to fight him, but he asked to postpone the fight for now. Jiang Chen Feng told that the girl just now was his class president, who was a nerd. So Xu Miao going to the gym alone outside of class hours was not something she usually did. And this was the first time Jiang Chen Feng saw Xu Miao so shocked. Apart from that, Sheng Qing Qi also sensed an evil energy. Jiang Chen Feng was also surprised by Sheng Qing Qi, who realized it. Sheng Qing Qi then said that he had seen people like Xu Miao many times, and also, Xu Miao might be in danger now. While Xu Miao was typing on her laptop, Xu Miao's cell phone kept telling her that Xu Miao had lost credibility. After doing the calculations, as soon as the results came out, Xu Miao became restless. She could no longer find the source. A moment later, Jiang Chen Feng suddenly took Xu Miao's cell phone and asked if she was gambling or something, which made Xu Miao very surprised. Jiang Chen Feng then suspected that Xu Miao was watching a dirty movie. Xu Miao got irritated and reminded Jiang Chen Feng that he and that weirdo in the gym just now were more suspicious. Jiang Chen Feng also remembered Sheng Qing Qi, who said that Jiang Chen Feng would not be able to finish it and offered services to save Xu Miao. Remembering that made Jiang Chen Feng annoyed and said that he didn't know him. Because Jiang Chen Feng took her cell phone, Xu Miao tried to snatch it back, but Jiang Chen Feng refused and said that Xu Miao also snatched his cell phone this morning. Xu Miao, who felt gloomy, asked Jiang Chen Feng to stop because she was not in the mood to joke with him. Upon realizing that this was the place where the girl had jumped, Jiang Chen Feng also asked that Xu Miao might also be playing that game. Xu Miao became nervous and asked what Jiang Chen Feng was talking about. Jiang Chen Feng replied that there was a strange light on the cell phone screen, and also Xu Miao's expression looked nervous. Afraid that this would startle her, Jiang Chen Feng thought that he would rather not tell Xu Miao about the evil spirits now. Jiang Chen Feng was sure that Xu Miao had come here because there were people in the gym, so he asked if it was a mission that could only be completed if he was alone. Xu Miao, who looked irritated, refused to answer and said that this was none of Jiang Chen Feng's business. Feeling that there was no other choice, Jiang Chen Feng threw Xu Miao's cell phone far away. Xu Miao panicked, but she felt strange that she didn't see her phone that was thrown away. Xu Miao's cell phone was in Jiang Chen Feng's mouth, seeing that Xu Miao thought that it was disgusting. Xu Miao took back her cell phone, wiped it with a handkerchief, and tidied up her laptop. While walking away, Xu Miao said that if the problem could be solved by simply smashing the phone, then there shouldn't be any death. Seeing Xu Miao walking away, Jiang Chen Feng offered his help. Xu Miao also asked if Jiang Chen Feng liked horror movies. Hearing that question, Jiang Chen Feng replied that he watched movies about vampire hunting several times. Xu Miao turned her head away and mocked Jiang Chen Feng that he was just a horror movie maniac and was also at the age where he had second grade syndrome. Jiang Chen Feng got irritated at being called Chunibyu. Xu Miao then said that scientific phenomenon is a way that humans usually use to explain an unusual phenomenon. Phenomena like this are a scientific matter that is still in doubt by most people. As an exception, seeking higher sentient beings existing in this universe and studying how they control and use energy is something that is of the highest level and has something profound. In this world, there are very few people who are able to approach this truth, and they label it as something mysterious. Xu Miao also felt really stupid, because she was sure that Jiang Chen Feng would not understand anything she said. Jiang Chen Feng also felt offended, and said that he could understand everything he said. After saying all that she said, Xu Miao told Jiang Chen Feng not to mind the matter of the game as it was her own problem, and told him to enjoy his own life. Seeing Xu Miao leaving, Jiang Chen Feng refused Xu Miao's warning. School has finally ended. The students came out of the school grounds. Among the school students who went home, 
Jiang Chenfeng, who saw Xu Miao alone, felt strange. Not only was Xu Miao ranked first in this school, but she was also ranked first in this city. This should make someone like Xu Miao famous. But other than Xu Miao talking to him, Xu Miao never interacted with anyone around him. Besides that, Jiang Chenfeng thought that Xu Miao always wore glasses that were the size of her face, and she had never seen it when she was not wearing glasses. Feeling suspicious, he intends to reveal the truth today. As Xu Miao was walking home, Jiang Chenfeng followed her from a distance. Jiang Chenfeng thought that he should focus if he didn't want to be suspected, but the girl nearby already thought that Jiang Chenfeng looked suspicious. Xu Miao was currently playing with a cat and giving it food. Witnessing that, Jiang Chenfeng sighed. He wondered why Xu Miao fed the cat for ten minutes. Getting bored, Jiang Chenfeng was about to leave because he still had other things to do. But suddenly there was a loud sound. He rushed to check and saw an accident near Xu Miao. People said that the motorbike almost hit her and thought it was a miracle that Xu Miao managed to avoid it. Jiang Chenfeng wondered if it was really just an accident. But once he checked, he found that it wasn't like that. The motorcyclist apologized to Xu Miao and asked if she was okay. Xu Miao replied that she was fine and told him not to worry. Upon checking with his strength, Jiang Chenfeng could see that the evil spirit that was in Xu Miao's body was getting stronger and stronger. If he just left Xu Miao, he was certain that Xu Miao would die. Thus, Jiang Chenfeng followed Xu Miao on the bus and also in the library. After following her until the afternoon, Jiang Chenfeng wondered why her house was so far away. Jiang Chenfeng then examined Xu Miao again with his strength and saw that the number of evil spirits within her body was increasing. He couldn't believe that evil spirits could gather that much and thought this would be interesting. A moment later, the steel beam that was being carried by the crane suddenly fell towards Xu Miao. As soon as she realized the steel beam that was about to hit her, Xu Miao tried to protect herself and thought that this was the end of it. But the steel beam that she thought would hit her never came. Instead, around her were the broken pieces of the scooter. After taking a look at the surroundings, Xu Miao was surprised to see the steel beam that was bent and shattered the wall. Xu Miao was confused as to what was going on. Jiang Chenfeng also breathed a sigh of relief. If he was even a few seconds late, Xu Miao might die. But he is worried about the destroyed scooter. Not long after, Xu Miao heard a huge horn sound. Upon looking towards the source of the sound, Xu Miao saw a truck running towards her without any passengers. Xu Miao was confused and scared seeing that. Because of fear, she could not move her legs. In her heart, Xu Miao, who was extremely frightened, could only ask for help. Jiang Chenfeng rushed to grab Xu Miao and started to activate his power. In front of the speeding truck, Jiang Chenfeng slapped the side of the truck very hard. Jiang Chenfeng planted his feet on the ground, then threw the truck away. Seeing the truck bounce off and hit the wall, Jiang Chenfeng was worried that he had used too much force. After the danger had passed, Xu Miao did not expect that she was still alive. As soon as she realized that she was being hugged, she turned around and saw Jiang Chun Feng who greeted her. Xu Miao was about to say something, but she withdrew her intention and pushed Jiang Chun Feng to release herself from Jiang Chun Feng's embrace. Xu Miao never dressed up properly, but Jiang Chun Feng didn't expect that Xu Miao had such a good scent. Xu Miao then asked if it was Jiang Chun Feng who had saved her and was dumbfounded when she saw the chaos that had ensued. Xu Miao was curious as to why Jiang Chenfeng could be here. Jiang Chenfeng thought that Xu Miao might not notice his strength with the eyes of an ordinary person. So Jiang Chenfeng said that he tried to push Xu Miao, but the truck suddenly turned on its own. After hearing Jiang Chenfeng's story, Xu Miao asked why Jiang Chenfeng had followed her. Since it had ended like this, Jiang Chenfeng wasn't sure if he should tell her about this evil spirit. Xu Miao then reminded him that he had said not to interfere in matters and asked why Jiang Chenfeng was still following her. Xu Miao then said that she would let it be if Jiang Chenfeng left now. Feeling that he had had enough, Jiang Chenfeng said that he was here to help her. But Xu Miao still insisted on solving this problem herself. After all, 
Jiang Chunfeng decided to take care of this evil spirit first. With his power, he intimidated the evil spirit to leave. The evil spirit disappeared. But there was still a bit of evil spirit left clinging to Xu Miao. This evil spirit was stronger than Jiang Chunfeng, he thought. While picking up the bag that he put down, Jiang Chunfeng said that he was sure Xu Miao herself knew that this was no ordinary accident. He knew that Xu Miao was really scared right now. Thus, he asked whether pride was more important than safety. If Xu Miao really didn't want to be helped, Jiang Chunfeng would have no choice but to leave. But suddenly Xu Miao's trembling hands grabbed Jiang Chunfeng's clothes. Xu Miao, who was trembling with fear, asked to be taken home. Watching Xu Miao, who was trembling in fear, Jiang Chunfeng tried to suppress his laughter. Jiang Chunfeng also assured Xu Miao that he would drive her home safely. Upon arriving at the place they were going to, Jiang Chunfeng looked completely dumbfounded because this was a rich people's neighborhood. Xu Miao said goodbye to Jiang Chunfeng and headed straight to her house. Jiang Chunfeng felt a little sad that he had brought her here, but Xu Miao immediately sent him off. However, while climbing the stairs, Xu Miao suddenly stopped and called Jiang Chunfeng. She thanks him for today. Looking at Xu Miao, Jiang Chunfeng briefly felt a flutter. But he became very annoyed when he saw the evil spirit clinging to Xu Miao. He also called Xu Miao and said that he felt hungry after walking a long way and had no money left. So he asked to eat at her house. Hearing Jiang Chunfeng's request, Xu Miao was about to lend him some money. Jiang Chunfeng finally felt that Xu Miao was driving him crazy. He finally told that Xu Miao was in danger today due to the evil spirit clinging to her tightly. Xu Miao was surprised to hear that Jiang Chunfeng could see evil spirits. Jiang Chunfeng had said that he was an expert in that field, but Xu Miao did not believe him. He actually had a way to help Xu Miao. That's why Jiang Chunfeng asked Xu Miao to explain about the game to him. Xu Miao finally agreed. But since this was the first time a man had come to her house, Xu Miao asked Jiang Chunfeng to promise not to do anything bad. Hearing Xu Miao's request, he did not understand what Xu Miao meant by something bad. Upon entering his house, Xu Miao was greeted by her cat, which he called Miao Xu. Jiang Chunfeng felt that name sounded familiar. After being invited in, Jiang Chunfeng asked where Xu Miao's parents were. Xu Miao answered that they weren't here and said that she lived alone. Hearing that, Jiang Chunfeng was surprised to hear that Xu Miao lived alone in such a big house. When Jiang Chunfeng asked if he could see Xu Miao's bedroom, of course Xu Miao firmly refused. When looking around the house, Xu Miao found a photo of a small child with her mother. Noticing Jiang Chunfeng staring at the photo, Xu Miao told him that it was her mother. When asked by Jiang Chunfeng why DHE didn't live with his mother, Xu Miao replied that her mother was no longer here. Hearing Xu Miao's story, he did not know that Xu Miao was in the same situation as him. Then, when he saw Xu Miao taking off her jacket with a lecherous face, Jiang Chunfeng thought that he didn't know about it either. Feeling suspicious, Xu Miao asked Jiang Chunfeng what he was doing. Panicking, Jiang Chunfeng answered nothing. Xu Miao then said that she would cook Jiang Chunfeng noodle soup using the simple ingredients in the cupboard. But Jiang Chunfeng said that it was fine because he actually lied when he said he was hungry earlier. Xu Miao, who was feeling restless, asked if Jiang Chunfeng was sure he wouldn't give up on this matter. Of course, Jiang Chunfeng would confidently not back down from this matter. Xu Miao also told about Mr. A, who is a worker in a supermarket. He made a request in this game. The next day, he received a mission. And the first mission he got was to jump 1,000 times in the same place on one leg. It was difficult for him to jump 1,000 times using one leg, but he managed to complete the mission. And the second mission he received the next day was running on the highway for one kilometer against the flow of traffic. Mr. A was scared, but he risked his life and kept running. Luckily, he didn't have an accident. The third mission he must put poison in all employees' food in the canteen. Mr. A accepts the mission and goes to the cafeteria at dawn and puts poison in the ingredients. Because of that, most of the workers who worked at the supermarket were rushed to the hospital, and 12 of them died. Then, Mr. A became a suspect in a premeditated murder case at the supermarket, 
but he was finally released because the evidence needed was still lacking. Next, Xu Miao told about Miss B, who was a high school student. She felt a one-sided love with her senior. So she made a request in the game that she wants to marry her senior. The game gives three missions for Miss B to make her wish come true. The first mission is to eat three sheets of exam paper. The second mission is to seduce a physics teacher who is still single. And the third mission is to jump from the school roof. If she managed to survive, then everything would be healed immediately. Miss B successfully completes the first mission and the second mission. But on the third mission, she has no luck. She finally died. Hearing that story, Zhang Chun Feng was sure that Miss B was the girl who jumped this morning. Xu Miao said that she only gave two random examples. The point is that the game will provide missions with different levels of difficulty, depending on how much hope they make. Zhang Chun Feng also asked if the players managed to complete these three missions, then their wish would come true. However, Xu Miao answered not like that. She explains that if the player successfully completes one mission, then he will get one point. If a player refuses a mission, then the point will be deducted by one point. All players will start the game with zero points. And when a player gets three points, then their wish will be granted. So it can be said that in the end, your request will be granted. And also vice versa. If the player continues to refuse missions and the points reach minus three points, then the player will lose credibility. The system will assume that the player has failed the game. Jiang Chun Feng finally understood. He also thought that that meant if they abandoned today's mission and did the next day's mission and continued to maintain points above minus three, then they could play this game forever. Hearing Jiang Chun Feng's words, Xu Miao said that it was possible in theory, but it would be different in practice. The longer this game lasts, the more difficult the mission will be received. At first, Xu Miao thought this might look like a normal scientific phenomenon, but when DHE looked at it closely, he could feel an extraordinary power behind it. He believed even professional exorcists would have a hard time dealing with this. That was why Xu Miao didn't want Zhang Chun Feng to get involved in this and asked Zhang Chun Feng to stop involving her. But Zhang Chun Feng ignored Xu Miao and asked what if the user's credibility was all used up. He then said Xu Miao's cell phone kept beeping about credibility, so he concluded that if the player failed, then the player would be possessed by an evil spirit. Xu Miao became worried about Jiang Chun Feng and convinced Jiang Chun Feng that he was involved in this matter to investigate an important matter, so Jiang Chun Feng didn't have to do this. Suddenly, Jiang Chun Feng's stomach was really hungry this time. He also asked Xu Miao to make the noodle soup that Xu Miao said earlier. In that way, Zhang Chun Feng promised to solve the problem. To make a person win the lottery, one only needs the lottery to change the numbers written on the ticket and match them with those on the web. But to make someone fall in love can only be done by controlling the human mind. And to get him married, it means that his mind has to be controlled for quite a long time. And that requires an incredible amount of energy. It requires a considerable amount of energy. But to forcibly turn an apple into a pear, it requires the ability to transform down to the atomic level. So it would require an enormous amount of energy, a bit of radioactivity, and even magnetic force. And according to Xu Miao's speculation, this game would not be able to grant their wishes regarding their lives. But to determine the level of the request, it depends on the amount of energy needed to grant it. Because no matter how strange the phenomena that occur, in the end, they are the result of the energy that exists in nature. But Xu Miao found it strange that this game could control such a large amount of energy. In the middle of Xu Miao's talk, Jiang Chun Feng voraciously ate his noodle soup and praised Xu Miao's excellent cooking. Looking at Jiang Chun Feng, who looked like he didn't care, Xu Miao thought that the talk was not important at the moment. However, since he had already eaten it, Zhang Chun Feng said now was the time to fulfill his promise. Xu Miao also asked if Zhang Chun Feng really heard what he said. Zhang Chun Feng replied that he heard it, but he didn't care about energy or anything else. All he cared about was to solve Xu Miao's problems. And if he could get rid of the evil spirit clinging to Xu Miao, Zhang Chun Feng thought that it meant that the problem regarding this game would also be resolved. 
Hearing Jiang Chen Feng's words, Xu Miao thought that he was right, but she believed that it was impossible. Jiang Chen Feng also did Kabadon on Xu Miao and said that he would try it. He then asked Xu Miao to relax and was about to use his strength, but he suddenly felt an excruciating pain. After kicking Jiang Chen Feng in the crotch with his knee, Xu Miao asked him what he was doing. Jiang Chen Feng winced in pain because his vital spot had been injured. Jiang Chen Feng, who was trembling in pain, then told Xu Miao that he was only helping her. He had to put his hand on Xu Miao's face so that he could draw out the evil spirit. Xu Miao also covered her breasts and asked what kind of exorcism it was. Jiang Chen Feng got annoyed and asked what she was thinking. Jiang Chen Feng finally touched Xu Miao's face. Seeing the evil spirit possessing Xu Miao, Jiang Chen Feng cursed in his mind. He tried to expel it, but the evil spirit refused to come out. Not only that, the evil spirits kept coming and possessing Xu Miao. Amidst that, Xu Miao saw Jiang Chen Feng's face, which looked very serious. Seeing his expression, Xu Miao felt that Jiang Chen Feng really meant what he said earlier and thought that Jiang Chen Feng was different from people who insulted and avoided him because he was a weirdo. She smiled and asked Jiang Chen Feng to stop this. Xu Miao said that this was impossible and asked Jiang Chen Feng to leave her and go home. Xu Miao thought that she didn't want to drag Jiang Chen Feng into her troubles. Jiang Chen Feng, who was worried about Xu Miao, said if this continued, then Jiang Chen Feng would not survive tonight. Xu Miao assured Jiang Chen Feng that she would be fine, because she had many accidents today, but she is still alive and well. Thus, Xu Miao asked Jiang Chen Feng not to worry. Hearing that made Jiang Chen Feng think that if it wasn't for him, Xu Miao might have died by now. Since Xu Miao said that she started playing this game to find out something important, Jiang Chen Feng asked what kind of wish Xu Miao was making. Xu Miao refused to answer, saying that it had nothing to do with Jiang Chen Feng. Xu Miao felt that she was not afraid to die. It's just that she felt that this was all unfair. Looking at the weak Xu Miao, Jiang Chen Feng reached into his pocket and took out Sheng Qing Chi's business card. After being called by Jiang Chen Feng, Sheng Qing Chi finally arrived at Xu Miao's house. When it was said that he had come quite quickly, Sheng Qing Chi said that he had actually been waiting for Jiang Chen Feng to call him. With an arrogant face, Sheng Qing Chi said that he had known from the start that Jiang Chen Feng wouldn't be able to solve this problem with his skills. Jiang Chen Feng got annoyed and said if Sheng Qing Chi failed, then he would follow Sheng Qing Chi everywhere in this world and bully him. Jiang Chen Feng also introduced Sheng Qing Chi to Xu Miao, remembering that Xu Miao was the one who interfered in his affairs at the gym earlier. Sheng Qing Chi thought that he should teach Xu Miao a lesson. He also said that the number of evil spirits in Xu Miao's body was very large, and he realized that this was the reason Jiang Chen Feng was trying so hard to save her. Besides, he didn't expect the two of them to live together. Hearing Sheng Qing Chi's words, Jiang Chen Feng asked what nonsense he was talking about. Seeing the behavior of the two of them, Xu Miao thought that they were very childish. She doubted that they would solve the problem. Xu Miao then called Sheng Qing Chi and confirmed that she was living alone, so there was no way they were living together. Sheng Qing Chi laughed inside because they were taking him too seriously. Xu Miao then said that she was not in a good state right now. But judging from Sheng Qing Chi willing to help her to resolve this kind of situation, Xu Miao concluded that Sheng Qing Chi was the one who had a special relationship with Jiang Chen Feng like the relationship she saw this morning. Sheng Qing Chi immediately panicked and said that this morning was just a misunderstanding. Since it was about to run out of time, Jiang Chen Feng told them to finish this quickly. Sheng Qing Chi sat down and immediately said that the amount of money needed to pay him was not the amount a student had, because he wasn't a volunteer. So he said if the pay wasn't enough, then he wouldn't help. Jiang Chen Feng was confused because he didn't have much money. But suddenly, Sheng Qing Chi's cell phone vibrated. Recognizing the QR code on Sheng Qing Chi's business card, Xu Miao said that she did not know how much was usually paid, so he sent quite a lot. Seeing the money he received, Sheng Qing Chi was surprised because it was three times the amount he received from usual. He now realized that he had underestimated Xu Miao. 
Moreover, Xu Miao said that she had already inquired about Sheng Qing Qi when she was waiting for him to come earlier. Sheng Qing Qi, a member of the Exorcist Association and an A level master in the Busan faction. Although he was expelled from the Busan faction due to a grave mistake, at the Green Jade Evil Spirits battle several years ago in Busan, the Exorcist Association did not revoke his qualification as an exorcist. Possessing an extraordinary background, his average ability also didn't differ much from the 12 people at rank S. He was promoted to a level last year and he specialized in mental strength and control. His success rate is 81%. Hearing that, Jiang Chun Feng thought that Sheng Qing Qi was actually pretty good, because she couldn't easily trust someone just from words, so Xu Miao judged her based on her data. Sheng Qing Qi fell silent. He thought that Xu Miao was not just anyone. Before starting, Sheng Qing Qi explained that there were two things he needed. In the first place, as long as he was performing an exorcism, Xu Miao had to show her back. Besides, Xu Miao must not look back no matter what. Secondly, he performed an exorcism by casting a spell on someone's back, so Xu Miao had to take off her clothes. Xu Miao was shocked and Jiang Chun Feng was excited. In order to make things clear to Xu Miao, Sheng Qing Qi asked Xu Miao not to worry, as he had absolutely no interest in her. But Xu Miao could not believe it. In order to convince Xu Miao, Sheng Qing Qi also asked Xu Miao if she wanted treatment and the doctor was a man. Does she could receive treatment without taking off her clothes? Xu Miao thought that Sheng Qing Qi sounded reasonable. However, she asked to at least use a swimsuit with an open back. Sheng Qing Qi replied that it was fine as long as her back was exposed. When Xu Miao went to change her clothes upstairs, Jiang Chun Feng warned Sheng Qing Qi that he was the one who brought Sheng Qing Qi into this matter, even though Xu Miao had already decided it. So he told Sheng Qing Qi to do well, because he would not let him go if Sheng Qing Qi failed. Sheng Qing Qi replied that he wasn't paid to be lazy, so he asked Jiang Chun Feng to trust him about that. Moreover, even though Jiang Chun Feng had the ability to stop that evil spirit, Sheng Qing Qi asked if Jiang Chun Feng thought he had enough ability to stop him. While they were talking, Xu Miao suddenly called Sheng Qing Qi and said that she was ready. She then told Sheng Qing Qi to go up alone and forbade Jiang Chun Feng from going up too. Jiang Chun Feng was disappointed because he wanted to see Xu Miao in a swimsuit. Twenty minutes later, Jiang Chun Feng could feel two different energies colliding with each other. He was so curious what happened. Not long after, Sheng Qing Qi opened the curtains. He looks like he's in trouble. Jiang Chun Feng felt a little worried. And sure enough, while pointing inside, Sheng Qing Qi said that he was in trouble and asked Jiang Chun Feng to come up. Jiang Chun Feng climbed the stairs while running out of anxiety. He wondered what had happened for Sheng Qing Qi to make such an expression. Upon arriving at Xu Miao's room, Jiang Chun Feng was surprised to see Sheng Qing Qi's calamity item embedded in Xu Miao's back. The brush of the calamity item seemed to spread more and more on Xu Miao's back. Jiang Chun Feng also asked what Sheng Qing Qi did to her. Sheng Qing Qi was about to ask why Jiang Chun Feng said that. But Jiang Chun Feng grabbed his collar and pinned Sheng Qing Qi against the wall. He was annoyed because her evil spirit was getting stronger. Sheng Qing Qi asked Jiang Chun Feng to stay away from him, but Jiang Chun Feng ignored him and said that he had already warned him. Sheng Qing Qi had no other choice and tried to crush Jiang Chun Feng's hand, but he was surprised because Jiang Chun Feng didn't feel anything, even though he used a force large enough that could even turn stones into sand. Jiang Chun Feng then strengthened his grip and told Sheng Qing Qi to restore Xu Miao to the way it was. Sheng Qing Qi also thought that Jiang Chun Feng was unreasonable for being this strong. He was wondering whether he should summon the jerk. However, suddenly Sheng Qing Qi's calamity item was behaving strangely, making Jiang Chun Feng's attention diverted. Just as he was about to say that something strange was going on with his item calamity, Sheng Qing Qi suddenly nuzzled Jiang Chun Feng in the face. But it was he who was in pain. 
He finally asked Jiang Chunfeng if his head was cold now. He said if he had intended to hurt her, then he would not have summoned Jiang Chunfeng here. After he thought about it, Jiang Chunfeng thought that he was right. Sheng Qingqi also pushed Jiang Chunfeng. He felt stupid for thinking Jiang Chunfeng could help him. He didn't need help from someone who couldn't even properly assess the situation. So he asked Jiang Chunfeng to just stand up and be quiet so as not to disturb him. Seeing this situation, Jiang Chunfeng opened his mouth and said even though he wasn't good at this, it didn't mean he had never encountered something like this. The spirit within Xu Miao's body and Sheng Qingqi's spirit seemed to entangle each other. No ordinary person could overcome this powerful energy. So it was no different from saying that Sheng Qingqi wanted Xu Miao to die now. Because of that, Jiang Chunfeng asked Sheng Qingqi to explain it. But Sheng Qingqi refused to explain. There are so many exorcist methods in this world. Simply because Jiang Chunfeng lacked knowledge, Sheng Qingqi had no reason to explain it to him. He also summoned his item Calamity. The Calamity item took out a needle and started sucking Sheng Qingqi's blood. Realizing that it was human blood, Jiang Chunfeng felt that it was very strange, but he thought that he didn't have time to think about it. Sheng Qingqi then said that the reason he had called Jiang Chunfeng here wasn't because he couldn't solve it himself. Just as he was about to say the reason, Sheng Qingqi suddenly coughed. He said the reason he didn't want to do it was that he didn't want to push himself any further than this. Thinking that this involved a life, Jiang Chunfeng thought that Sheng Qingqi probably wouldn't lie. He sighed and decided to trust him for now. Sheng Qingqi's blood had now reached his item calamity. Right after that, Xu Miao grimaced in pain. Jiang Chunfeng realized that Sheng Qingqi was starting to incorporate a different energy now. Hearing Jiang Chunfeng say that, Sheng Qingqi said that he didn't expect Jiang Chunfeng to be able to sense a flow of energy without the aid of any tools. This was the third time this month that Sheng Qingqi had brought out evil spirits because of that game, so he asked Jiang Chunfeng if he knew what was strange about them. Hearing that question, Jiang Chunfeng replied that no matter how hard you shoot them away, other spirits would come and enter the void. And even stranger, no one knows where the spirits came from. Sheng Qingqi laughed and told him that was the reason he put his spirit into Xu Miao's body. This was the only thing for him to save Xu Miao. He then explained that there was a spirit here that didn't know where it came from, but somehow it was properly connected to his body. If there are ten spirits in one body, then you can exercise them slowly using exorcism easily. That's what usually happens. But the evil spirits in this game are not that easy. When they expel the spirit from their body, an equal number of other spirits will enter their body. The speed at which the spirit was expelled and the speed at which it entered him were exactly the same. No matter which exorcist takes care of this, the number of spirits will never change. So that's why he said that you wouldn't solve a case this complicated without a suitable skill set. When asked if he had managed to overcome previous cases by Jiang Chunfeng, Sheng Qingqi said, of course. So he asked Jiang Chunfeng to take a look and pay attention. Jiang Chunfeng could also see that Sheng Qingqi's energy was spreading evenly. Moreover, he realized that Sheng Qingqi was very concentrated. He had no idea what he was talking about, but Jiang Chunfeng remembered and asked why Sheng Qingqi had called him here. He kept asking questions until Sheng Qingqi scolded him. As this was an extremely important moment, Sheng Qingqi asked Jiang Chunfeng to shut up. He then ordered Jiang Chunfeng to remove one of Xu Miao's socks. Hearing that strange request, Jiang Chunfeng became irritated and asked what he said. As Jiang Chunfeng was taking off Xu Miao's socks, Sheng Qingqi could feel his energy spreading to all parts of Xu Miao's body. At that moment, Jiang Chunfeng was laughing because it was his first time taking off a woman's socks. Out of curiosity, Sheng Qingqi asked Jiang Chunfeng if he was from one of the four great exorcist groups. However, Jiang Chunfeng looked so clueless that it made Sheng Qingqi think that Jiang Chunfeng was a rookie. Sheng Qingqi's energy finally finished spreading throughout Xu Miao's body. He was excited because he believed that no matter how great the game was, as long as his item of calamity was inside Xu Miao's body, it would eat up all the spirits in no time. Once the connection between Xu Miao and the evil spirit was severed, it would be impossible for the evil spirit to return to her.
Now is the time for him to take the next step. After Sheng Qingqi used his ability, Xu Miao's body suddenly glowed. Sheng Qingqi was relieved that Xu Miao was clean now. All the energy of the evil spirit had been completely removed from his body. If Xu Miao was an ordinary patient, then Sheng Qingqi only needed to expel the spirit from her body. But because the case is unique, the solution will be more complicated. All the spirits within Xu Miao's body had now been eaten by his calamity item, but it would not be able to deal with the spirits outside her body. The spirits had lost connection with the body's owner, so they were floating in this room. They would immediately realize that Xu Miao was the owner, and if that happened, Sheng Qing Qi would have to do this all over again. Thus, Sheng Qing Qi asked if Jiang Chun Feng could see the remaining spirits, because they have to destroy them all. But he saw Jiang Chun Feng who closed his eyes. He was so annoyed and wanted to do it himself. However, Jiang Chun Feng suddenly said that Sheng Qing Qi was really impatient. Now Jiang Chun Feng could see them clearly. He then readied his fist and headed towards the spirit. Sheng Qing Qi became curious about what Jiang Chun Feng was doing. Jiang Chun Feng then threw a punch at the evil spirit and annihilated it. Sheng Qing Qi was also surprised to witness that. Spiritual exorcist was a technique that could only be performed with a tool, incantation, talisman, or holy water. So Sheng Qing Qi didn't understand why he could injure that evil spirit with his bare hands. Sheng Qing Qi then slapped the evil spirit and poked its eyes out. As a finish, Jiang Chun Feng jumped and then hit the evil spirit with his knee. Following his knee strike, Jiang Chun Feng landed and started screaming in low frequency. His screams caused the evil spirits to be eradicated and even shattered the windows of the room. Miao Shu the cat was stunned to see the chaos that was happening in this house. Sheng Qing Qi was currently chanting an incantation. Jiang Chun Feng, who saw Shu Miao who was lying on the bed, didn't notice earlier because he was too panicked. But now that he looked at her, Jiang Chun Feng thought that Shu Miao's legs were long and beautiful, more so than he had imagined. But for some reason, Jiang Chun Feng felt as if he had seen it before. So he tried to remember where he had seen it before. A moment later, Sheng Qing Qi's item calamity brush that clung to Shu Miao started to shrink. After stopping receiving blood from Sheng Qing Qi, the item finally left Shu Miao. Jiang Chen Feng could see that Shu Miao's body had now returned to normal. Soon, there was a loud coughing sound. In the corner of the room, Sheng Qing Qi coughed loudly. Out of worry, Jiang Chen Feng asked if he was all right. After vomiting blood, Sheng Qing Qi said that this was none of his business. Jiang Chun Feng also started to think about what had happened. Sheng Qing Qi placed his calamity item on Shu Miao's back, then put Shu Miao to sleep. After that, he transferred the spirit from his body to Shu Miao's body via the item. After the item absorbed all of Shu Miao's spirit, Sheng Qing Qi received all of Shu Miao's spirit in his body. Jiang Chun Feng didn't expect that this turned out to be a more dangerous job than he had imagined. Sheng Qing Qi later said no one had ever seen how he worked. Hearing that, Jiang Chun Feng thought that Sheng Qing Qi would say he would kill Jiang Chun Feng because he had witnessed it and prepared to fight. Then Sheng Qing Qi said exorcism usually uses its spiritual power as a link, but he uses spirits. So he asked Jiang Chun Feng wasn't that strange. But Jiang Chen Feng replied that even though Sheng Qing Qi uses spirits, he is still human. And as long as Sheng Qing Qi looked like a human, he would not treat her like a monster. Sheng Qing Qi was shocked to hear that. He also wiped the blood and told that Xu Miao would wake up in a few hours, so he invited Jiang Chen Feng to come down and talk. It was already 2015, and Xu Miao was already resting on her bed. At that time, Downstairs, Jiang Chun Feng was cleaning up the mess that happened earlier. Jiang Chun Feng was annoyed that he was the only one who cleaned up all this, but Sheng Qing Qi refused to help because Jiang Chun Feng was the one who destroyed it. Sheng Qing Qi also began to think that not only could Jiang Chun Feng parry his item calamity, but he could also defeat evil spirits with his bare hands. From the strength and skill that Jiang Chun Feng displayed, Sheng Qing Qi thought that Jiang Chun Feng might not be too far below him. So he called Jiang Chun Feng. He informed that now Xu Miao was safe. 
but the game was still running. If they don't find the source of the evil spirit, then this problem will continue. Moreover, no matter how hard Sheng Qing Chi thought, there was no way this game could grant all wishes. He said that the Exorcist Association had given this case a dark gold level, higher than the case of an abandoned mental hospital. Jiang Chenfeng didn't expect to hear that. Sheng Qing Chi then told him that he had already investigated this game. Even though he couldn't find the true source of his evil spirits, it didn't mean that he didn't find any clues. So he asked if Jiang Chun Feng wanted to be his assistant. Since Jiang Chun Feng liked catching evil spirits, if it went well, Sheng Qing Chi offered that they could have the reward they received from the Exorcist Association. However, Jiang Chun Feng refused it. He didn't want to cooperate with someone from the Exorcist Association. He thought that not only were they useless, but they were just annoying him. Sheng Qing Chi was irritated and offended because he was the best exorcist of this generation. He says there are many people lining up to be his assistant. Seeing the excited Sheng Qing Chi, Jiang Chun Feng asked him not to scream at this time of night and disturb the neighbors. Sheng Qing Chi was getting irritated because the sound Jiang Chun Feng made while beating the spirit earlier was louder. While they were talking, suddenly from Jiang Chun Feng's pocket came a voice asking Jiang Chun Feng to enter a request. Hearing that, Sheng Qing Chi realized what that sound was. Jiang Chun Feng took out his cell phone and told him that earlier when Sheng Qing Chi was doing an exorcism, he downloaded the game. And now the game started asking him to enter a request. Seeing Jiang Chun Feng like this, Sheng Qing Chi thought that he must be insane and wondered what Jiang Chun Feng even thought before doing anything. Jiang Chun Feng was curious as to what kind of request he should submit. Sheng Qing Chi finally got ready to leave and said that he didn't want to talk to an insane person like Jiang Chun Feng. And because Jiang Chun Feng refused to be his assistant, Sheng Qing Chi told him never to contact him again from now on. Jiang Chun Feng was confused by Sheng Qing Chi because he had never asked him to do that. He then started writing his request. Out of curiosity, Sheng Qing Chi immediately asked what he had written. He also saw Jiang Chun Feng who asked for the sun to explode. Seeing Jiang Chun Feng's request, Sheng Qing Chi scolded him and asked if he knew how dangerous what he was doing was. Jiang Chun Feng was sure that the game couldn't blow up the sun. He was just curious what kind of mission he would get from this game. But seeing the result, Jiang Chun Feng laughed because now there was a bug attacking the game. Witnessing Jiang Chun Feng's behavior, Sheng Qing Chi was sure that Jiang Chun Feng had completely lost his mind. He clicked his tongue and told Jiang Chun Feng to do it himself. Jiang Chun Feng said the game told him to enter another request, but Sheng Qing Chi ignored him. Seeing this game asking for another request, Jiang Chun Feng was at a loss as to what he should enter. Elsewhere, there is a famous haunted house in XX City. It was a building that was different from the other buildings around it. A white house without windows. Many horror stories about this place. Some said they saw a strange snake on the roof of the house. Some say there are umbrellas that float by themselves in the air. And others say there are giant bats and fires there. However, no one can prove the truth of this story. The owner of the house never showed himself and never met the neighbors around him. But whoever met him said this. He is a handsome young man. Upon entering the courtyard, Sheng Qing Chi was greeted and called as a young man by the fire goblins. They can create a barrier and people outside the barrier will not be able to see what is inside the barrier. While trying to enter the house, Sheng Qing Chi gets annoyed because the door is broken again. He scolds someone for still not fixing this. What he was mad at was the umbrella ghost. This ghost can control the weather and temperature inside the barrier and he also has the ability to repair broken objects. Despite being scolded by Sheng Qing Chi, the ghost didn't say anything. Sheng Qing Chi grew irritated with him. The fire goblins also led Sheng Qing Chi to enter through the back door. As he was about to enter through the back door, someone greeted Sheng Qing Chi. He is a vampire summoned as Viscount Stan. He told Sheng Qing Chi that Kiriko had been looking for him. Because he was tired, Sheng Qing Chi told the vampire to meet him and tell him about this. But the vampire rejected that because of how scary Kiriko was. Hearing that, Sheng Qing Chi said nothing and entered the house. 
After he entered, slime dripped down on his head. As he looked up, someone asked Sheng Ching Chi if he had brought dinner and said that he liked fresh human flesh. However, Sheng Ching Chi did not answer the voice. The giant snake on the ceiling asked why Sheng Ching Chi didn't respond. This snake was the five venomous snake. Evil spirit in the legend that has five types of poison. Sheng Ching Chi also said that he was tired and didn't have the energy to play with him. The five venomous snake became annoyed by Sheng Ching Chi's tone. Now that Sheng Ching Chi had been playing with the five venomous snake for so long, he was afraid of it again. The annoyed five venomous snake asked if Sheng Ching Chi really thought he was a young master. He said Sheng Ching Chi was just an empty shell, like a dog with a collar around its neck. Hearing that made Sheng Ching Chi's hands tremble in annoyance. However, he decided to ignore it. The five venomous snake also tried to stop Sheng Ching Chi. But when he saw someone's figure, the five venomous snake was immediately frightened and reasoned that he was only joking. After pleading with Sheng Ching Chi not to misunderstand, he started to flee. Seeing that figure, Sheng Ching Chi said that he heard she wanted to meet him. But he asked to talk later because he was really tired today. But the figure said it couldn't, because the owner wanted to meet Sheng Ching Chi now. That figure is evil spirit, num 78, Miss Kiriko, the maid in the house where Sheng Ching Chi lived. Hearing Kiriko's words, Sheng Ching Chi trembled in fear. Using what little courage he had left, Sheng Ching Chi said that he didn't want to leave. But Kiriko disappeared from his sight. He then felt a presence behind him. Kiriko suddenly appeared behind Sheng Ching Chi and put a fan on Sheng Ching Chi's back, then used her power. He said he wouldn't say it twice. The evil spirits who witnessed that started to run away in fear of being dragged away again. The electrocuted Sheng Ching Chi finally agreed to go see him. Kiriko says that's good, then disappears. Sheng Ching Chi also came to the room he was headed for. Kiriko was already waiting there and told his young master to stop hesitating. He then ordered the fire goblins to open their barrier. The fire goblins entered the crest and it started to glow brightly. After a while closing his eyes because of the glare, in front of him is now a passage. Kiriko told Sheng Ching Chi to come in immediately. He warns if he keeps the owner waiting too long, then no one will know what punishment he will get. Sheng Ching Chi got scared and jumped into the passage. After entering the passage, the fire goblins asked Sheng Ching Chi to hurry up, as they didn't want to stay here long. Sheng Ching Chi opened the door in front of him. In the room there is a mirror. Looking at the mirror made Sheng Ching Chi nervous and swallowed his saliva. He then walked over to the mirror. When he stood in front of the mirror, Sheng Ching Chi lowered his head and saluted the master. Shortly after, from inside the mirror came a voice saying it had been two months now. Looking in the mirror, he saw his face turned into a devil's. The voice asked why Sheng Ching Chi had not given him a soul in these two months. This really made him angry. Inside the mirror is Jade Devil, one of the seven greatest devils. The frightened Sheng Ching Chi said that it was just a misunderstanding and asked Jade Devil to listen to his explanation. Jade Devil also asked if Sheng Ching Chi refused to serve him anymore. Sheng Ching Chi then answered, of course not. He said that a soul like that can only be obtained from the corpse of an evil spirit. Also recently, the Exorcist Association started not issuing missions related to evil spirits. He tells her that he tried hard to get to her and found her in an abandoned mental hospital. But there was a strange person who stole the case from him, and all the corpses of the evil spirits were handed over to the Exorcist Association. Not accepting Sheng Ching Chi's excuses, Jade Devil asked if Sheng Ching Chi was sure it wasn't because he wasted time due to his greed for money and thought he was the only one who could beat that evil spirit. Sheng Ching Chi immediately knelt down and said that the risk level of an abandoned mental hospital was too high compared to the fees, so the other exorcists avoided this case. So he's just trying to get better pay from clients, because if the payout is big enough, then he'll be able to buy the soul of the Jade Devil from the black market. He said that he was just trying to find a more effective way, but he didn't expect that someone would take on the mission. Jade Devil was disgusted and said that he didn't want to hear Sheng Ching Chi's explanation anymore. All he wants is the result. Sheng Ching Chi also asked Jade Devil not to worry, because recently there was a very popular game, 
and the Exorcist Association was offering a very large amount of prize money. He believes the mastermind of the game is an evil spirit. However, Jade Devil, who heard that, told Sheng Ching Chi not to touch the game. Even he didn't know how great the master behind the game was. If Sheng Ching Chi persisted in tackling the game, Jade Devil was certain that Sheng Ching Chi would die. Sheng Ching Chi was surprised because the game even made a devil try to avoid it. However, Jade Devil demanded that Sheng Ching Chi give him a soul within this month and reminded of the contract between them if Sheng Ching Chi did not want the children to become his food. Sheng Ching Chi, who broke out in cold sweat, begged Jade Devil not to hurt the children because Jade Devil promised not to hurt them. Jade Devil always attached importance to trust, so he demanded that Sheng Ching Chi fulfill the terms of the contract between them if Sheng Ching Chi wanted to protect them. Sheng Ching Chi also asked if Kiriko was an evil spirit. Hearing that Jade Devil was speechless, Sheng Ching Chi then asked why he didn't eat Kiriko if the Jade Devil needed a soul. Jade Devil immediately felt angry and felt offended because Sheng Ching Chi dared to make suggestions to him. Sheng Ching Chi was also frightened and said that this was a misunderstanding. However, Jade Devil ignored Sheng Ching Chi and said that he should be the one to decide whether there was a misunderstanding or not. Suddenly, Sheng Ching Chi's left hand was severed. He then lost his balance. Not only was his left hand severed, but both his hands and feet were severed. Jade Devil had no intention of letting Sheng Ting Chi off easily after Sheng Ting Chi broke his promise. He also said that maybe Sheng Ting Chi might be feeling too comfortable due to the pain and nerves not working. Hearing that made Sheng Ching Chi feel a sense of terror. He promised that he would prepare the best soul to give to him this month. Even so, Jade Devil said Sheng Ching Chi still had to accept the punishment for having made a mistake, so he would not repeat the same mistake again. With a cynical smile, Jade Devil said that the pain felt by humans is pleasure for him. Sheng Ching Chi was even more terrified and begged him. But Jade Devil ignored him and activated the pain Sheng Ching Chi. An unimaginable pain began to be felt by Sheng Ching Chi. He tried to endure the pain, but it was all in vain. It was proven by Sheng Ching Chi's loud shout. The fire goblins who heard that thought that Sheng Ching Chi probably wouldn't come out in a few hours. After a while, Sheng Ching Chi's body recovered completely. Because Sheng Ching Chi had to find a soul for him, Jade Devil returned his arms and legs. But he warned next that not only would he make a pact with Sheng Ching Chi's friend, but he would also make Sheng Ching Chi feel pain worse than death. He also called Sheng Ching Chi his son and asked if he understood, but Sheng Ching Chi was unable to reply. Sheng Ching Chi, who was lying on the ground, did not understand how long his fate as a dog would end, and why this had to happen to him. In his despair, he prayed to God to be saved. At Shu Miao's house, Shu Miao, who had already woken up, was walking down the stairs. He also saw Jiang Chun Feng sleeping on his sofa, and thought that he was still here. Xu Miao was curious about what Zhang Chun Feng had been doing since he looked so tired. He then saw a paper. The paper contains various kinds of exercises. Looking at the numbers, Xu Miao thought that it was a lie. In this situation, Xu Miao wasn't sure if she should wake Zhang Chun Feng up. But letting her sleep here felt strange to her too. Not knowing, Xu Miao decided to change clothes first. However, he saw the cell phone that was in his crotch. Xu Miao was curious as to why Jiang Chun Feng had put his cell phone there. But suddenly, Jiang Chun Feng's cell phone rang, making Xu Miao turn her head. The phone continuously notified Jiang Chun Feng that there was a new mission. Jiang Chun Feng felt happy because now he could finally eat a big burger. But suddenly, the whole restaurant shook. Chaos ensued, causing Jiang Chun Feng's burger to be thrown. He then woke up because he was slapped by Xu Miao. He then was surprised to look at Xu Miao's chest. He thought it was a beautiful sight, but his nose started to bleed. Seeing Jiang Chun Feng's nosebleed, Xu Miao asked why Jiang Chun Feng's nose was bleeding. Jiang Chun Feng also reasoned that it was because Xu Miao slapped him. Xu Miao then asked why Jiang Chun Feng played that game, even though he had forbidden it. He didn't understand why Jiang Chun Feng had to put himself in danger. Jiang Chun Feng also asked why he had to listen to it. Moreover, 
He said that it was just Shu Miao's feeling that this was dangerous. Shu Miao heard that, but suddenly the game started giving Jiang Chun Feng a challenge. After seeing the contents of the mission, Jiang Chun Feng showed Shu Miao his cell phone. The first mission is to confess love to a woman with a naked body until it is accepted. Jiang Chun Feng also said that this mission looked quite easy, but the exasperated Shu Miao did not think so. Jiang Chun Feng then said not to think about it and started to put on his clothes again. Since the miasma in Shu Miao's body had already been cleaned, Jiang Chun Feng was about to go home. But Shu Miao asked him to wait a moment. Out of curiosity, Shu Miao asked what request Jiang Chun Feng had made. It can be seen on his cell phone that Jiang Chun Feng asked everyone in the world to think he is handsome. Shu Miao was amazed at what kind of request it was and thought that his request was very strange. Jiang Chun Feng then said that he was only making random requests, like deleting this game or killing the mastermind behind it. But this game didn't accept all kinds of requests, so he filled it with origins. However, Jiang Chun Feng had said that he wasn't serious about this game, so he made an easy request. But looking at the request that Jiang Chun Feng asked for, Xu Miao did not think so. He said that this was a difficult request to grant. Hearing that made Jiang Chun Feng dumbfounded. Xu Miao then explained, just like she said before, this game adjusted the mission difficulty based on the level of demand depending on their common sense. For example, he said that Jiang Chun Feng's appearance didn't look handsome, but he wasn't ugly either. Jiang Chun Feng got irritated and said that Xu Miao said that because she really didn't like him. Xu Miao then said that if she thought Jiang Chun Feng was handsome, not everyone would think so. Take an old man with special habits and a strange imagination. In essence, Xu Miao said that no matter how perfect Jiang Chun Feng looked, there would always be people in this world who found him average or even ugly. Hearing that made Jiang Chun Feng feel that he agreed with it. After all, there are a total of 7.6 billion people in the world, no matter how small the group is, but there are still a lot of them. So Xu Miao asked Jiang Chun Feng to imagine how much effort it would take to change a human's perception. Jiang Chun Feng panicked as soon as he realized that the energy required for his request was enormous. Moreover, Xu Miao didn't care if it was possible or not, but she was sure that no one would accept a confession from a naked man. Just as Jiang Chun Feng was about to leave, he was stopped by Xu Miao once again. He thanked Jiang Chun Feng for his help. He didn't know how to reply to Jiang Chun Feng. He knew that Jiang Chun Feng didn't care as much about money as Sheng Qing Qi. But if at any time Jiang Chun Feng needed help, Xu Miao asked to just say so. So if Jiang Chun Feng needed help in the future, he wanted Jiang Chun Feng to not hesitate to tell him. Hearing Xu Miao's words made Jiang Chun Feng's chest flutter. He also asked what request Xu Miao made earlier. Xu Miao apologized because it was her secret. Left with no other choice, Jiang Chun Feng asked Xu Miao to just tell him when he wanted to. Xu Miao then warned Jiang Chun Feng to be careful and not to underestimate. Even though he was strange, but Xu Miao still worried about him. Hearing Xu Miao's warning, Jiang Chun Feng said that he would not be easily defeated. Jiang Chun Feng finally returned to his apartment. His cell phone kept asking Jiang Chun Feng to finish his challenge immediately. Because it was so noisy, Jiang Chun Feng covered his phone with a pillow. The next day, the game asked Jiang Chun Feng to pull out his heart and hold it for 20 minutes. Seeing that challenge, Jiang Chun Feng, who was lifting dumbbells, thought only an idiot would do it. On the fourth day, the game challenged Jiang Chun Feng to kill all of his classmates. Seeing Jiang Chun Feng's challenge, Xu Miao was sure that the game presented a challenge that was impossible to beat. He then pointed out that Jiang Chun Feng's credit was now under the limit. Jiang Chun Feng also wondered whether he would be chased by misfortune like Xu Miao before. Because he was fine last night, and so far haven't had any accidents. But suddenly Jiang Chun Feng's head was hit by a ball. Seeing Jiang Chun Feng who had fallen down, the worried ball owners asked if he was okay. Out of curiosity, Jiang Chun Feng asked Xu Miao how the game would go on after being under the limit. Xu Miao told that normally, you only have to wait for death. You can only start the game again if you complete the challenge. 
Otherwise, there will be misfortune that follows death. Jiang Chunfeng then asked if there was any other way to finish this game apart from completing challenges. Xu Miao did not quite understand what he meant. Jiang Chunfeng also showed that in the game there is a circle like a progress bar. Seeing that, Xu Miao told Jiang Chunfeng to quickly find Sheng Qing Qi to help him clean the miasma and he would take care of the payment matters. But Jiang Chunfeng asked if Xu Miao knew why it was difficult to clean Xu Miao's miasma compared to others. Without him, he believed that Sheng Qing Qi would not be able to save Xu Miao. Xu Miao did not understand what Jiang Chunfeng was trying to say. Jiang Chunfeng then said that he was sure Xu Miao was a psychic. Xu Miao was surprised and asked how Jiang Chunfeng could know. Jiang Chunfeng also answered that because he was the same. Xu Miao was stunned to hear that. Because of that, Jiang Chunfeng said it would be very difficult to clear the miasma within him. He was sure that Sheng Qing Qi would not be able to handle it alone. In addition, he believed that this progress bar must also have a reason. He thought it might be a hidden method to clear the game. Xu Miao also told that the bar showed the day. Once the credit is below the limit and continues to be so, the progress bar will continue to grow every day. He also told that the day he had an accident at the construction site was the second day when his credit was below the limit. The strength of this game is stronger than Xu Miao thought. If Jiang Chunfeng had not cleared the miasma within his body, Xu Miao felt that he would not have survived that night. Hearing that, Jiang Chunfeng also asked what would happen after the tenth day. He was curious about it. He feels there is a secret behind it. Xu Miao told the truth. This game had appeared time and time again. It was like a plague. It appears for no reason and suddenly disappears. And in fact, no one can survive ten days of bad luck. Except for one of the twelve Archmage, Archmage Kid. However, Xu Miao said Archmage Kid never said what happened after the tenth day. In other words, Xu Miao did not know what would happen next. Jiang Chunfeng became very interested and wanted to give it a try. Xu Miao was very worried about Jiang Chunfeng, because as far as she knew, Jiang Chunfeng wasn't even an exorcist. He didn't understand why Jiang Chunfeng could be sure that he could finish it like Archmage Kid. Jiang Chunfeng didn't really know how powerful Archmage Kid was, but he was sure that the great power behind this game should be a demon. With full confidence, Jiang Chunfeng said as long as his opponent was a demon, then he would never let go. Xu Miao did not understand why Jiang Chunfeng was so adamant. Jiang Chunfeng then said reincarnating into an evil spirit was probably because they had no choice. But to become a demon, he believed it was his own choice. Because of that, he wanted to kill them all. As Jiang Chunfeng was about to leave, Xu Miao asked him where he was going. Jiang Chunfeng replied that bad luck would come his way and that it might affect everyone in this city. So he intended to go to a place where no one was around to spend his ten days there. Xu Miao hoped that Jiang Chunfeng was just joking. But after five hundred words spoken, Xu Miao still failed to stop Jiang Chunfeng. In a remote mountainous area, Jiang Chunfeng was currently driving a pink car. While riding, Jiang Chunfeng thought that Xu Miao was indeed very good. Previously, when Jiang Chunfeng was going to leave, Xu Miao asked if Jiang Chunfeng could drive. He was worried that if Jiang Chunfeng took public transportation, then other people would be dragged along. So she told Jiang Chunfeng to bring her car. Jiang Chunfeng felt that driving a car like this felt very cool, even though it was pink and a bit feminine. Shortly thereafter, his cell phone warned of an accident ahead and asked to slow down. From the top of the cliff, some pebbles fell from above. As he was drinking the water, Jiang Chunfeng felt a miasma. He was then shocked when he saw large boulders falling from above. In the mountains, there was a loud crash. Jiang Chunfeng's stomping feet were so loud they cracked the ground. He held a boulder in one hand and Xu Miao's car in the other. He thought it wouldn't matter if he got hit. But if he hits Xu Miao's car, he is sure that Xu Miao will kill him. On a sunny morning in a temple, there was a monk sweeping the courtyard in front of the temple. It wasn't long before he was startled by Jiang Chunfeng's arrival. In a mocking tone, he called out to the monk. Instantly, the monk looked back, and he was very surprised by Jiang Chunfeng's arrival. 
The monk immediately ran into the temple screaming in shock and threw a broom in his hand while saying that the bearer of bad luck came again this time. Jiang Chunfeng casually stood up while lifting the car that was carried on his right shoulder. He casually said if he was that scary. A few moments later, the monk who had shouted into the temple ran out of the temple with his friends. They were carrying sticks as weapons to chase Jiang Chunfeng away because they thought he was bad luck. They were all on alert. Jiang Chunfeng suddenly continued his attraction, throwing the car so high that the monks looked shocked as it fell in front of them. One of the monks yelled at Jiang Chunfeng and told him to get out of here. Jiang Chunfeng ignored the monk. He also told the monks to wash his car, which looked very dirty. Suddenly, the monks were confused while looking at each other. He went on to say that he wanted to see the master of the monks. One of the monks replied in an angry tone, saying that the jinx had hurt the master badly and asked why he still dared to come here again. The monk warned Jiang Chunfeng to leave or else they would act cruelly. Jiang Chunfeng sighed then said that they couldn't understand his situation. He didn't care what his master said, they were still not enlightened. The monks were furious from the look on his face and from the wrinkling of his forehead. The monk challenged him to a fight. Jiang Chunfeng, who had no fear, was surrounded by monks who each carried a spear. Jiang Chunfeng warned that they couldn't defeat him easily because he had a high level of fighting ability. One of the monks said he didn't care and thought Jiang Chunfeng was no different from a demon. The monks couldn't contain their emotions and immediately threw their sticks at Jiang Chunfeng. At the same time, two people came from inside the temple and shouted to the monks who were about to attack Jiang Chun Feng. Suddenly, the monks looked behind them and were shocked to find out that it was two very important people who came. Those two people were Ming Fan, the oldest disciple in Lin Yin Temple, and Master Ku Rong, the abbot of Lin Yin Temple. Master Ku Rong ordered the monks to stop. Instantly, the monks who attacked Jiang Chun Feng earlier fell silent and were shocked. Master Kuro Rong greeted Jiang Chun Feng and asked how he was doing. Jiang Chun Feng, who saw him immediately, bowed his head and greeted the master. Seeing that, the monks were shocked because Jiang Chun Feng had a close relationship with the master. They felt bad about the man they considered to be the bearer of bad luck. Under the hot sun, the monks who wanted to attack Jiang Chun Feng were seen cleaning his car, which looked very dirty. Master and Jiang Chun Feng were sitting under a shady tree beside the temple drinking tea. Jiang Chun Feng sipped his hot tea. Master Ku Rong opened the conversation. He said not to take his disciples' actions to heart. They did that because they felt they were still scared. Jiang Chun Feng understood their actions. He went on to say that the power within his body had been largely suppressed. Master Ku Rong looked at him and said that Jiang Chun Feng looked healthy from cultivating using the method he gave him. Jiang Chun Feng was seen sitting relaxed while saying that he no longer wanted to be suppressed by the power in his body. He found Master Ku Rong's method very difficult. The first cultivation method was extreme exercise. Jiang Chun Feng could do it by carrying heavy objects. He had to do it hard at least five days a week and couldn't stop until his body was bare tired. The second cultivation method was diet control. Jiang Chun Feng could only eat vegetarian food and drink pure water. The third cultivation was spiritual practice. He must circulate QI to all parts of the body 12 times a day and meditate quietly without thinking about anything for at least half an hour. The last method, the fourth cultivation, is abstinence. This is the most important cultivation. This cultivation is extreme abstinence from masturbation. Jiang Chun Feng told the master that someone who had lived alone for a long time would feel very depressed. Looking down, Jiang Chun Feng went on to say that it was hard to hold it in when he had to meet a woman he liked. Like when there was a party, he could only swallow and leave slowly. Master Ku Rong reminded him that he didn't need to hold back, and he could love each other without having to have sex with women. Jiang Chun Feng, who heard that, immediately looked at him and said in a loud tone that it was nonsense. He couldn't accept it. How could he think a beautiful woman was just like rotten meat? Master Ku Rong patiently advised him to follow the Buddhist rules. The first step was to achieve solitude and emptiness and see the invisible. If he could do that today, then he would connect with Buddha. 
Jiang Chendong loudly replied to the master saying that he did not want to become a monk. He thought life was unfair. Master Ku Rong gave him a pep talk and said when heaven entrusts great responsibility to humans, it will make his heart feel doubtful, make his body feel hungry, and his bones feel tired. Before he could stop talking, Jiang Chenfeng stopped him by saying that he didn't want to listen to the script from his school. He wanted to have an ordinary life, just like normal people in general. For a long time, they were silent. Suddenly, Master Ku Rong said that if Jiang Chenfeng did not return to study Buddhism this time, then he offered to help remove the miasma from Jiang Chenfeng. Jiang Chenfeng was silent for a long time thinking about it. Not long after, he said that this was not the case. He continued to ask the master about the house he used to live in if it still existed. The quest window shows an old house on a hill. From the bottom of the hill, Jiang Chenfeng was escorted by one of the monks, a disciple of Master Ku Rong. He eagerly climbed hundreds of steps to get to the top of the hill. He missed his old home very much. The monk told Jiang Chenfeng that they cleaned it every month and told him that many people lived there but immediately wanted to leave because they felt negative energy in the house. The monk thought that the power in Jiang Chenfeng invited many spirits that never disappeared. That was what caused the guests who stayed there to be afraid. Jiang Chenfeng thought it didn't matter. To him, evil spirits were not much different from lizards stuck to the wall. Monk said, he wasn't worried about Jiang Chenfeng's safety, but worried about the people around him, like their master who was severely injured and hasn't fully recovered because of Jiang Chenfeng's actions. He hoped Jiang Chenfeng could restrain his inner strength. Jiang Chenfeng felt offended and stared at the monk. Instantly, the monk could only bow his head and fell silent in fear of Jiang Chenfeng. The house looked very spacious and tidy. Jiang Chenfeng was seen in a room mediating to calm down. He recalled the time four years ago when he was in bed with his body in pain and feeling tormented by the power in his body. He realized in his heart that he should thank Master Ku Rong because he felt much more comfortable by applying the methods the master had given him. Jiang Chenfeng wondered what was wrong with his strength. He assumed this was all because the miasma wanted to do something. Jiang Chenfeng looked desperate. He thought miasma was stupid and wouldn't be able to kill him with his supernatural powers. Jiang Chen Feng began to feel sleepy, and finally fell asleep. In the middle of the night when Jiang Chen Feng was sound asleep, he suddenly felt something strange above him. Instantly, he woke up and slowly looked towards the top of his bed. There was the smell of feet from above him. There was a ghost hanging with its feet right above Jiang Chen Feng. He covered his nose, unable to stand the smell of feet. At the same time, someone suddenly touched his shoulder from behind him. A female ghost, calling Jiang Chen Feng as master. The female ghost told him to turn around to face her and said she would serve Jiang Chen Feng well. Jiang Chen Feng found himself very disturbed and thought this wouldn't scare him in the slightest. Jiang Chen Feng turned around and saw the female ghost. Jiang Chen Feng reflexively punched with his fist towards the female ghost's face because she looked so ugly. After that, Jiang Chen Feng immediately got up and stood on his bed to catch the female ghost's stinky feet. Suddenly, he immediately pulled the female ghost's leg hard and slammed it down on the floor. The sound of Jiang Chen Feng shouting said that they were ghosts of trash ghosts and began to finish off the ghosts one by one. Jiang Chen Feng was seen dragging a chair towards the outside of the house. Then he sat in the center of the courtyard looking up at the moon above him. Sipping his drink, he looked around, realizing that it looked like he would have some guests tonight. Squeezing the bottle, he challenged the ghosts around him to come forward. On the other side of the world, a helicopter can be seen landing on the building. Gudelj, 51 years old. A very important person in the Vatican. He is a master of exorcism. Another person got off the helicopter with a little girl by his side. The little girl was eight-year-old son Lingling. Gudelj greeted them. He was 55-year-old Sun Sadao, one of the six permanent directors of the Exorcist Society. Gudelj welcomed him to the Vatican and said it had been a while. Suddenly, the little girl asked her grandfather who the old man in front of her was. Her grandfather introduced her to Gudelj. They entered a building. 
Sansun Sadao said he and his granddaughter would stay there for a while. He planned to take Ling Ling to see Michelangelo's paintings. Gudelj said that the director would send someone to accompany them around Rome. Suddenly their conversation became serious. Sun Sadao asked why Hedna had called them here in such a hurry. Gudelj replied that Sister Hedna was a devout cleric, devoted to the Vatican's exorcist group. So Gudelj commemorated the Sun Sadao in honor of Sister Hedna. While walking through the building, they met someone they hadn't seen in a long time. He was Tsuchimikado Kamiarashi, 40 years old, the chief yin master of the Faking sect. He came with his son, Hiroki. Tsuchimikado Hiroki is 15 years old, who is a senior exorcist. Sun Lingling, the little girl of Sun Sidao's granddaughter, is very fond of the handsome boy beside Tsuchimikado. She says Hiroki is a wonderful young man. Her grandfather immediately made his granddaughter realize that she had to control herself so as not to embarrass his pride. They chatted like old friends who had just met. Suddenly, Sun Sadao comes up to Hiroki holding his shoulder. He says that he has seen the footage of Hiroki successfully handling an exorcism. He hears that Hiroki has just been promoted to senior exorcist, and Sun Sadao praised him that it was the power that came down from his father. After that, Sun Sadao boasted by saying that his son, Yu Qian, would also become a senior exorcist at the age of 15. Suddenly, in the middle of the conversation, Hiroki mentioned the name of someone who became a grand master last year. His name is Sheng Qing Qi. Sun Sadao looked uncomfortable hearing his name. He looked very angry when he heard his name. Hiroki was immediately surprised and stopped talking. His dad, Tsuchimikado Kamiarashi apologized because his son made Sun Sadao look angry. Not satisfied with his answer, Hiroki wanted to continue his question. But before he could ask, Ling Ling hugged Hiroki's leg and invited him to play. Instantly, her grandfather San Sadao became ashamed of his granddaughter's treatment. They came to a church. When they opened the door, they saw someone in the church. It turned out to be 54 year old Jean the principal of the Supernatural Science School. Jean's principal had already arrived on the spot. Gudelj was confused as to why she had arrived at this place. The principal took off her glasses and looked at those at the door. She greeted Mr. Sun and Mr. Tsuchimikado. Sun Sadao praised the principal for remaining the same as the last time they met. Sun Sadao went straight to discussing the journal published by Principal Jean. He disagreed with the journal. Tsuchimikado, who was beside him, immediately warned Mr. Sun Sadao to maintain his attitude. He said that exorcism societies only focus on demon movements, not religious disputes. After that, Mr. Tsuchimikado told them to start the meeting because the members were complete. Gudelj was surprised because he hadn't seen the other members who came for the meeting. He asked where Miss Ho was. Then Principal Jean took something out of her bag. It was an energy detector. It counted the total amount of energy in the room. It was 1054. Mr. San had 324 points. Mr. Tsuchimikado had 277 points. Gudelj had 186 points. And Principal Jean had 18 points. That left 249 points unaccounted for. That meant there was someone else among them. Gudelj was confused and immediately looked around and asked who Miss Ho was. To solve this mystery, Mr. Sun took an amulet from his pocket and threw it to the side. The amulet thrown by Mr. Sun was immediately burned out. Unexpectedly, an old female ghost with long horns appeared beside them. The old female ghost cursed Mr. Sun. She didn't want to be seen because she had a very ugly face. She was very upset that they told her to perform. How inconsiderate. The female ghost was the unknown aged Ho Lian Xiang the head of the Gu Cha sect. Mr. Sun stared at the old lady ghost and said the old ghost was disgusting and really creepy. Mr. Tsuchimikado was confused as to why Mr. Sun hated everyone. The sound of them arguing could be heard outside the room. Outside the meeting room, precisely in the front corridor, Ling Ling and Hiroki were sitting together. Ling Ling approached Hiroki's face, which made him reflexively move away. With a serious look on her face, Ling Ling asked about Ching Chi. Hiroki was shocked and looked away. After a while, he said that he actually didn't know Ching Chi. He was just curious about him and admired him greatly. 
He got his master's degree at the age of 16. It was unbelievable. He asked Ling Ling if she knew Ching Chi and what he was like. Ling Ling, who was very young at the time, didn't remember Ching Chi clearly. But there was one incident that she remembered when she was scolded by her father. Ching Chi came to her and entertained her with a magic show to make Ling Ling happy. Ling Ling remembers Ching Chi as a warm figure who was different from the one described by her grandfather. Hiroki listened to the story seriously. When Ching Chi left, her grandfather was always in a bad mood. Sometimes her grandfather would stand by the window lamenting and saying it was a pity. In the eyes of her grandfather and even her father, Ching Chi was a bad person. Then Ling Ling said that Ching Chi was a very handsome figure to her. While holding her cheeks that turned red, remembering Ching Chi's figure, you could see Hiroki's face who was amused by the little girl's attitude. Moments later, three young women passed through the corridor, leaving Ling Ling and Horiko in awe of their beauty. They both guessed that it was Sister Hedna, who was Mr. Sun's dream love. Horiko didn't think that she was Mr. Sun's dream love, because she thought Mr. Sun was fit to be her father. But unfortunately, Sister Hedna only loved her God. Sister Hedna opened the door to the meeting room. Then all those in the meeting room immediately looked at Sister Hedna and greeted her. Sister Hedna was the head of the exorcism group at the Vatican. She was 30 years old. The five main directors were all present. This was the first meeting since Sister Hedna became president of the association. The host of this meeting explained all the rules that took place during the meeting. First, she talked about the purple event, the island that could not return. He said that 12 exorcist associates were lost on this island. Three of them were senior exorcists and one was a grand master. It was actually an island that was forbidden for all sects to enter. But recently, a wealthy billionaire, Mr. Huang Xianlin, got a huge gift. He and his wife went there for a honeymoon. Since leaving the island, they have never been seen again. He hopes this exorcism group can solve the problem and find them. Mr. Huang Xianlin has closed relations with Country M. He explained that they are under tremendous political pressure. Sister Hedna also hoped for them to participate in the resolution of this problem, since these were Mr. Huang Xianlin's children. Sister Hedna then spoke reminding the purpose of this exorcism association. The meeting members listened. Then the old lady ghost thought Sister Hedna was just acting. She hated it when she tricked people to get their attention with her sweet mouth. The old ghost asked if the king of their sect was missing, would she protect him too? Mr. Sun suddenly looked at the old lady ghost who had been grumbling. Mr. Sun shouted at her to respect and be polite to the Sister Hedna. The old lady ghost replied with harsh words. Mr. Sun tried to think for a moment. Persuading people in a subtle way was not going well. He couldn't reject Sister Hedna's opinion, but he also didn't want to send troops and take risks. Mr. Sun thought hard. Suddenly, Mr. Sun broke the silence. He said he would send a high-level Taoist priest there. Sister Hedna looked at Mr. Sun. Mr. Sun said that he would take the lead. Instantly, everyone fell silent. They seemed to disagree with Mr. Sun. Seeing that, Mr. Sun got angry and said that they didn't deserve to be permanent directors. He asked everyone if they had forgotten the oath they took when they entered the exorcism club. The old lady ghost from behind mocked Mr. Sun, who she thought was talking nonsense. Hearing this, Mr. Sun immediately shouted at the ghost to repeat his words. The two of them argued with each other, neither of them wanting to give in. Mr. Kamiarashi, who had been silent, suddenly said that the Fokking sect would also send a high-level exorcist. Mr. Sun, who usually looked annoying, was moved. Principal Jean also agreed with Mr. Sun's proposal, considering that ten of the sixteen exorcists did not return from the island. So he also participated in sending a professor with a high level. Everyone looked back, staring at the ghostly old woman who had a different opinion of his own. He felt alienated. Inevitably, the old lady ghost would also send a very strong woman. Sister Hedna thanked Mr. Sun for helping her. Mr. Sun winked at Sister Hedna with satisfaction. Ten minutes later, Mr. Sun looked shocked and tried to repeat what Sister Hedna had said. Mr. Sun couldn't believe that Sister Hedna would go to the dark gold challenge to complete the mission alone. 
The sister beside the Hedna sister explained that ten years ago, Master Kid of the esoteric sect of Buddhism forced the game to the end after surviving the ten-day catastrophe. But he refused to reveal what happened on those ten days. No one knew what happened and where he was. So to protect everyone, Head Sister Hedna declared that she would go alone. Mr. Sun, who was worried about Sister Hedna, refused firmly. He knew how strong the energy was in this game. He disagreed with her decision to go alone. Sister Hedna replied gently and said there was no other way. She had to do it alone. If she remained silent, then God would punish her. Sister Hedna realized that this was a very dangerous challenge. If anything happened to her, she asked all the members to be her substitute to find out what the secret was behind this game. Save the world and kill the demon. When the exorcists were discussing the ten days of doom, no one would have thought that there was a small, run-down house in Hubei province. There was a young man ready to embark on the ten days of doom challenge. There was a small note with nine days that had passed. There was only one last day left. On a beautiful day, the sound of birds chirping could be heard outside. Jiang Chunfeng woke up from his sleep holding a stomach that made a hungry sound. He called out to Red Blue, the two demons who served him. Immediately, the Red Devil took two eggs and corn. Zhang Chen Feng asked if there was nothing else besides that. The Red Devil said, she had been an evil devil for too long, so she had forgotten how to cook. Then Zhang told the Blue Devil hanging above to take his jacket. The two demons really served Zhang. Zhang told the two demons that this was their last day serving him. If they promise not to hang around and scare people around here, then they will be released by Zhang immediately. With heavy tones and heads bowed, the demons defended themselves that they lived on negative energy and angry energy in humans. If the demons didn't get that, they would lose energy and disappear slowly. Zhang Chunfeng could understand that and gave the idea to disturb the evil humans. Zhang released the two demons. Instantly, the demons disappeared in front of Jiang. In the middle of a tall skyscraper, there was a woman who was staring at her cell phone screen to find out the whereabouts of Jiang Chengfeng. He took her car to such a remote place. She wouldn't let him go. When she was busy looking at her cell phone layer, suddenly someone called her from a distance. Xu Miao went to the person. She thanked him for removing the poison the last time they met. She thought that the man wanted to ask for payment, but that wasn't what he was here for. He explained that Zhang Chengfeng had entered the last day of the Ten Days of Doom challenge, and he wanted to be shown where he was. So, Xu Miao wanted to know why he wanted to meet with Zhang Chengfeng. The man was a grand master. He explained that if Zhang Chengfeng was on the tenth day, then he was in danger. The man looked at Xu Miao with his red eyes, and assured Xu Miao that only he could save Jiang Chengfeng. Xu Miao was silent for a while and then agreed and warned the man not to play games. At the edge of an extremely deep ravine that looked like the Valley of Death, there was Jiang Chengfeng sitting on the edge. He was sitting cross-legged in a mediation position. Instantly, he felt a tremendous pain in his chest. He felt like he couldn't completely empty his mind for meditation this time. He also felt that something was burning inside him. He wondered what was happening to him. Was it because of the poison? Given that this was the last day of the ten days of doom, that would be very risky. He suddenly felt someone calling his name from behind. Jiang Chenfeng reflexively faced back. He saw a woman with her hair in a single ponytail behind him. He couldn't believe who he was seeing. The woman he saw was his mother. He instantly remembered his mother's shadow and unconsciously sprinted towards the direction of his mother's shadow. Suddenly, a voice of unknown origin stopped Jiang Chunfeng in his tracks. That voice saved Jiang Chunfeng from the danger of being trapped. That voice seemed to haunt the contents of his head. He was very confused as to what was happening to him. The voice came back saying that the 10 day game system had figured out Jiang Chunfeng's weak points. When Jiang felt emotional, the evil wind blew all the poison into his body. Jiang was curious who the person behind the voice was and asked why his mother was here. The voice explained that in addition to neural activity, the function of the human brain also showed its uncertainty principle. Therefore, no matter how strong the spirit soul is, 
it will not be able to read human thoughts. The illusory images produced in supernatural events are spontaneously generated by humans. In other words, if John scanned his mother and suddenly appeared in front of him, then there was only one explanation for it. The image had been designed by the game. Zhang Chun Feng was angry and clenched his fists. He still didn't understand what this game had to do with his mother. The voice explained again. If he followed his mother's illusory image and fell into the abyss, then the game would generate a strong connection and confirm his identity. The purpose of this game is not to hurt people, but to find you. This game wants to destroy him. That was the ultimate goal of this game. Jiang Chen Feng couldn't accept the explanation and asked why the sound would want to save him. Of course it was to save him because the voice was coming from within him, and he had to adapt. The voice knew that Jiang Chen Feng had gone through a rough time in the past five years. Jiang Chen Feng was confused and asked what the voice meant. Instantly, the voice disappeared and didn't come back. Jiang Chen Feng stared blankly at the walls of his house. He ignored the notifications on his phone screen. All he could think about was the woman in his mind and her voice. It was the most beautiful voice he had ever heard. It didn't sound like a human voice. Jiang Chen Feng was suddenly awakened by the notification sound from his cell phone screen that repeatedly appeared. But the notification sound turned into someone's voice, saying that the 10 day limit had been reached. Jiang Chen Feng immediately got up from his bed and went straight outside to find out where the voice came from. He thought that the demon had reappeared and disturbed him who wanted to sleep. Suddenly, a very bright lightning appeared from the sky. He thought that the weather was changing. The lightning instantly struck the ground near where Zhang Chun Feng was standing. The sound was so loud that it shattered the ground. Then a creepy man with flaming eyes appeared, riding a giant monster on top of Zhang Chun Feng's house. He said, Ten years have passed. He didn't expect anyone else to be able to summon him. And it turned out to be Zhang Chun Feng, who he thought was just a snot nosed kid. Zhang said in his heart that he was a demon. Suddenly, a woman who flew from the sky appeared along with monsters that looked like aliens. They told him that they were not his enemies. They are the administrators of the game. Now Jiang Chen Feng has successfully passed the game. Jiang Chen Feng could choose from the three rewards he got. The first reward was to make a self-made wish or make a wish that the game could accept. The second reward dismissed the game for a few years. But the player must exchange one of his ideas. The third reward is to open a new world reincarnate as demon power and become the administrator of the game. Zhang Chen Feng looked confused by their arrival. One of the three demons told him to quickly choose a gift. The fearless Zhang Chen Feng told the monster to get off his roof. The spider demon was furious to hear Zhang Chen Feng call him a stupid spider. Hearing that, the woman in red laughed, not expecting Zhang Chen Feng to dare to do that. The spider monster threatened that if he couldn't finish the game quickly, then it would tear his mouth out. Zhang Chun Feng ignored the spider monster again. He looked at the alien-like monster and called it Long Nose. He asked what this choice of reward meant. The alien monster replied that this reward had indeed been prepared if the participant had completed the game. Chun Feng was among the lucky ones to choose one of the three prizes. The monster explained again that whatever Chen Feng would choose later, they would be ready to fulfill it. Chen Feng saw nothing interesting in the three gifts. He told the monsters to recommend the best prize. Then the monsters told him that since the game started decades ago, there were only six lucky people who managed to complete the game to the end. One of them chose the first prize and became the richest man in the world but he thinks it's a shameful prize and he doesn't recommend it. In order to make peace for the world, one of them chose the prize of forcibly quitting, but it didn't last long as the game restarted. Chen Feng realized that the three monsters had chosen the third reward. Sure enough, after they finished this game, they made the right choice. The vampire-like woman introduced herself. She was a red moth who reincarnated 22 years ago, then the next one was the Fulminous Spider-Man who reincarnated 31 years ago. The last one is the alien-like long nose. He is the transcended raven. 
He was the first participant in this game 55 years ago and was created directly by the creator of this game. He was the first administrator of this game. John Chunfeng observed them all. He judged that the transcended raven was the strongest among the other two monsters. Chunfeng asked them a question, asking why he chose to be a demon instead of a human. The spider monster laughed at Chen Feng's question as if mocking him. He said that humans were weaklings who lived on oxygen. The human body at a very low level was only three-dimensional. Unlike the demons who used various elements as the basis of organic life, they had strong bodies with high levels. They convinced Chen Feng that one day if he reincarnated into a demon, he would definitely like it and no longer want to be a human. The three monsters seemed to be wooing Chen Feng to become one of them. So the monsters said that demons were physically and mentally stronger than humans. But Chen Feng thought otherwise, he felt greater than the three monsters. Suddenly they fell silent seeing Chen Feng say that and started laughing at him. They thought about helping Chen Feng to tell the truth. Suddenly, the surroundings became instantly silent. At midnight, a monk escorted Xu Miao and a man up the hill where Chen Feng lived. The woman felt strange about the atmosphere in Chen Feng's neighborhood. Xu Miao told the monk to go back and rest. She immediately picked up her detection device to search for Chen Feng's whereabouts. She looked at her detector, which showed that there was a very high reaction in front of them. She seemed to feel a magical barrier. Then Xu Miao looked at the man and thought of something to find a way to locate the barrier. She looked down and found a rock. Xu Miao immediately picked it up and threw the rock towards Chen Feng's yard. Suddenly, a bright blue light appeared in front of them, and there was a loud bang. They looked so shocked to find out that what was in front of them was a powerful magical barrier. They couldn't see anything from out there. But if they went forward and tried to touch it, they would be reduced to ashes instantly. They couldn't imagine what was inside because of the magic of this barrier. On the other side of the magic barrier were Chen Feng and the three monsters who were still discussing the game's rewards. Chen Feng said that he didn't feel interested in the three rewards. So he suggested to the game administrator that he get a reward of his own making. Chen Feng asked him if he wanted to end the game without having to lose his five senses. He considered that as a participant who managed to win, he deserved to get what he wanted. Chen Feng confidently said he would kill the game administrator and eliminate the game. Red Month and the Spider Monster were shocked and angered by Chen Feng's boldness. Then, Transcended Raven said that ten years ago, in the eyes of Archmage Kid, they had thought the same thing as Chen Feng, who ultimately chose the second prize. Unexpectedly, it turned out that the person she told was Fulminous Spider. Fulminous Spider seemed to be very angry with Chen Feng. He wanted to teach him a lesson. The spider monster immediately pulled out a move like pulling out a lightning bolt from his hand. He whimpered and said he would turn me into ashes. I instantly fell silent. The spider launched its attack and accidentally hit the red month above it. Without thinking, Chen Feng instantly activated his power mode. He had no other choice and had to fight them. The monsters were shocked to see Chen Feng's transformation. The spider monster that was ready to attack him directly aimed its lightning attack at Chen Feng, but he managed to dodge it. Chen Feng was seen running away from the Spider-Man, but very quickly he pulled Chen Feng's leg and slammed it into the ground. This time Chen Feng couldn't dodge. There was such a loud impact that the roof of Chen Feng's house fell apart. The spider monster said that he would not spare Chen Feng and assured that Chen Feng could not escape this time. Red Month, who saw the fight from a distance, could only pity Chen Feng and thought that he just should choose one of the game prizes. The spider monster was overjoyed because he thought he had defeated Chen Feng. He thought that the boy's bones were broken and would just give up. But Chen Feng wasn't going to give up so easily. He got up and picked up a huge tree trunk, ready to throw it at the spider monster. It hit the spider monster right in the face. Chen Feng's attacks were relentless against the monster. The spider monster couldn't seem to avoid it. He was very helpless now. Chen Feng wanted to show them that humans were not as weak as they thought. Red Month and Transcended Raven, who had been watching the fight, were shocked at Chen Feng's immense strength. She did not expect that behind the small body of a human being had such great strength. Then Chen Feng opposed the other monsters. 
Confidently, Chun Feng returned to challenge the remaining monsters, but he realized that the transcended had disappeared from his sight. Suddenly, the long nose appeared before Chun Feng. Then he began to cast an evil spell. He made the bones from Chun Feng's body come out of his body. Chun Feng suddenly felt something painful from inside his body. He screamed in pain. His eyeballs flashed and his body slowly sprouted sharp horns. Very creepy. It was the transcended's evil plan to turn Chen Feng into a demon. Red Month, who was observing them from above, seemed to support what Raven was doing. She felt upset at him for hurting her friend, Fulminoya Spider. Chen Feng, who had been limping helplessly, began to speak to the transcended. He repeated once again his words that he would kill all demons like them. Chun Feng's strength seemed to be recovering. He got up and destroyed the magic of the transcended that had made the bones come out. Transcended seemed surprised by Chun Feng's change. He thought that his magic didn't work on the boy and that his skin wasn't even slightly injured. Chun Feng stared at the transcended and called himself Long Life, which angered him. Chun Feng began to gather his strength. With a move that Chun Feng possessed, he made a fireball from his foot and threw it very strongly. There was a very loud boom from the ground. It turned out that the target was Red Month, who had been watching from above. She looked shocked at the attack. The attack had the same speed as a bullet. That seemed impossible. With one strike, she managed to hit the target. Transcended gave a warning to Red Month that behind the woman was an attack from Chen Feng. The woman immediately looked behind her, and sure enough, there was Chen Feng attacking with his superpowers. Red Month was bounced very hard to the roof of Chen Feng's house, but Red Month immediately activated the magic barrier to protect herself. A bit amazing. Transcended, reused his evil spell. Now, he recites the manta to summon the bones of dead humans to attack Chen Feng. Suddenly, the ground around him shakes and brings out bones that form hands. The bones attacked Chun Feng's vital organs. He was in pain and immediately fell down. Red Moth and Transcended began to work together to attack Chen Feng. With Red Moth's magic, she created a magical barrier to confine Chun Feng. Chen Feng was immediately shocked and confused by the situation. Red Moth had finally managed to lock him up. No one would be able to get out of the magical barrier's confinement, she thought. She told Chen Feng to ask for his forgiveness immediately and would give him a peaceful death. But Chen Feng was not a young man who gave up easily. He defied the red monster and said if she could kill him, Red Month unleashed her moves that made the air extreme inside the magic barrier. The first attack was a burning inferno that made Chen Feng's whole body feel burnt. Then it turned into freezing air and finally turned into an earthquake disaster that made Chen Feng look nauseous inside the magic barrier. It was the retribution of Chen Feng having smashed Red Moth's face. Suddenly, the transcended came to Red Moth saying to stop wasting power because the dimension of the human body was far different from those of the demons. So any physical attack on Chen Feng would not work on him. Red Moth asked what they should do about the powerful Chen Feng. She couldn't allow a human like Chen Feng to demean the demon race. Then transcended had an idea. Since humans were vulnerable creatures, no matter how strong they were if not given oxygen, they would feel suffocated to death. That was the idea they had in mind, which was to make Chun Feng run out of oxygen and slowly die. Chun Feng, who realized their idea, immediately thought of how he could get out of the trap. He had to break the magic trap somehow, or else he would die in it due to lack of oxygen. At the same time, Chun Feng looked like he was taking a step towards destroying the magical barrier. They thought Chun Feng couldn't hear from inside the trap, but they were wrong. Chun Feng looked like he was getting ready to smash the magic barrier with his fists. Red Moth was shocked to see it. That magic trap move was one of the best moves among the demons. He didn't think that Chun Feng could destroy the trap. Suddenly, a huge explosion was made by Chun Feng for successfully destroying the trap. Red Moth was shocked to observe how a human with such a weak body could destroy his best magic device. Chen Feng managed to break out of the magic trap set by the Red Moth. He was easily able to destroy it and make it into pieces. He destroyed both traps at the same time. That was very unlikely, thought Red Moth. How could he escape from her trap? Then Red Moth came down to Chen Feng. 
Chen Feng looked smirking and underestimated the power of Red Moth. Red Moth looked angrily at Chen Feng because she saw Chen Feng underestimating her. Suddenly, two shadowy figures emerged from behind the thick smoke. Chen Feng, who saw that, thought that it was the monk that the temple had sent to help him. But it turned out that it was not monks, but Shir Miao, and a man who had been waiting outside the magic barrier that Chen Feng had destroyed. Shir Miao and the man seemed surprised to see Chen Feng single-handedly fighting the three demons before him. And what was most surprising was that they were the three refined spirits. Shi Miao's detectors showed that the energy level around her continued to grow. It was impossible for the detector to break down instantly. The detector seemed to detect twelve demon energies simultaneously. That meant that the three demons were not ordinary demons. Shi Miao was startled and immediately looked at Chen Feng, thinking there was no way that she would be able to deal with them simultaneously. The long, white-haired man immediately took something out of his shirt pocket. It looked like a vampire warding talisman. The man threw the talisman directly at the red moth and hit its forehead. That could stop the movement of the vampire. But unexpectedly, the amulet didn't work for red moth. She immediately smashed the amulet into pieces. She looked furious that the man had interfered and disturbed her. The man was sure that the talisman was very effective before. But this time he felt differently, as even before casting the spell, the red moth could easily destroy the talisman. Suddenly, Shir Miao fell over as she saw the demon's power directly in front of her. Chen Feng immediately thought what she could do going forward. Shir Miao's heart was racing. With her vision goggles, she could tell that the one before her was a demon with an extremely high level of strength. Surely no one would be able to fight the red moth, she thought. Sheng Ching Chi, who was an excursist level grand master, had come into contact with many demons before. Even he had trouble fighting the demon. But the great Jiang Chen Feng still dared to challenge to fight the demon. Dark clouds were seen enveloping the moon, and it felt like raindrops were hitting Shi Miao's head. Lightning bolts were seen striking several times. Chen Feng suddenly moved and pushed Sheng Ching Chi to help him avoid the lightning strike. She fell to the ground. It turned out to be an attack made by a spider monster. Unexpectedly, the spider monster recovered and could attack with super strength. They were all surprised by the resurrection of the spider monster. The monster was invincible. It had extremely high strength that no one could possibly possess. Sheng Ching Chi was also surprised at the strength of the spider monster. He thought that no one would dare to fight it. Then suddenly Chen Feng approached the monster and challenged it, saying that it was still an ugly spider monster. The spider monster said that this was Chen Feng's last chance to live. Chen Feng looked at Shi Miao and Sheng Ching Chi. He felt at a loss as to what to do. If Chen Feng displayed his abilities before them, it would be a big problem. Then he thought that, in order to protect Shi Miao and Sheng Ching Chi from being taken hostage by the monsters, Chen Feng should pretend not to know them. That was the only way that could help them. The spider monster wrapped its rope around Chen Feng's leg. It was going to take Chen Feng away to her original realm. The monster has about 1,500 times the power of a horse and has a speed of 300 kph, which if Chen Feng is taken flying with that power, it will make Chen Feng really die. Seeing this, Chen Feng immediately looked for a way to get out of the problem. He stomped his feet on the ground, which instantly made the surroundings crumble. With that power, the spider monster fell heavily to the ground. Under the rain, Chen Feng seemed to be in control of the attack. He could easily take down the spider monster. Chen Feng immediately looked at Shi Miao and Sheng Qing Chi hoping that they would not see the power that Chen Feng possessed. Chen Feng thought that maybe Shi Miao would not believe what she saw. That was a bad sign. Chen Feng thought that he should finish this fight elsewhere. Chen Feng immediately distracted the monsters so that they could fight somewhere else and could not be seen by Shi Miao and Sheng Qing Chi. The three monsters followed Chen Feng's movements but Transcended gave the order to Red Moth to stay in that place alone to keep an eye on Shi Miao and Sheng Ching Chi, because they could not just let the people who knew their identities of the monsters go. Red Moth went to Shi Miao and Sheng Ching Chi and said that he only wanted to kill Chen Feng. 
But because they helped to destroy her magic trap, it made Red Moth a little interested in the two of them, especially seeing the handsome face of Sheng Ching Chi. Shi Miao felt neglected. Red Moth seemed to be in love with Sheng Ching Chi. Red Moth also asked Sheng Ching Chi if he was also interested in her. But what was in Sheng Ching Chi's head was only how to defeat the Red Moth. Sheng Ching Chi immediately took out his weapon and prepared to attack the Red Moth. Red Moth unleashed its moves to attack Sheng Ching Chi. Red Moth is very quick to give Sheng Ching Chi multiple attacks. But Sheng Ching Chi can easily figure out the attack pattern given by Red Moth. Then he will easily deal with the female monster. Sheng Ching Chi was seen taking a talisman in his pants pocket while avoiding the attacks from the Red Moth. He seemed to write something on the talisman. After that, he took a step to throw the talisman to hit the right target. Sheng Ching Chi continued to recite the spell to make the talisman stronger. Finally, the talisman succeeded in freezing the power of the Red Moth. Then Sheng Ching Chi walked over to her and said that the first attack failed not because the talisman was weak, but because he had not finished reciting the spell that was destroyed by the Red Moth. Red Moth wondered why the man could use telekinesis so well when he looked so weak. Then the Sheng Ching Chi replied that he could manipulate his talisman for certain moments. Although it wasn't an extraordinary Taoist trick, not everyone on Petch Blossom Mountain could do it. But for Sheng Ching Chi, he had been very adept at using tricks since he was 13 years old. Red Moth looked so wary that she asked Sheng Ching Chi to stop the dangerous move. She looked very weak in front of Sheng Ching Chi. The frightened Red Moth asked Sheng Ching Chi to stop the action and offered that she would give the man anything he wanted. But Sheng Ching Chi ignored her and threw the gun straight at Red Moth and stabbed her in the head. Sheng Ching Chi felt his business was done with the demon. Then he noticed Shi Miao, who was not in place anymore. It seemed like she disappeared when Sheng Ching Chi started the fight against Red Moth. But Sheng Ching Chi could sense Shi Miao around him. Without Sheng Ching Chi realizing it, the Red Moth that she thought was dead suddenly got back up. She attacked Sheng Ching Chi by pulling out her trap move. Red Moth was annoyed because Sheng Ching Chi stabbed her head and did not give her a chance to fight back. Unexpectedly, Red Moth is still alive even though its head has been stabbed by Sheng Ching Chi's sword. The Red Moth's voice also turned out to be very scary. It was like being reborn with a powerful force. Sheng Ching Chi looked panicked by the changes in the Red Moth. He wondered if there was something wrong with the spell. Normally, if a normal demon is attacked by his power, the toxins in its body will reject the toxins given by his ginseng power and cause an internal rejection reaction. Then their dimensional structure would disintegrate and cause them to die. But it seems that the Red Moth demon is very powerful. Now, Sheng Ching Chi was caught in the Red Moth's trap. He didn't expect that he would fail and fall into the Red Moth's trap. At the same time, in the forest, Chen Feng was seen fighting off the spider monster and transcended. It looked like Chen Feng was having a hard time dodging the attacks coming out of the spider monster's mouth. Then Chen Feng realized that there was no red moth coming in the forest. He thought that Shi Miao was in danger, so he had to get this over with right away. Chen Feng began to take action to attack the monsters. He planted his foot on one of the trees and flew with extremely fast force toward the spider monsters. Chen Feng unleashed a volley of shots that could easily knock his enemy down. But again, the spider monster got up and warned Chen Feng that he was an invincible god of lightning. It didn't make sense that he had already risen from the dead five times. Suddenly, Chen Feng was attacked again. This time the attack from the transcended. Chen Feng almost forgot about his existence. His attack held Chen Feng's body so that he could not move and avoid the attack coming from the Spider-Man. The spider monster attacked me with its lightning power. The sting from that power was overwhelming and left Chen Feng's body injured. Chen Feng felt his body getting weaker and weaker due to the relentless attacks coming from the spider monsters. He didn't know how long his superhuman mode would last, so he had to finish this fight soon. The spider monster didn't expect that Chen Feng could still survive. He was eagerly waiting for Chen Feng's death because he was curious about what his body was made of. Chen Feng said that he was ready to destroy the spider monster. The monster challenged him to a duel and wanted to see who would defeat him. 
The spider monster was seen emitting a lightning light on its abdomen, which made Chen Feng very surprised. Suddenly, an unknown voice from where it came from said the light in the monster's belly was the core power of the spider monster. The voice told him to trick the spider monster and would say something to Chen Feng. Without thinking, Chen Feng ran to attract the attention of the spider monster. The spider monster thought that Chen Feng was running because he was afraid of him. He followed the direction of Chen Feng's running. The voice explained that the dimension of Chen Feng's body was different from that of a normal human. That's why he can defeat various enemies with his brute force. But that brute force would not be enough to defeat an enemy stronger than Chen Feng. But with years of training, Chen Feng's body functions gradually stabilized. The voice convinced Chen Feng that this was the time to show his strength. This was the time to be able to learn battle skills. This method could eliminate all the demons in the world. More than that, this was the only way to fight the king of demons. The voice called him the Demon Slayer. Chen Feng began to organize a strategy to fight the demons. He targeted the transcended first, but at the same time, a hand-shaped bone appeared that held his legs from moving. Suddenly, from the opposite direction, came an attack from a spider monster that made a hold on Chen Feng's body. He seemed to launch many attacks at Chen Feng, but it was not enough to defeat him. Then the spider monster issued a killing strike, which is a technique of gathering the electrical energy in itself to release all that energy against its enemy. But with his body still trapped in the spider's web, Chen Feng couldn't summon his power. She looked resigned. Chen Feng asked the voice for advice on what to do to stop the spider monster's attack. Then the voice instructed Chen Feng to collect the gold bracelet on his right hand. The gold bracelet was Chen Feng's energy channel all this time. If the power of the dimensional energy reached a certain level, the energy channel on the surface of the skin would spread evenly from the heart to all parts of Chen Feng's body, which would eventually strengthen his body. That's how Chen Feng can fight against the power of demons. But on the other hand, that method was very difficult, and it could make Chen Feng's attacks unable to be released to their full potential. The voice directed Chen Feng to find a solution. The voice told Chen Feng the basic demon slayer technique. After years of meditation, Chen Feng had learned how to transmit energy in his body. The voice told Chen Feng to follow his heart and try to gather a large amount of energy from Chen Feng's right hand. Chen Feng began to clench his hand to gather power. If the level of power continues to grow, it can form into a higher dimension. Then it will be very easy to destroy this demon. That's amazing! Chen Feng exclaimed. After the spider monster had gathered all its strength, the electricity in its hands disappeared. Then the voice gave Chen Feng directions to use his right hand to face the spider monster. Chen Feng began to try the voice's directions, hoping that the attack would go smoothly. The spider monster unleashed its massive electric lightning move. But thanks to the voice's directions, Chen Feng was able to dodge the spider monster's attack and split the monster's attack in half. The monsters were bewildered to see me dodge the deadly move. Chen Feng quickly ran to attack the monster. The voice came back to tell Chen Feng how to increase his inner strength, that is by clenching his hands to accumulate energy, then send out all the energy he had and hit the monster with force. Chen Feng targeted his punch at the light in the monster's abdomen, and instantly the spider monster fell helpless. With just one strike, Chen Feng defeated the spider monster. The power he unleashed was so amazing that the demons could not move. That left transcended, who had been watching from above. He was very surprised to see that Chen Feng's strength could defeat the spider monster. He wondered if something was wrong. The spider monster warned Chen Feng that as long as there was a thunderstorm, she would stay alive. But her energy couldn't recover and dwindled very quickly. Then he said that he would return to take his revenge. Soon he united with the rumble of thunder and slowly disappeared. Transcended who saw that was confused as to why Chen Feng's attacks were so amazing. He realized that Chen Feng had figured out where their energy weak points were. He also realized that Chen Feng's punches were much more deadly than before. Chen Feng's demon collection was growing. Transcended began to attack Chen Feng. He chanted a spell to awaken the demon's power and followed his request. 
The bones that formed the demon's hand attacked Chen Feng, but with his power, he could easily destroy it. Chen Feng lifted a tree and threw it at Transcended. The Transcended dodged his attack easily. Then the monster said that Chen Feng was stupid, thinking whether such an attack would defeat him. But unexpectedly, with Chen Feng's speed, he was suddenly on top of the monster. But before Chen Feng could attack it, the Transcended released a bone wing move that made Chen Feng suddenly have wings and took him flying away from the Transcended. Chen Feng didn't think he had such a trick up his sleeve. He thought it was a cunning trick. Transcended was almost hit by Chen Feng's attack. He felt overwhelmed facing Chen Feng alone head on. He thought that it would be very dangerous for him. After this, perhaps Transcended would have to stop playing this game for a few years, and perhaps he would also be punished. Then Transcended simply ran away, leaving Chen Feng behind. Transcended thought that the only good way was to run away, rather than ending up like the fulminous spider. Then the voice told Chen Feng that it wasn't too late if he wanted to catch Transcended. Chen Feng looked at the mountains from afar as he realized that he had flown so far away and he thought about how his friend on the mountain was doing. He decided to go back to catch up with his friends. When Chen Feng wanted to go catch up with his friends, he saw something glowing in the trees in the forest. Out of curiosity, Chen Feng approached the light slowly. At the same time, Red Moth put Sheng Qing Qi in its trap. Red Moth is seen giving Sheng Qing Qi a burning hell move, but it doesn't seem to work on the man. Sheng Qing Qi looks calm to avoid the attack of the Red Moth by keeping his mind from being distracted by other thoughts, keeping his heart and mind clean and calm. Sheng Qing Qi also looked very focused while reciting the mantras on his talisman. Sheng Qing Qi was, in fact, using a calming spell. He made five talismans that were attached to important body parts while keeping his mind blank. It was a way to control his enemy's attacks. Red Moth, who saw Sheng Qing Qi, assumed that he was a knowledgeable person. He can control the Red Moth's attack well and make the temperature in the trap just an illusion to him. He can empty his mind and get results. But Red Moth, who saw Sheng Qing Qi using all her strength to resist his attacks, thought that Sheng Qing Qi was like a baby that wouldn't last long. Red Moth thought that she should tear off one of the talismans on Qing Qi's body so that he would definitely not be able to survive. Then, the game would definitely be over. Then Red Moth approached Sheng Qing Qi and tried to grab the talisman to damage it. But suddenly, Sheng Qing Qi was awakened by Xu Miao's voice calling his name. She approached slowly and said that she had eliminated Red Moth. Xu Miao explained to Qing Qi that when Sheng Qing Qi was fighting, she set up magnetic field interference units in the four corners of space. The radio waves could stop the miasma for some time. She told Sheng Qing Qi to rush out of the trap as soon as possible, but Sheng Qing Qi realized that his magic weapon wasn't with him, so he thought he couldn't get out of the trap. He almost lost his life. Sheng Qing Qi was almost deceived by the trickery of the red moth that transformed itself into a Shu Miao figure to take the talisman. Sheng Qing Qi thought red moth was quite smart for almost tricking him. Sheng Qing Qi immediately activated his advertising ginseng. This is the perfect time. Then something came out on Sheng Qing Qi's weapon that was in Red Moth's hand to destroy the trap given by the female demon. Sheng Qing Qi thought that demons have a low point when they are bullied, and if Qing Qi attacked her with all his strength, he thought he would definitely be able to defeat her. Suddenly there was such a huge explosion that even Xu Miao, who was in the distance, was bounced off. Red Moth began to get angry. Then she started doing something to attack Sheng Qing Qi again. She released poisonous gas. Xu Miao told Qing Qi that Red Moth had destroyed her interference device. The Red Moth's power was huge and no match for them. Xu Miao invited Qing Qi to just run away from there. Qing Qi also thought the same as Xu Miao, but he only told Xu Miao to go from there. Qing Qi felt he had to fight the Red Moth at all costs. Chen Feng ran quickly towards the mountain where his friend was. The voice in his brain appeared again. Chen Feng asked the voice who it was and how long it had been living in his brain. Then the voice replied that it was a very long story. The voice said that his energy would not last long and he should rest. Before leaving, the voice warned Chen Feng about one thing, that there will be a very evil force in the place where Chen Feng is going 
where the power was stronger and more dangerous than the devil. So, the voice told Chun Feng to be careful. Then the voice left Chun Feng's brain. Xu Miao was seen using a pair of binoculars to observe Sheng Qing Qi and Red Moth's fight from afar. He saw the area filled with thick smoke. She searched for Qing Qi's figure, but was shocked to see that Qing Qi had turned into a creepy demon. Xu Miao saw that Qing Qi was eating Red Moth's body ferociously. She thought it was so horrible. She was not performing an exorcism, but it was a fight between two demons. Xu Miao was surprised when Qing Qi realized that he had been seen by Xu Miao. Xu Miao no longer saw Qing Qi's figure in her binoculars. She felt confused and afraid of where the demon had gone. Suddenly, Qing Qi ran quickly like a shadow and approached Xu Miao from behind. Sheng Qing Qi, who had turned into a demon, grabbed Xu Miao's shoulders from behind. But at the same time, Chun Feng arrived and swatted away Sheng Qing Qi's hand. Chun Feng told Xu Miao to stay away. Chun Feng realized that Sheng Qing Qi was no longer a human, but turned into a demon. Suddenly, an angry Qing Qi hits Chun Feng in the face. Chun Feng also warned Qing Qi to change his form to human form, or else Chun Feng would not hesitate to kill him. Instantly, Chun Feng kicked Sheng Qing Qi in the face, causing him to fall to the ground. Xu Miao was shocked to see that Chun Feng could make Qing Qi fall. She thought that Qing Qi alone was not a rival for the demons. But Chun Feng could so easily defeat Sheng Qing Qi. Then Chun Feng wondered where the two demons chasing him were. On Chun Feng's side, he thought that he could not show strength before Xu Miao. In his heart, he said that next he will speed up by using one punch. Xu Miao, who saw him, immediately stopped Chun Feng's action. She said to Chun Feng that Sheng Qing Qi came here to help her. Then she told Chun Feng not to take the law into his own hands. Then Chun Feng disagreed. He thought that she couldn't just let go of Sheng Qing Qi, who had turned into a demon. Xu Miao then asked for time to try to calibrate the frequency of the poison. Then she will be able to summon her human energy in Sheng Qing Qi's body. Chun Feng asks Xu Miao how long it will take to finish because he can't hold Sheng Qing Qi any longer. Xu Miao immediately started counting while observing her detection device. Suddenly, Chun Feng entered a different dimension. He saw that around him were many creatures that resembled eyes. The creature said to Chen Feng that, How dare Chun Feng take care of things? It turned out to be a creature that was in Seng Qing Qi's body. He had very horrible eyes. Then the strange creature said that he was not the main creature that Chun Feng was looking for. The creature thought and said to Chun Feng that he would make Sheng Qing Chi his slave. Seng Qing Qi was the best slave in his opinion. He used some of his power to wear Sheng Qing Qi's body. No matter who would oppose him, he felt he had enough power to kill them. Chun Feng, who heard it, was not afraid of the creature. He even opposed it. The creature looked at Chun Feng and said that he had brute strength. Chun Feng wasn't part demon, but he didn't look like a normal human either. Then he challenged Chun Feng and told him that he didn't care who Chun Feng was. He would make it impossible for Chun Feng to get out of here. He said that maybe Chun Feng was good at physical attacks. But in spiritual space, where there was no gravity, he thought that Chun Feng wouldn't be able to do anything. The strange creature told Chen Feng that if he didn't let him go, Chen Feng would continue to be trapped and float there aimlessly and then slowly die mentally. Chen Feng didn't feel afraid of him at all. He even laughed at the creature's nonsense. The screen on Xu Miao's detection tablet appeared to be an error. Xu Miao had failed many times to find the poison in Sheng Qing Qi's body. She felt it was more difficult than discovering his demon existence. The structure of the miasma must be of a very high dimension. Her detection equipment couldn't even reach it. Then, Xu Miao was seen observing Chen Feng who was holding Sheng Qing Qi's body. They hadn't moved at all in the past ten minutes. She wondered what happened to Chen Feng. She saw that Chen Feng had been silent for a while and was emitting light from his eyes like a hypnotized person. In another dimension, Chen Feng was seen taking all his strength to attack the strange creature. He thought that since he had managed to gather the power in his hands, it would also be able to be gathered in this dimension. He learned from his experience and considered himself very smart. Finally, he pulled out the super high lung capacity move, a new original trick. He took out the move and aimed at one of the eyes of the strange creature. 
Then there was a big explosion from that eye and it gave off a green light. Suddenly the screen on the Shu Miao detection device that had been experiencing errors immediately worked properly. She thought it was very strange. The poison structure in Ching Chi's body that had been unpredictable suddenly became stable. She was confused as to what had happened to him. The strange creature turned out to be able to repair the parts of his body that had been destroyed by Chun Feng. In the body of the creature, there are cells that can repair his body back quickly. Then Chun Feng, who saw it, felt dissatisfied and would give the same attack for the second time. Then Chun Feng entered the cell. He looked confused and wondered what place he was in. Then the creature told him to get out of the cell in his body. Xu Miao has managed to find a frequency that matches the poison in Ching Chi's body. Now she came up with an idea to solve that problem. She was going to try to freeze Sheng Ching Chi. But she was astonished to see Chun Feng and Sheng Ching Chi, who had been motionless. Chun Feng was seen gathering strength in his right hand. He said that today he had been in Superman mode for a long time. If it stays like this, then Chun Feng's body will collapse. Then he will use the new power he learned today. He will use all his energy power in one blow. Then Chun Feng said to the creature that he is a disgusting demon. With full power in Chun Feng's hands, he immediately launched his attack at the strange creature. Then suddenly Xu Miao saw a bright blue light that instantly pushed Chun Feng's body off Shun Qing Qi's body. The woman was very surprised and curious about what happened to them. In the middle of a quiet night, there was a man sitting casually in the middle of the forest carrying his glowing gold-colored weapon. He was the son of a Buddhist aesthete. Suddenly there were footsteps approaching him. Suddenly he immediately raised his weapon and asked who the figure who came was. Then the figure appeared. It turned out that he was Hedna, the head of the Vatican exorcist group. He asked what the woman was doing in the middle of the forest like. The man thought that Hedna went to the forest for the game. But that statement was rejected by her. Then Hedna told the man that she had detected a strong energy in the mountain area, and then she asked if he was the man in question. But the man didn't know either. But the man's body seemed unable to figure out the source of the power of the energy it had detected. Hedna realized that the man's body was injured and asked about what had happened to him. The man suddenly threw the transcended headpiece. Hedna was instantly shocked to see it. He realized that the head was a transcended raven, one of the most difficult demons to defeat among other demons. Then the man said something to Hedna. He said that transcended was one of the three demons who became the game administrator. Then he told her that his ten-year-old self was a person who didn't have enough power, so he could only surrender his sense of taste to the three game administrators. The man had spent his last ten years living in solitude and kept practicing to improve his abilities and hoped that one day he could kill the three demon administrators. Then Hedna asked if the man had finally managed to complete the ten-day challenge. The man replied that it was not him who had completed. He said that he had followed the miasma to the forest. Then he met the transcended raven on his way and managed to kill it. The man was quite a bit satisfied with that. But he said that there were still two other demons that he had not yet encountered. Then he continued to tell Hedna that the superpower he had detected was the power of another person who had successfully completed the ten-day challenge and also managed to kill two other demons. The man told Hedna that the three demons were much harder to deal with than imagined. He said again that whoever completed the ten-day challenge he must be in great danger now, but he could not help him. Then he asked Hedna for help to find that person and help him. Sheng Ching Chi has finally managed to wake up and become human again. When he woke up, he didn't remember what happened to him that he had turned into a demon. Then he asked Shu Miao where the red moth was that had dueled with him earlier. Then he rushed to Red Moth and left Xu Miao and Chen Feng. Shen Qing Qi also approached Red Moth's body that had fallen on the ground. He thought that his move had worked. He immediately raised his hand and recited a spell to send the Red Moth demon to hell. Suddenly the demon's body disappeared slowly. Shen Qing Qi looked shocked because he just found out that demons can turn into jewels after death. Chen Feng and Xu Miao caught up with Shen Qing Qi who was busy with his business. Then Chen Feng asked Ching Chi what his purpose was for catching up with him. It seemed like Chen Feng had figured out that Ching Chi was only here to finish the game. Ching Chi answered Chen Feng 
and said that whatever it was, the most important thing was that he had helped Chen Feng to kill the demon for him. He said that this was the least reward he could ask for. Then Xu Miao also said that it was the refined spirit. Ching Chi and Chen Feng were surprised to see that Xu Miao knew that. He explained that the body of a demon with a high dimensional spirit would become a crystal and be molded into a refined spirit inside the crystal after death. The purer the spirit, the higher the energy it carries. Most of their supernatural schools do a lot of research and get awards for their research on the discovery of refined spirits. And the most important thing is that the magic tools that are usually used for exorcism are made from refined spirits. So refined spirits from refined spirits can be said to be an important basic material for exorcist associations. Seng Ching Chi was amazed at the detailed knowledge Xu Miao had. Shen Qingqi told Chen Feng that he knew that Chen Feng had completed the Kun Shu Yan mission. Xu Miao, who heard it, was shocked. Qingqi felt that because of his ignorance, he had wasted the refined spirit for the Exorcism Association. Then Chen Feng said that it wasn't him who completed the mission. He also thought that he didn't need the crystal. Xu Miao was grateful that Chen Feng had saved him from miasma in the past. But now it seems that he no longer knows Chen Feng. He remembers Chen Feng used to cure miasma from him. Now, too many things show that he is not only an expert, he is among those who are very good at performing exorcism, even never saw anyone as good as Chen Feng. Then Chen Feng said, If Qing Qi wants the crystal, he can take it. But Qing Qi was not satisfied with having one crystal. He asked where the other crystal was from the demon he had killed before. Chen Feng took the crystal out of his pocket and showed it to Shen Qing Qi. Shen Qingqi felt incredulous that Chen Feng had managed to kill that demon in the forest alone. He thought how could he have done it alone? Shen Qingqi, who felt greedy, forcibly asked for the crystal from Chen Feng. He said that Chen Feng did not need the crystal. Then Xu Miao felt annoyed and cheated by Shen Qingqi. She asked what the crystals were for. Qingqi ignored her and immediately made a move to forcefully snatch the crystal from Chen Feng's hand. Ching Chi fell down feeling like something was burning his shoulder. Then Xu Miao warned him that Ching Chi's joints had been destroyed by the demon that had entered his body and said it was better not to move too much. Then Shen Ching Chi said that he really needed that refined spirit to help others. Chen Feng was curious about how this crystal could save someone's life. Then Shen Ching Chi said that he couldn't explain it to Chen Feng because if he told him he wouldn't be able to complete the mission. Chen Feng doesn't seem to trust Ching Chi. He tells Xu Miao that he can't trust Ching Chi and will leave the crystal to Xu Miao alone. Suddenly, Hedna interrupted their conversation and said that refined spirit is not a random item that can be given to someone like giving a gift. Refined spirit is the secret key to the exorcism association. Suddenly, they were all surprised by the arrival of Hedna, who didn't know where she came from. Chen Feng, who saw her, was amazed at the beauty. While Xu Miao, she remembered Hedna's face, which was very familiar to her. Then Shen Qingqi remembered that she was the person her teacher talked about every day. She is the great witch Hedna. The three of them immediately fell silent when they saw the arrival of Hedna's figure. Xu Miao only found out that it was Hedna after she searched for information on her cell phone. With the remaining strength from Qing Qi, he tried to get up and asked Hedna about her purpose for coming here. Then Chen Feng greeted her and praised her beauty. Hearing that, Xu Miao said that Chen Feng should be polite to her because she was older than him. Then she explained again that Hedna was the highest official in the Exorcist Association. Hedna then showed me an object in her hand. It was the crystal of the transcended demon. Since they had three refined spirits of three powerful demon administrators, they could now be resolved. Hedna said that those three demons were the most difficult demons for her association to deal with. She expressed her admiration to them for easily killing the demons. Then Chen Feng threw the crystal to Ching Chi. Chen Feng did not admit to Hedna that he had killed one of the monsters, and he pointed to Ching Chi as the one who had killed the demons. Ching Chi was shocked and didn't know what Chen Feng was thinking. He assured Hedna that Ching Chi was the best among the new generation. Hedna did not realize that she was being lied to by Chen Feng. Shen Qingqi wondered what Chen Feng was doing. 
He had rewarded Piao Jishun for winning the Kun Shu Yan mission, and now he was giving refined spirit to him. He was aware of Chun Feng's abilities, but why did he dislike meddling with the Exorcist Association so much? Then Hedna decided to make Shen Ching Chi the Grand Magician of the Year for killing those demons. Shen Ching Chi didn't seem to care about the offer. He knew that Hedna only wanted to take the three refined spirits for his association. He had to keep the two refined spirits. Not only that, Hedna explained again that according to the regulations, the refined spirits must be handed over to the association. Many of the exorcists hid the refined spirits secretly, but he wouldn't allow it if it happened in front of him. Shen Ching Chi's face looked furious at Hedna's explanation. He seemed to really dislike that woman. Hearing the rules and formalities that Hedna talked about made Chen Feng dislike the Exorcism Association. Then Shen Ching Chi got up and outright rejected Hedna's offer. He said that Ching Chi's purpose in coming here was to seek refined spirit. He looked as if he was about to start an attack on Hedna. But he realized that Hedna was a great wizard. Even if his body was healthy, he would not be able to match Hedna's power. He felt unable to fight Hedna. Shen Ching Chi was at a loss as to what he should do while he wouldn't give the refined spirit to him. Then, with what was left of his strength, he raised his weapon and ran towards Hedna to attack her. But suddenly, Ching Chi's body fell to the ground. Shen Ching Chi was finally brought to the monk for treatment. He looked unconscious. The monk told Hedna and Chen Feng that Shen Ching Chi had a serious injury and he suggested taking Ching Chi to the hospital for immediate treatment. Hedna said that the road to the hospital was long and steep. She would ask her friend to take Ching Chi down the mountain tomorrow. Suddenly, Xu Miao arrived in her car and said that they didn't have time for tomorrow. She proposed to take her vehicle down the mountain. Then Chen Feng carried Shen Ching Chi's body to get her into the car. When he was about to carry Ching Chi, the monk told Chen Feng that he had destroyed the house at the top of the mountain and told him to compensate. Hedna, who heard it, immediately defended Chen Feng by telling the monk that she would pay for it because killing demons was the duty of the Exorcist Association. So that's why Hedna will pay the compensation from Chen Feng. They said goodbye and immediately left to take Ching Chi. The monk wished Chen Feng well. After their departure from there, his disciple told Master Ku Rong that Mr. Kid was waiting to meet him. Mr. Kid greeted Master Ku Rong. They had not seen each other for a long time. Master Ku Rong said to Mr. Kid that he seemed to still hold a grudge against the game. But the game was easily solved by Chen Feng. Then Mr. Kid said to Mr. Ku Rong that he was no longer interested in the game. He was only interested in the young man named Zhang Chen Feng. It seemed that Mr. Kid realized the power possessed by Chen Feng so that it attracted his attention. Then, Master Ku Rong assumed that the reason this game started was to search for Chen Feng. Mr. Kid felt confused that Master Ku Rong meant. He asked who was looking for Chen Feng's whereabouts. Master Ku Rong went on to explain that it had been 50 years. It seemed that the world had forgotten the fear that Lord Demon had created. Therefore, he would definitely be reborn. On a sunny afternoon in Qianliang Hospital, there was Shen Qing Qi lying weak and helpless in one of the hospital rooms. Shen Qing Qi was suffering from organ failure. Many of his joints showed signs of damage, but miraculously, the damage healed on its own. Doctors were clueless and confused as to how Shen Qing Qi could still survive. Hedna then asked the doctor if Shen Qing Qi could recover. To be honest, the doctor didn't know for sure because he had never come across a case like this before, so he couldn't say for sure that he would recover or not. Hedna also asked the doctor to give the best treatment. After that, Hedna approached Xu Miao, who had been waiting outside. She told Xu Miao not to worry because Ching Chi was now in the hospital and told her that the doctor would try his best to help him. Then Xu Miao said to Miss Hedna that she noticed something strange about this hospital. They could take Ching Chi directly to the emergency room without having to register first. Then, Miss Hedna explained to Xu Miao that this hospital was funded by her exorcist association, so there was no need for much formality. Xu Miao thought maybe this hospital was not a suitable place to cure Shen Ching Chi's illness. Miss Hedna, who heard Xu Miao's suggestion, agreed with it. 
Then Miss Hedna suggested to take Shen Qingqi to Peach Blossom Mountain. Only there is a place that can save Qingqi, she thought. Peach Blossom Mountain is one of the main sectors. But Miss Hedna tells her that there doesn't seem to be a hospital in Peach Blossom Mountain that can accept Shen Qingqi. Xu Miao, who had previously looked into Shen Qingqi's background, assumes that it has something to do with Shen Qingqi having been expelled from Peach Blossom Mountain. Then, with a serious look, Miss Hedna wanted to make a request to Xu Miao and Chen Feng. Miss Hedna asked them for help to take some clothes that were at Ching Chi's house, and then she gave the address and also the key to Ching Chi's house. Chen Feng walked to a luxury housing complex, Shen Ching Chi. He felt that the task given by Miss Hedna was very boring. If it wasn't for Miss Hedna's pretty face, he wouldn't have wanted to do it. He looked at Ching Chi's house. In his heart, he said he lived in a big house in a luxurious complex, but didn't have a single glass. Then, Chen Feng started to enter the house. When he was about to hold the fence, he realized that there was something strange in the house. It turned out that there was an entity blocking him. There seemed to be many secrets behind Shen Qingqi's house. This was very interesting, he thought. Then he tried to force his way into it. Finally, Chen Feng managed to get into the house. Intruder, intruder, cried out from the strange creatures flying around the courtyard of the Qing Chi house. They seem to be the guardians of this house, thought Chen Feng. The strange little creatures said that Chen Feng was an intruder and must be destroyed immediately. One of the creatures did a light wave scan. He saw that Chen Feng had a very healthy body. Then he summoned the umbrella monster to attack Chen Feng. Suddenly, the umbrella monster came from above Chen Feng saying that Chen Feng would definitely not be able to avoid his tornado attack. Seeing this, Chen Feng immediately caught the umbrella and tied it up. Chen Feng told the umbrella that he didn't need it now because it wasn't the rainy season. Then the umbrella was thrown into Shen Qingqi's yard. Then Chen Feng said to the little creatures that this is how they welcome guests. The next attack came from the bat monster. It suddenly attacked Chen Feng from behind and immediately sucked her blood. The bat monster confidently said that in a few minutes, Chen Feng would become his servant. Chen Feng chuckled mockingly. He warned the monster that his blood would have a bad effect on his body. Sure enough, the bat monster suddenly collapsed and felt something strange about his body. He thought there was something wrong with Chen Feng's blood. The bat monster tried to spit out Chen Feng's blood that he had sucked. Then Chen Feng challenged the man and asked what kind of demon group had gathered at Shen Qing Qi's house. At the same time, another snake-shaped demon appeared behind Shen Qing Qi that looked ready to devour her from behind. She is Miss Five Poison, a huge snake woman. Chen Feng was shocked by the snake woman's unexpected attack. The snake woman seemed to have swallowed Chen Feng alive, but soon there was a golden glow from inside the snake woman's stomach. Unexpectedly, the snake woman's stomach exploded, shattering her body and killing her. They were all shocked to see Chen Feng who killed the five poison miss. The bat monster wondered who Chen Feng really was. Then Chen Feng explained that his arrival was only to take some clothes from Shen Qing Qi. But the woman ate them instead, and Chen Feng had no other way but to kill her. Then the creatures went to call their master. Not long after, a woman wearing red clothes came in and seemed to be disturbed by the commotion in Shen Qing Qi's house. The little creatures and bat monsters ran away in fear and called their master Miss Kiriko. Then, Miss Kiriko greeted Chen Feng and said that the master had been waiting for Chen Feng's arrival. But Chen Feng didn't care. As long as he saw the demon in front of him, then he wouldn't let it go. But when he was about to attack her, Miss Kiriko suddenly disappeared and said that she didn't want to fight. Then she told Chen Feng to follow her. Chen Feng felt confused about where he should follow her. Then the little creatures told him where to follow Miss Kiriko. Chen Feng walked into the house and searched for the room where Miss Kiriko was. When he arrived at the door of the room, Chen Feng smashed the door open. He found Miss Kiriko there. Without further ado, Miss Kiriko told Chen Feng to go down to the basement. Chen Feng was annoyed that he was ordered by the demon. Then Miss Kiriko said, if she was only doing her job to bring Chen Feng there, she then just disappeared in front of Chen Feng. 
Chun Feng was annoyed with the demon who had a teleportation move. The curious Chun Feng finally approached the entrance, and he smelled the poisonous odor from below the room. The poisonous odor felt a little familiar to him. Then he plunged from above into a basement that had no stairs. Chun Feng sensed that this place had a different direction of gravity. Chun Feng was curious as to what kind of demon master was looking for him. Suddenly, the voice in Chun Feng's brain reappeared, telling Chun Feng not to go into that room. Chun Feng was annoyed that the voice always appeared suddenly like that. The voice says that his energy hasn't fully recovered yet, so he will appear for a short while only. He told Chen Feng that there was a strange energy behind the door. The voice said that the energy was not something that Chen Feng could handle. Then the voice said that it sensed danger around the energy in the room. Anyway, it wasn't a battle that Chen Feng needed to fight. He warned Chen Feng that he should avoid unnecessary battles. Then Chen Feng asked the voice the meaning of unnecessary fighting. Given that Chen Feng's mother was killed by the Lord Demon, he would kill every demon in front of him until none of them were left. Chun Feng then shouted out to the voice that did not respond and disappeared suddenly. Chun Feng also chose not to pay attention to the words of the unclear voice. Curious as to what was behind the door of the room, Chun Feng finally broke the door loudly as if he was venting his anger. Then he looked around the room. The room was dark, and there was only one mirror in the center of the room. He walked slowly to the mirror. Then the demon in the mirror spoke to Chen Feng and welcomed him to his home. Chen Feng recalled that he had met him once in the spiritual world in Shen Qingqi's body. No wonder this voice looked a little familiar to him. The demon in the mirror said that Chen Feng was an extraordinary human being for possessing such powerful spiritual abilities, considering that Chen Feng was not part of the exorcist organization. Chen Feng replied, that he liked the exorcism organization. Then the demon said that they had something in common, and he invited Chen Feng to join him. The demon then offered to give Chen Feng more power and take him to a higher dimension where he could conquer the entire world together. Chen Feng chuckled at the demon's offer. He said that he was not willing to be a follower of the demon like the other demons outside the house. Then Chen Feng asked the demon that, what if Chen Feng was stronger than him? The demon says that Chen Feng has a lot of self-confidence. He tells her that it's not a good habit. He challenged Chen Feng and would use all his strength against Chen Feng. Chen Feng challenged the demon back and said that the demon was a loser. Chen Feng said that he didn't like joining a demon like him. Even if he had to choose, joining the Exorcist Association was better than joining a demon like him. Chen Feng's response surprised the demon. Then he said to Chen Feng that he had potential and moreover he was friends with Shen Qingqi. Not finished talking, Chen Feng cut off the words of the demon. He told the demon that he was not Qing Qi's friend, and even if the demon did not intend to kill him, then Chen Feng would attack him first. Then the demon attacked Chen Feng. The demon seemed to release a poison that turned Chen Feng to bone. On a sunny afternoon, there were Miss Hedna and Xu Miao climbing hundreds of steps together. They were walking towards Peach Blossom Mountain. Xu Miao called Miss Hedna and asked why she had to dress up like a nun, which made her attract the attention of many people and become embarrassed. Then Miss Hedna answered Xu Miao's question, because this game incident was too dangerous. So, the whole Vatican exorcist group didn't agree with Miss Hedna leaving alone, so she sneaked out, and also if Miss Hedna felt worried if she had to come to Peach Blossom Mountain alone, that's the reason why Miss Hedna told Shu Miao to change into a nun. After a while, they arrived at Peach Blossom Mountain. Then there were two bodyguards who told them that this was a private area that no one could enter and told them to go back. Hearing that Miss Hedna immediately opened her hood and said that she was looking for Master Sun, the two bodyguards were amazed at Miss Hedna's beauty and went straight inside to call Master Sun. Master Sun looked surprised to see Miss Hedna, who had suddenly come to Peach Blossom Mountain. He asked Miss Hedna what had caused her to come to his place. Shu Miao watched Master Sun. She just found out that in front of her was one of the twelve great witches, and was the current leader of Peach Blossom Mountain. Shu Miao had only seen him from the news all this time, but being able to be close to him 
Xu Miao could feel a strong dominance, so no wonder he could be one of the strongest exorcists in the world. Xu Miao also saw that the Taoists around her looked fierce. Then she wondered if this could be the something that Miss Hedna had mentioned. Is there a grudge between Miss Hedna and Peach Blossom Mountain? But it turned out that it was all wrong. Master Sun Sadao seemed to really like Miss Hedna. Miss Hedna asked for help from Master Sun Sadao to cure Shen Qing Chi. Hearing that request, Master Sun Sudao flatly refused. Even hearing the name of Shen Qing Chi made him angry. But Miss Hedna gave an explanation that only Peach Blossom Mountain was able to cure him. Miss Hedna sincerely begged Master Sun Sudao for help. Then Sun Sudao said firmly to Miss Hedna, if it wasn't her who said that then he would destroy him. Master Sun Sudao is very terrible, thought Shu Miao. Then Miss Hedna told Master Sun about the mission on the island that will never return. The five major sectors have promised to send high-level exorcists, and in the list of exorcists that do not belong to a sector, she decided to send Shen Qing Qi. It was her request as a president. Suddenly, Xu Miao interrupted their conversation, which made the atmosphere a little calmer. Xu Miao said that they didn't need to rush to discuss Shen Qing Qi's problem. Then she told Master Sun that she was tired from the long journey and it was getting dark so she asked to be taken to the famous hot spring on Peach Blossom Mountain. Master Sun looked surprised to see the two of them going to stay there. In a magnificent-looking hot spring on Peach Blossom Mountain, Miss Hedna and Shu Miao were inside. They looked amazed at the nice hot spring. Miss Hedna said the view of the hot spring on Peach Blossom Mountain was so beautiful that she wouldn't be able to find it in the Vatican. Then, Miss Hedna thanked Shu Miao for her help this afternoon. She said if she came alone to Peach Blossom Mountain and got into conflict with them in her area, then her president title would be of no use at all. Then Xu Miao said that she was just doing what she was supposed to do. From a distance, Master Sun Sudao can be seen peeping at Miss Hedna, who is bathing in hot water with Xu Miao. He has a dirty mind towards Miss Hedna and regrets that Miss Hedna only married her god. He thought that it was better for Miss Hedna to have fun with him, which could prolong her life. Suddenly from behind, someone called out to Master Sun. He was Sun Yukian, the 24-year-old second son of Master Sun Sidao. Sun Sidao told him to leave. He told his son that he had no right to judge his father and that it was dishonorable. Then Sun Yuqian replied to his father that he was the one who did the disrespectful thing, peeping at a bathing woman, especially since he was the president of the Exorcist Association. But in Sun Sidao's eyes, since Fan Xin's death, the president of the Exorcist Association was just a formality. Then Sun Yuqian heard that President Hedna had come here to help Shen Qing Qi. Sun Sidao was furious. He told Sun Yuqian that even though he was his son, he didn't dare to mention Shen Qing Qi's name in front of him. Then Sun Yuqian told his father that his father once said Shen Qing Qi was more talented than Sun Yuqian. Then Master Sun replied that he was drunk when he said that. Then Sun Yuqian asked his father again, if that didn't happen, would Shen Qingqi be the next leader of Peach Blossom Mountain? Sun Sidao looked angry at his son. Then Sun Yuqian apologized to his father for asking such a question. Sun Sidao ignored him and told him to take Miss Hedna and Xu Miao to dinner in the kitchen. Sun Yuqian took Miss Hedna and Xu Miao to dinner, which had been prepared in the kitchen. Miss Hedna was very happy because it looked like a lot of regional specialties had been prepared for them. Sun Yuxian said that his father apologized for not being able to join the meal because he needed to meditate at night, so he took his place. Sun Yuxian said that it was her first time meeting Miss Hedna and said that Miss Hedna was more beautiful than his father had described. Miss Hedna responded to Sun Yuxian's compliment by saying that rather than praising her facial beauty, she would rather praise her mistakes because she considered them more valuable. Seeing this, Sun Yuqian realized why his father couldn't have the opportunity to have Miss Hedna. Shu Miao, who had just left the room after getting dressed, was surprised to see Sun Yuqian at the dining table with Miss Hedna. All Shu Miao could think was that the man in front of her was very handsome. Then Miss Hedna introduced Grandmaster Sun Yuqian to Shu Miao. Xu Miao also introduced herself as Miss Hedna's assistant, but that was denied by Miss Hedna. She said that Xu Miao was a close friend of Sheng Qingqi, so she was also a friend of Miss Hedna. 
Miss Hedna said that she brought Xu Miao because she didn't know much about China. Hearing that, Xu Miao was touched that she was recognized as a friend by an archmage. Then Sun Yuqian invited Xu Miao to sit at the dining table. Sun Yuqian was seen looking at Xu Miao secretly. He felt that Xu Miao was a cute woman, but he suddenly realized that Xu Miao is the friend of Sheng Qingqi, which means she is his enemy too. But he couldn't help the way he felt. Then, Miss Hedna started talking about something serious. She wanted to talk about their purpose for coming to Peach Blossom Mountain. Miss Hedna heard that Sun Yuqian and Sheng Qingqi used to be fellow students, and the two of them had a good relationship. But Sun Yuqian said that it was a long time ago. Then Sun Yuqian said to Miss Hedna that he heard that Miss Hedna wanted to make Sheng Qingqi a participant to join the mission on the island of no return. Meanwhile, Cheng Feng, who was fighting with the demon, looked helpless. He struggled to get up and looked at the shattered mirror in front of him. After being exposed to the strange, extremely bright light, Cheng Feng could not remember everything that had happened before. He felt confused as to what had happened to him and why he was in this room. He instantly remembered that he was there to pick up some of Sheng Qing Qi's clothes. Then he saw a creature standing in front of the door. Cheng Feng ran towards it and started to attack it, but unexpectedly Cheng Feng's hand looked swollen after hitting the zombie. Then the zombie attacked Cheng Feng back. Cheng Feng's body was flung far backwards due to the punch attack from the zombie. Cheng Feng didn't expect that the zombie had such great strength. In his mind, Cheng Feng wondered if it was a demon figure. But Cheng Feng felt that judging from the miasma it had, that figure was not what he had expected. It was a blue spirit at most, and a figure with low intelligence. Then Cheng Feng looked at his two hands. He was immediately surprised to see that the golden lines had disappeared. Then the zombie approached towards him slowly while sniffing. He stuck out his tongue, which was extremely filled with his saliva. Now the zombie's tongue was right in front of Cheng Feng's face. There was sweat pouring down Cheng Feng's face. Cheng Feng claimed that he wasn't afraid of it at all, but not long after that, Cheng Feng was running fast away from the zombie. Cheng Feng realized that he was not suitable to fight with him for now. Cheng Feng ran very fast out of the door of the room which was directly connected to the outside of the room. When the monster came out after Cheng Feng, the portal door suddenly closed and disappeared. Cheng Feng was breathing heavily from running so fast. Then he looked behind him and realized that the figure could not break through the barrier. Cheng Feng was curious about the pale-faced figure because his house was filled with monsters. Then Cheng Feng also realized that something strange was happening to his body. Meanwhile, in the dining room, Sun Yuqian said that it was impossible and then told her that his father had gotten angry every time his name was mentioned since he left, even more so if he heard that he used the power of Peach Blossom Mountain to save him. Out of curiosity, Xu Miao immediately asked Sun Yuqian why Sheng Qingqi was expelled from their sect. Sun Yuqian instantly became agitated at the woman's question. Then, Sun Yuqian began to show a serious expression. He apologized to Xu Miao. Sun Yuqian told her that he didn't feel comfortable talking about it with people from outside his sect. Even the disciples of their sect didn't know much about it. When Xu Miao was about to ask again, Miss Hedna suddenly warned her and told her to respect the privacy of their sect. Then Miss Hedna told him that last night Sheng Qingqi had managed to kill two demons. Hearing the news, Sun Yuqian became dumbfounded, but immediately he thought that he could also do this as if he thought that it was not something very great. But Miss Hedna said that those were not just any demons, they were demons on the list that even archmages would find difficult to defeat. Suddenly, Sun Yuqian was immediately surprised. He did realize that Sheng Qingqi was a talented person, but he thought it was very impossible for Sheng Qingqi to defeat such demons. According to Miss Hedna, if Sheng Qingqi really did it, on the one hand, they could ensure that the mission on the No Return Island would be completed successfully, while on the other hand, they could also find out his true strength from the mission. Miss Hedna told Sun Yuxian about this before she had enough evidence. Xu Miao was silent while looking at Miss Hedna. Xu Miao realized that Miss Hedna was trying to provoke Sun Yuqian. Sun Yuqian lowered his head while closing his eyes, 
Then he shared that they had indeed been competitors before, but Sheng Qing Chi was no longer in that position. What's more, Sun Yuqian didn't want to offend his father because of him. Then Xu Miao earnestly begged him to save that person, because if he didn't, then Sheng Qing Chi would really die. Seeing the woman who earnestly asked to save Sheng Qing Chi, Sun Yuqian felt that they had a special relationship and suspected that Xu Miao was Sheng Qing Chi's lover. Then Sun Yuqian immediately turned his face away to hide his panicked expression from them. Sun Yuqian bit his fingers because he did not expect it. He felt that this was a terrible surprise for him. Feeling very curious, Sun Yuqian finally asked Xu Miao directly about her relationship with Sheng Qing Chi. Then Xu Miao told him that Sheng Qing Chi was the one who had saved her. Suddenly, Sun Yuqian felt so dumbfounded that his mouth unconsciously opened wide. In his mind, he did not expect this and thought that they would get married soon. But after that, Xu Miao explained that Sheng Qing Chi was the one who had helped her when she was almost killed by poison. So Xu Miao felt indebted to him and wanted to repay his kindness. Hearing the explanation made Sun Yuqian's heart relieved because it wasn't what he thought. After that, Sun Yuqian immediately got up from his seat. While putting his hand on his chest, Sun Yuqian emphasized that he was the Grand Master of Peach Blossom Mountain who had completed more than 200 exorcisms. So he told Xu Miao that if she had difficulty in removing the poison, then she could ask for his help. Then, Sun Yuqian asked for Xu Miao's cell phone number. Miss Hedna, who saw them, felt like the third person there. Xu Miao was silent for a moment at Sun Yuqian's very friendly attitude towards her. She realized that he liked her. In her mind, she thought of making him dislike her again. Then Xu Miao refused him subtly that she didn't need any help from him and praised Sheng Qing Qi's great strength. Sun Yuqian immediately widened his eyes in surprise hearing this. Sun Yuqian did explain to her about the old saying that there is always someone better as if Sun Yuqian felt better than Sheng Qing Qi. Xu Miao realized that the man had been provoked by her. Then Xu Miao said again that she was very sure that Sheng Qing Qi was the most excellent person among all the Grand Masters. Then Xu Miao pretended again. She held her cheeks while smiling and admitted that Sheng Qing Qi was a very handsome person to her. Seeing Xu Miao so fond of his enemy made Sun Yuqian so emotional that he unconsciously gripped the cell phone in his hand until it broke. Then Sun Yuqian pounded the dining table with his fist. Sun Yuqian decided to ask his father to cure Sheng Qing Qi even though his father would scold him. It was because Sun Yuqian wanted to convince himself of Sheng Qing Qi's ability. He wanted to prove to Xu Miao that he was better than Sheng Qing Qi. Miss Hedna thought that their plan was going well. Then Xu Miao smiled and assured Sun Yuqian if he meant it. More than that, Sun Yuqian would also sign up for the mission on the No Return Island in the name of Peach Blossom Mountain. He was determined to show that he was stronger. It just so happened that the Fokking sect would also be sending their young master to undertake that mission. Miss Hedna felt that this would be something great. Hearing that, Sun Yuqian immediately turned around with a panicked look. He realized that the young master of the Tsuchimikado family was the genius known as the National Treasure of Country J, named Tsuchimikado Hiroki. This was immediately confirmed by Miss Hedna. But Sun Yukian tried to control himself so as not to show panic in front of that woman. He folded his arms across his chest and said that Tsuchimikado was just a boy, and he didn't believe the media's exaggeration of the man's name saying that he was a very powerful person. Sun Yuqian thought that his sect, Peach Blossom Mountain, was the most powerful sect among the others. Miss Hedna glanced at Sun Yuqian with a cynical look and explained that as long as the mission was successful, it didn't matter who was the best. Two days later, Sun Yuqian's battered face was seen as he had been beaten by his father. It happened because Sun Yuqian begged his father to save Shen Qing Qi. But Sun Yuqian was not desperate. He kept persuading Sun Sidao to save the man. Then in the end, Sun Sidao sent Peach Blossom Mountain's chief doctor Li Hui Chun to save Sheng Qing Qi. Miss Hedna as well as Xu Miao have successfully reached the destination of their journey. But only Miss Hedna knew that Sun Sidao agreed to save Sheng Qing Qi not only because of Sun Yuqian's request, 
but it was also because Miss Hedna promised that she would recommend Sun Sidao to be the president of the Exorcist Association in the next three years. Besides, even with Li Hui Chun's great medical skills, Sheng Ching Chi only gained the ability to move temporarily. The damage to his internal organs and bones could not be repaired, so Sheng Ching Chi could possibly die at any moment. Meanwhile, on the other side, there is Jiang Cheng Feng who is still in trouble. Sheng Ching Chi told Cheng Feng and Shu Miao the story of the lovers who anchored to the No Return Island, while showing them pictures of them on the island. Huang Xiaobin was amazed after setting foot for the first time on the island. Huang Xiaobin was determined to stay there, but his father tried every means to bring his son back. But it always failed until he asked the association for help. Cheng Feng was curious how he knew the details of the story, so Sheng Ching Chi said that Huang Xiaobin's wife told them that she didn't want to live on the island with her husband. But deep down, the wife was worried about Huang Xiaobin's safety, so now she changed her mind and returned to the island. Then Sheng Ching Chi told Xu Miao to read all the information he had provided. Then Xu Miao replied that she had read it all. Sheng Ching Chi was surprised that Xu Miao was so fast, even though the data was so much, but she only needed a few minutes to finish it. Xu Miao wondered why the number of residents on the island hadn't changed much in recent times, because according to the information she read, the beautiful island always had an influx of residents every year. However, Cheng Feng didn't find it strange and thought it was normal because the people there would also die. But according to Xu Miao, this was not normal, considering that there were more than 500 people on the island. But the annual population change was only 10 people, or even less. Another thing that Xu Miao found most strange was that out of the many people who traveled to the island, only the young people decided to settle there. Then Sheng Qingqi explained while coughing due to his illness that had not fully recovered, he informed that those young settlers all had extraordinary talents. The local police had also been baffled for decades. Then Xu Miao concluded that that was why this matter was classified as a supernatural event. Sheng Qingqi confirmed it. He informed that a few months ago the association conducted a large-scale survey on the island. But all the people sent there suddenly disappeared without a trace, and the Exorcist Association did not receive any information about them. So the mission on the island, which was originally at the purple level, was upgraded to dark gold last week. Xu Miao was dumbfounded at the news. She thought it would be very complicated. Likewise with Cheng Feng, he felt annoyed with Sheng Qing Qi, who had not even expressed his gratitude to those who had saved him from the brink of death. With a fierce face, Cheng Feng told him that he was a person who was not good at being grateful. Sheng Qing Qi was annoyed with Cheng Feng. He only thanked Xu Miao for trying to beg her master to help him. Meanwhile, in his opinion, Cheng Feng did not participate in that, so he thought that Cheng Feng did not participate in saving him. Then Cheng Feng mentions that he went to great lengths to retrieve his clothes from his house but still failed. Sheng Qing Qi was immediately surprised to learn that Cheng Feng broke into his house. Then Cheng Feng added that he had also beaten up the monsters inside. Suddenly, Sheng Qing Qi was dumbfounded. He remembered the incident yesterday where the situation in his house had become chaotic and all the spirits in his house had disappeared. Then Kiriko explained that the master had sent them to another place. Then Sheng Qing Qi asked about the master's whereabouts. Kiriko told him that some accidents had happened before, so the master thought that he was no longer suitable to live in the mirror and move to another place. Sheng Ting Chi felt very surprised and dumbfounded. Kiriko told him that at least the master could get two spirits, but they were captured by the Exorcist Association, so the master was furious about that. Sheng Ting Chi felt guilty, so he tried to explain to her. But according to her, there was nothing to explain anymore, and Sheng Ting Chi should be ready to accept his punishment. Sheng Ching Chi's body became very shaky, but suddenly Kiriko told him that he still had one chance to fix it. Kiriko told Sheng Ching Chi to utilize the power of Jiang Cheng Feng for the mission behind the No Return Island. After Sheng Ching Chi succeeds with this task, the master will release him and his spirits. Sheng Ching Chi thought that he would really die this time. He didn't expect that the accident mentioned by Kiriko was the work of Jiang Cheng Feng. It wasn't surprising that he defeated the stone Viscount as well as the five poison lady, but still, 
It was an impossible thing considering Cheng Feng could fight that ancient demon. Suddenly, Xu Miao broke the quiet atmosphere. She said that she was interested in the mission on the island of No Return, so she decided to join. Cheng Feng, who was sitting next to her, looked very surprised by her decision. But the problem was that only senior exorcists could perform missions on the island, while Jiang Cheng Feng and Xu Miao did not have an exorcist license. That was not a problem for Sheng Qing Qi. He suggested the two of them to be his assistants while there, so that the two of them only needed a junior license. Hearing this made Xu Miao happy, but it was different with Cheng Feng. He was not willing to be an assistant to Sheng Qing Qi. Cheng Feng still insisted on rejecting his suggestion and asked for a way out other than being her assistant. Instantly, Sheng Qing Qi reached into his pocket for something. Then he handed a wad of cash to Cheng Feng. Seeing the huge amount of money, Cheng Feng couldn't refuse and finally accepted that he should become his assistant. The next day, they immediately left for the airport to go to the No Return Island. After the plane took off, Xu Miao took out a round object from her bag. Cheng Feng felt noisy with the sound from the object and was curious as to what the object was that she was holding. Xu Miao explained that it was a wave transmitter developed by the Spiritual Institute. The device emitted a beam indicating that there was a low-level miasma near them now. But Cheng Feng remained relaxed while eating his snack because he did not feel any miasma around him. He was very confident because he was a person who was very sensitive to miasma. Likewise, with Sheng Qing Qi, he also did not feel the slightest miasma nearby. Sheng Qing Qi thought that it was just an ordinary person with too many evil thoughts that could sometimes produce low level miasma as well. Hearing this, Xu Miao calmed down a bit. Instantly, Sheng Qing Qi remembered the words of Kiriko, who told him that anywhere could be a battlefield. Then Sheng Qing Qi looked out the airplane window and hoped that nothing would happen. There was a sound of the airplane's propellers rumbling. Their journey from Wuhan to Krabi would take about four more hours, and the plane's current altitude was 10,000 meters. After a while, Sheng Qing Qi woke up from his sleep. He saw that the atmosphere around him had become very dark, even though this was supposed to be a daytime flight. Sheng Qing Qi thought that something was wrong there. Then Sheng Qing Qi put yin and yang energy in his hand and directly patted his forehead. As soon as he got up and looked around, he found the figure of a female flight attendant who had apparently been possessed by the spirit of the sleep witch, the deep red spirit. The woman's eyes seemed to light up as she chanted a spell to put all the passengers into a deep sleep. She possessed the stewardess so that they couldn't see her before. Sheng Qing Qi was worried that if he stopped the woman suddenly, then it would endanger all the passengers. Sheng Qing Qi sprang into action. He took out a talisman written in red ink that was full of spiritual power that could be effective on others. But unfortunately, he only brought one talisman, so he was at a loss as to who to give the talisman to between the two of them. Not thinking for long, Sheng Qing Qi immediately attached the talisman to Xu Miao who was fast asleep. Finally, Xu Miao opened her eyes and immediately realized that there was something strange around her. Sheng Qing Qi finally explained briefly about the current situation. Fortunately, Xu Miao was able to understand the situation quickly. Xu Miao looked at the female flight attendant in front of her and realized that what the woman was emitting were waves that affected the brain. Xu Miao immediately picked up her tools to do something. She thought that as long as they measured the frequency of these waves, then hypnotism could be replaced. Sheng Qing Qi felt that waking the woman up was the right choice. Suddenly, the plane experienced severe turbulence, and the two of them panicked. Xu Miao realized that it was pitch black outside the window. Sheng Qing Qi felt the same way and pointed to the window opposite them, which looked normal and bright. Xu Miao thought that something was happening outside the airplane, but they couldn't see anything from inside. Without thinking, Xu Miao immediately took her tablet to check the flight data. But Sheng Qing Qi told her that there was no signal on board. But Xu Miao explained that she could connect to the satellite directly. Suddenly, they were shocked to see something on the body of the plane they were on. It was a blue spirit that was a figure with a sticky body. Xu Miao thought that it wasn't a good thing. 
The vibrations they had felt earlier were the result of the left engine of the plane simply shutting down. It was still spreading in the plane. Xu Miao tells them that if the engine spreads to the right, then the plane will crash immediately. That meant the two of them would be facing two evil spirits at the same time in such a bad condition. Sheng Qing Chi hurried to prepare to fight the two monsters. Meanwhile, Cheng Feng was still in a deep sleep while delirious in his dreams. Xu Miao was using her tool to wake Cheng Feng, who was fast asleep. Because it took so long, Sheng Qing Chi was annoyed and told Xu Miao to leave the man alone. Xu Miao was surprised to realize that Jiang Chengfeng's spiritual energy was much stronger than the average person. In her mind, Xu Miao wondered if there might be something wrong with her wave calculation. Xu Miao immediately raised her hand. She decided to use violent means by hitting Chengfeng's face several times. Sheng Qing Qi was shocked to see the woman's action. He reminded her that it was a dangerous thing to forcibly wake up a hypnotized person. Cheng Feng immediately opened his eyes and was confused by the situation he was in. His face looked swollen and red from the blows from Xu Miao. Xu Miao was so annoyed with the man that it turned out that he was just fast asleep and not hypnotized. No wonder her waves couldn't wake the man up. But Cheng Feng still couldn't understand the situation that happened now. Because she was so upset, Xu Miao grabbed Cheng Feng's face and told him that there was a big problem now. Then she showed him her tablet where the source of the problem was. Xu Miao emphasized that they didn't have much time to take care of it. Then he divided the tasks among them. Xu Miao felt that she could handle the sorceress and told Sheng Qing Qi and Jiang Cheng Feng to take care of the matter outside the airplane. Cheng Feng chuckled at having to do it together with Sheng Qing Qi, thinking that the man could do the matter alone. Suddenly, Xu Miao immediately looked sharply at Cheng Feng and told him to perform the task. Cheng Feng instantly felt irritated, but he couldn't argue with the woman. Then Sheng Qing Qi looked at him and told him to bring out his true strength. Cheng Feng was immediately excited. He thought it was not a big deal to him. Then Cheng Feng looked at his right hand where there was a golden line. He was wondering why the golden line only appeared on his right hand today. But it doesn't matter he will still show the strength he has gained. Then Sheng Qing Qi as well as Cheng Feng went to the back to deal with the problems outside the airplane. Meanwhile, Xu Miao would face the sorceress alone. Xu Miao would restrain the Red Witch and also keep all the passengers safe. The Red Witch released a very deep hypnotic B wave. According to Xu Miao, it would cause the passengers to die from falling into a deep sleep for too long. The hardest thing for Xu Miao to deal with was the witch's constantly changing waves. Then, Xu Miao fiddled with her tablet to keep adjusting the wave as well. As the numbers grew larger, it made Xu Miao even more sleepy. But Xu Miao persisted with all her might because he didn't have much time left. Meanwhile, at the back of the plane, Sheng Qing Qi was doing his thing. Cheng Feng, who was standing behind him, felt that the man was just wasting his time. So he suggested that they just open the cabin door and beat the monster outside the plane. Sheng Qing Qi sighed and ignored Cheng Feng's nonsensical words. Xu Miao, who heard that, was also annoyed by Cheng Feng's stupid plan. Xu Miao told him that they were now at an altitude of 10,000 meters, and also the temperature outside reached minus 50 degrees. So if they went out, then they only faced death. Xu Miao yelled at them to take their job seriously, as it was about the safety of all the passengers. Since Cheng Feng didn't have any good ideas, Sheng Qing Qi told him to just follow his plan. Unexpectedly, Seng Qing Qi threw his heirloom towards the window until the airplane window was broken. Sheng Qing Qi would do anything as long as he could survive without caring about the safety of other passengers. He didn't want to die in that place. Immediately, a strong wind came in and ravaged them. Then Sheng Qing Qi immediately ordered Jiang Cheng Feng to get something that could cover the window hole. Cheng Feng quickly covered the hole with his palm directly. Seeing this, Sheng Qing Qi felt very surprised and couldn't believe it, but Cheng Feng felt that he would get frostbite if he did that for a long time and told him to do something with his plan. Then Sheng Qing Qi immediately took a position to start the action. He judged that the blue spirit outside the airship 
was similar to a swamp. So, he thought it was an evil spirit with earth element. There is a reciprocal limitation in the five elements that wood limits earth. Sheng Qing Chi chanted incantations to summon the god Zhao. In heaven, the god of Zhao scared away all the gods, demons, and other evil spirits. All the monsters disappeared without a trace because of the growl of his tiger, which is why Sheng Qing Chi asked him to come out and help. Meanwhile, Cheng Feng, who saw him like that, felt confused as to what the man was doing. Sheng Qing Chi's heirloom flew up and attacked the blue spirit with the power of the five elements. Then a huge bolt of lightning struck the spirit and shattered its body into pieces. Instantly, there was a huge shock from inside the airship. Finally, they were able to finish off one monster that was outside the airplane. Then Sheng Qing Chi looked toward the front where the red witch had put Shu Miao into a deep sleep. Sheng Qing Chi took out a talisman from his pocket and threw it straight at the sorceress. The talisman landed right on the red witch's forehead. Then Sheng Qing Chi started reciting his incantations to summon the divine spirit to destroy the red witch and save all the passengers. The flight attendant's body shook and the witch spirit was seen inside. Sheng Qing Chi continued to chant his mantras until the woman's body became very shaky. Sheng Qing Chi had forced a part of it out of the flight attendant's body. If Sheng Qing Chi didn't immediately get it completely out of the woman's body, then this possession could cause serious damage to the woman's brain later. Sheng Qing Chi chuckled in annoyance as the demon spirit was extremely formidable. Not long after, Cheng Feng jumped into action and kicked the spirit that was above the flight attendant's head. Sheng Qing Chi was shocked to realize that Cheng Feng could attack an unformed evil spirit with his bare hands. Meanwhile, he covered the hole in the window with his jacket. Cheng Feng was amazed to see the energy rushing inside his body. Suddenly, the plane shook violently, which ravaged the entire contents inside the plane. Sheng Qing Chi instantly took the tablet, and he was instantly shocked to see that the blue spirit came back attacking the airplane. Their airplane swooped down sharply at high speed. Sheng Qing Chi was too careless and took the spirit for granted. If it continued, then they would all die. Sheng Qing Chi didn't want to die in that airplane just like that. Then it crossed his mind to use one of the methods. But at the same time, Cheng Feng suddenly sprang into action. He directly penetrated the fuselage to catch the source of the problem. Cheng Feng firmly squeezed the blue monster's body and directly crushed it. The blue monster's body instantly shattered into pieces. Cheng Feng looked at his hands, which were again flooded with golden energy. In his mind, Cheng Feng felt confused and wondered what had happened to him. But Cheng Feng immediately ignored it, because this was not the right time to think about it. The plane dived sharply downward at a high speed. Cheng Feng still hadn't figured out how to deal with this. But suddenly, the airplane flew at a steady speed and slowly slowed down. It turned out that behind him was Sheng Qing Chi, who was focusing on using his tool while using spells. Seeing this made Cheng Feng very surprised and did not expect that the man could control the plane. But Cheng Feng didn't care because most importantly, the man had managed to take over the plane and save them all. Then Cheng Feng directly approached Shu Miao, who was still sleeping under the airplane seat. He recalled how she had woken him up earlier. Cheng Feng thought that it was time for revenge. Then Cheng Feng pinched the woman's cheek. When observing her face more deeply, Cheng Feng instantly realized that Miao was Miao Xianjun. It was only fitting that all this time her name was so familiar to him. After that, without thinking for a long time, Cheng Feng finally used his golden energy to wake the woman up. After Xu Miao woke up, they immediately contacted air traffic control via satellite and successfully restarted the plane's autopilot by Xu Miao's wave transmitter. All passengers and flight attendants slowly awoke from their sleep. The holes in the plane were also temporarily welded with metal plates. Due to the interference from the sleeping witch, the plane's surveillance equipment was completely malfunctioning. Therefore, no one knew about this terrible incident. After the plane landed, everyone disembarked one by one. The steward immediately approached Cheng Feng and expressed his gratitude for saving everyone. On the other hand, Jiang Cheng Feng didn't tell Xu Miao that he had found out her online identity. 
They continued their journey to the floating market in Thailand. Then they got on a small boat and traveled down the river. After a while, they finally reached a building on the river. The monk who was there gave a code with his hand to drive them away. The monk spoke in Thai and told them that this was a forbidden place for tourists. Cheng Feng and Sheng Qing Chi immediately spoke in Thai as well to convince them. Sheng Qing Chi asked him to provide two fake licenses for junior exorcists, but the monk refused because they were not members of the sect, so he would not sell them to them. However, Sheng Qing Chi did not give up so easily. He immediately gave the same respectful greeting as the monk's sect. After that, Sheng Qing Chi turned his head towards Cheng Feng, like giving him a code to follow what he did just now. Finally, with a grumpy face, Cheng Feng also gave the same salute that Sheng Qing Chi did just now. It was the same with Shu Miao. Finally, the monk agreed to accept their request. He told them to prepare the money and follow him inside. The three of them went up to the top of the building while Sheng Qing Chi's body was helped to be carried by them. When they arrived at the entrance, the monk checked Shu Miao's whole body to make sure she did not bring any weapons into the room. Seeing this, Cheng Feng felt very furious at his disrespectful attitude towards women. Then, Sheng Qing Chi tells Cheng Feng not to make a fuss with them. They are the lower branch of the Gu Cha sect, which is obviously a local gang. Arriving in the room, there was a figure wearing a black robe sitting casually with her feet up on the table. Without further ado, she immediately charged a price of 52,000 baht for two junior exorcist licenses. But Sheng Qing Chi felt a little surprised to hear that the price was more expensive than usual. Then, Sheng Qing Chi asked the whereabouts of Tong Para, who usually served him. The woman explained while sharpening her fingernails that Tong Para was trapped in the jar as punishment for him. It was because Tong Para often sold fake licenses to members other than the sect. Suddenly, they immediately looked at the jar and saw blood splattered on the floor. Instantly, the three of them looked so panicked and tried to convince the woman that they were part of the sect members. To make sure it was true, the woman told them to put a finger in the bottle on the table. Then Sheng Qing Chi politely refused and promised to pay double the price. But the woman wasn't interested. She still wanted them to do just that. Finally, Sheng Qing Chi got the courage. He dipped his finger into the bottle. He was a little confident because he had special blood and thought that it couldn't poison him. But at the same second, Sheng Qing Chi immediately felt something strange in his body. After that, his body fell down and his head hit the table. Shu Miao was immediately shocked to see the incident. She asked in a high tone to the woman what kind of venomous insect she used that Sheng Qing Chi could poison like that. But without fear, Cheng Feng instead volunteered to try the thing. Sheng Qing Chi tried to tell him that it was an insect that would absorb spiritual energy. That didn't phase Cheng Feng. He would still try it himself. Cheng Feng was very curious about what kind of insect was in the jar. He finally dipped his finger into the jar. The woman grinned slyly. In her mind, she thought that Cheng Feng was a very stupid person. She thought that his spiritual energy would soon become the meal of her virgin insect. But a moment later, she was very surprised to see her virgin insect that was destroyed in an instant by Cheng Feng. In shock, the woman unconsciously spoke in Chinese. Eventually, Cheng Feng realized that she was just trying to play them off. Then he asked to hand over the license. The woman was speechless because she still hadn't expected that even her virgin insect couldn't bite him. She thought that Cheng Feng could absorb the spiritual energy from her bug. Sheng Qing Chi instantly remembered the voice of the woman. He realized that the woman was the Gu Cha sect representative for the mission on the No Return Island. Since her identity had been revealed, the woman immediately opened her robe. The woman named Maggie was a senior exorcist. She did this because she was curious about Sheng Qing Chi, who was very famous. Then Xu Miao points to the jar beside them because she is still curious about it. Maggie laughs and tells her that there is nothing in it and that the blood is from a chicken. Cheng Feng then returns the insect to Maggie while asking about the license. Maggie said that she would give it to him immediately. After that, they sailed through the Indian Ocean to the island of No Return. On the ship, Maggie was seen chanting while holding a jar. 
Shu Miao, who was next to her, was confused by what she was doing. Out of curiosity, Shu Miao finally asked her about it. Maggie glanced at Shu Miao and replied that she was casting a poison magic spell. Seeing the woman's expression, Shu Miao felt that she was a little scary. Then Maggie asked Shu Miao about the demon spirit that attacked them on the flight. Shu Miao was immediately surprised and asked how she knew that. Maggie replied that she had just seen the news of the accident on their plane. Moreover, according to Maggie, an ordinary accident would not cause Sheng Qing Qi's severe condition. Meanwhile, there was Sheng Qing Qi sitting on the edge of the ship. The man had been sitting silently due to his unfit body. Next to him was Cheng Feng, who was looking at the sea view. Not long after, Cheng Feng was surprised to see a large shark beside the ship. Maggie told him that it was a sign that they were close to the no-return island. It was a demon's lair where there were so many sharks around them. Maggie explains that it's not just any sharks, but they are the owners of the island. A very large black shadow was seen right under the ship. He came to welcome their presence. 